Good afternoon and welcome to the Historic District Commission March 8th workshop. We have a couple of items. Kim, um, is there any words you'd like to say to start the workshop or should we launch right in? Uh, well, I'll just say quickly, thanks uh, to the commissioners who came out to our retreat. It was a great retreat. We had Brett Strum from uh, Sturm, sorry, from the uh, State Historic Preservation Office. Uh, speaking on alternative materials that is on the YouTube website. You can look back at that, um, but thank you to those of you who were able to make it. We had some meaningful conversations and I think um, came up with ways to make our meetings even more efficient. So thank you for that. And um, I'll kick it back over to you, Christy. Thank you. Before we turn it over to our workshop item, there's one staff update to make, and it's to welcome our newest staff member, uh, Marilyn Draft. Marilyn joined us about a month ago on February 13th, and she's jumped right in, and it's been a huge help. Um, but I wanted to introduce her to all of the commissioners, especially those who weren't able to join us at the retreat last week, and the public. So, Marilyn, would you like to say a few words about what you did before this and your background? Sure. Um, well, thank you for having me. Excited to join you all. Excited to see how the meeting goes. First one with y'all. Um, been in Charlotte about a year. Prior to that, I was doing some work with the Raleigh Historic Development Commission and teaching history at NC State. Um, I have a background in public history, urban planning, and then U.S. history. That's very exciting and all useful uh, skills to bring to our commission. So thank you so much. Exactly. Um, we do have one workshop item. Jason, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hi, we can hear you. Um, do you have video by any chance? Mm -hmm. Maybe. We'd love to see you too if we could, but if not, we understand. Um, Hi, Jason. Can you see me now? Yes. I have your presentation pulled up. I'm just going to strictly, I'm going to turn this right over to you. You tell me um, what slides you'd like to scroll through. And I would say just, you know, introduce the project to the commission and the whole point, again, to, to remind everyone in the audience to no application has been submitted yet. Uh, this is a pre-application workshop where the applicants seeking high level non-binding feedback from the commission to their future project success. So with that, turning it over to you, Jason. Okay. Um, so I'll make this quick because um, I think what's most important to me is, is your feedback and what you can, um, what you can tell me. Um, so the short of it is we want to put in a garage when we bought this house, home in 2016. Our entire goal was to find a home that had a garage or one that had a deep enough lot to build one. And we loved how deep these lots were in addition to the neighborhood. Um, and so when we moved in, the home was pretty tiny. So we did do a, a an expansion. So that kind of took our priority away from the garage at the beginning. But um, so we're there now and we're both work from home. Well, as you can see, I'm not working from home now, but I also started a new job. So I'm getting my feet under me, but I will be work from home. So we need two offices so the the other intent is to put an office um, above the garage uh, ultimately we want to preserve our green space you know we like to be outside we have dogs they like to play fetch you know i don't want to i'd rather go up than uh than out as far as the footprint um, it's also why we intend to remove that concrete pad that you can see that was there when we moved in. It's just a massive slab that's, I don't know, it's odd that it's even there, but it is. <laughs> so um, you can go to the next page and I'll show you what our predicament is. So we slope uphill the entire way and um, that our home is also not very tall. It's only a one story and it's our attic is not tall enough to, you know, add in a second. So we're about 19 and a half, almost 20 feet. And um, 
I don't know the numbers without doing all the zooming in, but I don't think that you need to do that. Uh, but I think that you can see what we're running into. Um, even if we made our garage a few inches shorter, you can look at the bottom half of this um, drawing. That is how much dirt that we would have to dig out to even make it slightly. And, and this is with a building that's slightly shorter than the home grade to ridge. And uh, I have I've had several people out just trying to help me figure out what's possible. And I was told by one foundation guy, we did a rough calculation. It would be about 20 dump trucks of dirt just to remove beneath the footprint. That doesn't even include the, the drive or the turnaround. Um, and probably an eight foot retaining wall. So it's clearly impractical. Um, <laughs> I guess I'm just here to, I'm here for advice, what I would like to do. So this is kind of what I'm opposed to doing. I, I, I really just want the opportunity to put one in. Um, and yeah, it would be taller. It wouldn't be taller grade to ridge, but there is a topographical change that would make the garage taller. Um, and that's pretty much what I'm I want to do, uh, you can see in the red line, I kind of drew a, a rough idea and we do have a, a privacy fence kind of drew a, a rough idea of where a person is standing down there on the sidewalk and what they would actually have visible to them. Below is a pretty, pretty crude, <laughs> my crude uh, idea of showing, you know, the perspective and, and how much of that structure would actually be visible to a person standing down there at the sidewalk of average height. And then uh, I showed some houses, other houses in the neighborhood, you know, where I showed a couple where the renovation, the addition is taller than the original structure. And I showed a couple where the accessory structure is taller than the uh, primary structure. Um, both of these are actually under construction at the moment. But, um, Jason, we were I... able to obtain documentation that shows that the one at 612, so this is two doors down from me. I'm two doors to the right, um, two properties to the right. That structure was, Christy, do you remember the year? It's approximate, but, but we were thinking 19, it appeared for sure by 51. 50. 53, right, Marilyn? Um, the index that has the six, that should have been six. Yeah. Oh. So we have the Sanborn map showing. There's the 53 showing that it's two stories and 53. And this is 612 South Summit. Jason's house is right here. And then this is what's shown on slide. Guessing. Nope. Slide five. In the corner. On this the is top the right. Yep. So that's an original historic two story accessory structure. And in, coincidentally, this home 612 is actually the closest looking home in our neighborhood to our home with the slant gable ends and the fat little front portico and our chimneys on the other side, though. But that's why I was so happy that this doesn't this this home didn't get demoed. <laughs> so that's really it, uh, you know. You guys okay. have any suggestions. Uh, it's kind of, I feel really stuck and, you know, I don't know what to do. Well, we're going to try and help. Congratulations on your new job, Jason. Thanks. Uh, okay, commissioners, let's give Jason some feedback. So I'll start off by saying that the standards say that we should be looking at context 
and context for your house just so happens to be really fortuitous for you, right? Because you have 612 there with a historic um, ADU. So if you were anywhere else in the neighborhood, perhaps you would not be as lucky. But as one commissioner, I would be willing to um, make an exception for this because, well, it's not even making an exception. I would be more on board with this because your context allows for it. Any other thoughts, commissioners? Yes, Commissioner Goodwin. Yeah, I, I agree completely because our standards talk about um, the height of the building should be no taller than the houses than the surrounding houses. But your, that garage is not taller; it's higher because of the grade. So I would think that um, you know if the if the if the um, Accessory building is following the grade and other structures, perhaps other surrounding structures. I don't know what is going on behind, you know, with the neighbors back behind that, but because it's following the grade, um, I, I, I certainly can't see excavating all that. That would be very, very problematic to do all that excavation. So, uh, this commissioner feels like that you know, we would be able to justify that based on the fact that the building is no. No taller than the house. <clears throat> Commissioner Hawkins. Yeah, I will echo the sentiment of Commissioner um, Parati. I will say when you were first going through this, um, and I saw the uh, accessory structure, you know, sitting on top of the the grade uh, without the removal of the dirt. I immediately was like, what? No, our standards won't allow that. But when you show the context of the home right down the street, I mean, to me, that's where you do meet the standards. Um, and so as one commissioner, I would definitely support that given um, that this meets the standards of context. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Hawkins. I just want to interject that um, our standards also say not only shall the should the secondary structure not be taller, but it should be secondary in all the ways. So we have told people before when they were dealing with topographical um, issues and needing a structure to be, you know, the structure sits higher or proud of the house or higher than the house. We've said no because there was no context, right? Because it would be akin to putting a house on a stage, right? So it's not secondary in that regard. But the thing that is saving you on this one, Jason, is the fact that you have 612 South Summit. Um, yet another reason why I'm glad that structure was not demolished. Um, so. Any other feedback, commissioners, for Jason? Yes, Commissioner Wojcik. Hi, Jason. Um, I, I do Thank agree you. with the information that everybody's provided you, but one of the things that Kim did just bring up is um, not just the height of the structure, but the structure in itself needs to be secondary. And I do think that when we looked at the plot plan, the garage was wider than the main house. So that might be something that I would recommend that you con kind of review, um, not just the height, but just general massing and size and scale um, as you're thinking about moving forward. Okay, that's good feedback. Yeah, Thank I have you, to really consider that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Commissioner. One. Uh, yeah, and one other comment to that same effect is: do keep in mind that um, you can't exceed the fifty percent impermeability uh, in the backyard. It looks like you might be pushing that, so um, uh, just please keep that in mind. Yeah, well, I, I ran some rough couch on that, and and if we did not remove that pad, it would have been substantially closer. But I am. Paying attention to that as well. Thank you. Commissioner Walker. 
Okay, also keep in mind, Jason, that we'll want to see the impact on your um, neighbor's property behind you too. Okay. Okay. So, you know, we're not just looking at the front, we're looking at the impact on the adjacent lot behind you. Okay. Um, so, what is that? It photos, or do you need like, um, are photos good, or do you need like surveys of? Something like this, a site plan so that we can see the impact of your ADU on that uh, on that other property would be sufficient. If you have pictures, that's great too. Whatever you can provide to make a case. And I didn't mention it, but th there was no intention of making it an ADU um, just to take advantage of the setbacks even though that is changing with sure. the okay, that's fair. UDO. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other feedback for Jason? Okay. So that's all for now. We look forward to seeing your application when you come back. Thanks for taking Thank advantage of this workshop time. So one, I appreciate the feedback. All right. Bye. Thanks, Jason. Bye. Bye. That's all we had. You want five minutes before we start? Uh, there was something else that we need. Oh, for the record, let's mention our newest uh, commissioner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's not active yet, but the Doworth business seat has been filled. Brett Taylor of Hopedale Builders will be joining the commission. And there are two requirements that he has to meet to become an active commissioner. One is being sworn in by the city clerk's office and taking the oath of office. And number two is completing an orientation with me. And part of that orientation is we have some videos, training videos from the state that we ask people to take a look at about um, quasi judicial procedures, secretary of the interior standards and the like. And so he'll complete those, he'll talk with me. Um, he is going to be out of the country for our April meeting. So my best guess is that he'll be joining us in May. That's perfect. Thank you. And how many openings now do we have on the commission? Um, three, but one is in process of being filled. Okay. We're still looking for someone with Hermitage Court. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had some contact with potential interested parties for, for Hermitage Court. Um, and we are also still looking for one for Oakland Park. Okay. All right. So if you all know of someone who you think would be a good addition to the commission, if you yourself are that person, then please reach out. Okay. All right. So, uh, why don't we take 5 and then come back ready for the meeting?
Okay, and we're back. Thank you all for joining us. There is one brief announcement I forgot during our workshop, and that's the commission is deferring the adoption of the design standards update with the UDO alignment and McCurry Heights to their next meeting. Um, and so stay tuned for more information on that. And with that, Kim, I'll turn it over to you to officially open the meeting and swear everyone in. All right, perfect. The Charlotte Historic District Commission welcomes you to the March 8th, 2023 meeting. I'm Kim Parati, chairperson, and I call this meeting to order at 1.08 p.m. Also sitting on today's commission are Nichelle Hawkins, Chris Barth, Phil Goodwin, Jill Walker, Scott Whitlock, and Heather Wojcik, who are all present in the meeting room. We also have present in the meeting room, Krista Leinberger. Also present are HTC staff, Christy Hartz, Cindy Kohanic, Candace Lighty, Jenny Shugart, and Marilyn Drath. We have Jill Sanchez Myers, our attorney, Nicole Hewitt, our attorney, Linda Keish, our clerk to the board, and Candy Thomas, our court reporter. I'd like to start by acknowledging that the commission has resumed in-person meetings. However, as a continuing health and safety precaution, the commission is permitting applicants and members of the public to participate using a remote online platform if they choose. Due to the hybrid format, I ask for your presence and your patience today as we proceed. There may be slight delays as we transition between speakers, participants, and presentations. Participants in today's evidentiary hearings were required to provide a copy of presentations, documents, exhibits, or other materials that they wish to present during the evidentiary hearing prior to today's meeting. All such materials, as well as a copy of city staff's presentations and documents, were posted online prior to this meeting and may be viewed by visiting the HDC webpage. For everyone participating remotely in today's meeting, we ask that the following guidelines be observed. Please make sure you are on camera using a video source during any testimony. Please mute your audio when you're not speaking. Use only one source of audio, computer or phone. Do not put your phone on hold. Make sure you're in a quiet area. Please turn off or silence electronic devices and do not speak over the person talking or you'll be asked to leave the meeting. Please use the raise your hand tool. Please do not speak unless recognized by the chair or by staff. Because the commission is a quasi judicial body, any speaker for or against an application must be sworn in. Any individual wishing to speak for or against an application was asked to sign up and provide any additional evidence in advance of the meeting. During the hearing, I will further open the floor to anyone who has joined the meeting today by telephone. When it is your turn to speak, please begin by stating your name and address. The review of each application consists of the presentation of the application and deliberation. The application is presented by the HDC staff. The commission will determine if there is sufficient information to proceed with the hearing. The applicant presents their testimony for the application. Other parties wishing to speak for or against will be given reasonable time to present factual sworn testimony based on the HDC design standards. The HDC may question the applicant and HDC staff members. HDC staff and the applicant will be given an opportunity for rebuttal and final comments. The HDC will close the hearing for discussion and deliberation. During discussion and deliberation, only the commission and staff may speak. An HDC member may request the hearing to be open for further questioning. The HDC will craft a motion for approval, continuation, or denial. The majority vote of the commission present is required for a decision to be reached. A final vote by the HDC will end the hearing. If you'll be addressing the commission today, please raise your right hand and respond I do to the following question. Do you affirm the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? 
I do. Please be mindful we have a court reporter present who is responsible for making an accurate and complete record of these proceedings. The reporter must be able to hear and understand. Everyone present must state their names and addresses before they speak. Speak clearly, loudly, and one at a time. The reporter will interrupt only when absolutely necessary to get clarification on what was just said or to alert speakers that they're having difficulty hearing or understanding. Are there any questions? All right, let's get going. Our first application is 712 Mount Vernon Avenue. And this is a request for reaffirmation. The, um, you know, supply chain difficulties, finding contractors, uh, the applicant was not able to get staff, the permit ready construction plans within the 12 month deadline. So they're back requesting reaffirmation of the previous approval. And I should note that all conditions of the original approval have been met. So. With that, I don't believe we have anyone signed up to speak and we have no callers. So, all right, perfect commissioners. Any objections to this remaining on the consent agenda? No. Okay. Well, let's get a motion. Who's making the motion? I can make 1. Thank you. Commissioner Barr. <clears throat> Form for the context or the uh, consent agenda, or is it just? No, it's just. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application as presented on the consent agenda item, as it is not in Congress with the district and meets the standards for accessory buildings uh, on page eight point one zero and new construction for res residential buildings, chapter six. All right, perfect. So motion made by Commissioner Barth, seconded by second Commissioner Hawkins. Any discussion of the motion? Okay, let's vote. Commissioner Lineberger. Yes. Commissioner Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Barth. Yes. Commissioner Hawkins. Yes. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Wojcik. Yes. Commissioner Whitlock. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Motion to approve passes 9 0. All right, thank you. The next application is also on the consent agenda. It is 1207 Belgrave Place. Staff has listed a number of conditions that are recommended, and the commission will recall that these are simply recommendations. You can accept them, you cannot accept them, and you can also add your own if you are okay with this staying on the consent agenda. The reason it's before you is it's wider, it's set wider than the house, and there is a tall structural element up against the neighbor's property. And we wanted to give all due process to the neighbors for this project. There is a supplement information that answers some of the questions that staff had about the height and of the building and of the chimney. Okay. All right, commissioners, any objections to this remaining on the consent agenda? All right. Well, if one of you will please make a motion. I will. I will. I will. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Wojcik. I would like to make a motion to approve this project as presented with um, as it is not in congruence with the district and meets the standards of accessory buildings, um, page 8.10 and new construction for residential buildings, chapter six, um, with the conditions that the masonry will be and mortar will not be painted. It will stay a traditional brick veneer. Um, we adjust the height, so we don't need to talk about that, right, Christy? Or should I just state all of those things? Um, nope, it's fine. But they address the height of the structure and the height of the chimney, but not the width of the chimney. Oh, okay. So, um, per staff recommendation, uh, A through F, with those items being submitted, um, 
Mr. Christie. Those are, yep, <laughs> so, 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 submitted to staff for probable approval. First, okay, um, submitted to staff uh, approval. And okay. I think that's it. Okay, so motion made by Commissioner Wojcik, seconded by? Second. Second. Commissioner Goodwin. All right, any discussion of the motion? Okay, uh, Commissioner Leinberger. Yes. Commissioner Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Barth. Yes. Commissioner Hawkins. Yes. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Wojcik. Yes. Commissioner Whitlock. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to approve passes 9-0. Our next application is also on the consent agenda. It is 1900 Dilworth Road West. Um, I should point out that in the agenda supplement, the neighbors at 910 East Worthington Avenue have submitted um, information about the alleyway and the fixtures and the information they submitted are in the agenda supplement. However, I would remind the commission that alleyways are not in the purview of the Historic District Commission and the commission is not able to opine on such matters that are not within their purview. Um, let me see. I don't know if they've come or not. It looks like we do have one speaker and I'm going to ask our attorney, you know, how that works or um, should we have the commission determine if they want to keep it on consent and then talk to the speaker? What's the procedure here, Jill? Sure. So the, um, <clears throat> the commission has the discretion to uh, limit uh, any testimony that is either repetitive or not um, material or relevant um, to the design standards. Um, so um, one uh, option that um, the commission could give is to uh, inquire of the caller um, whether they have relevant uh, testimony or evidence to present related to the design standards. Um, and if so, then, you, you know, you have the option to move that off the consent agenda if, if it falls within the purview of the design standards. Okay, thank you, Jill. Okay, so let's do that, Christy. Let's find out if the caller is calling for this, and if so, if it's relating uh, to our design standards. Okay, great. Um, Candace, can you take the caller off mute, please? Can you hear me? Hello, yes, hi. Is hi. this Phil? It is, uh, and I'm, I tried to turn on my camera, but it doesn't look like that's, that's enabled. Um, so I, I apologize for that. Um, I, I think to, to answer your question, um, understand what you're saying uh, makes sense. Uh, I, I think our concern is is mostly about uh, the relation of the building to or the proposed building to the setbacks um, and the property lines. Um, understand that the alleyway is not within the confines of the historic district, but I think the uh, proposed placement of the building within relation to the setbacks is. We need to open. Need okay. To open. okay, thank you so much. So with that being the case, because it does speak to our design standards, we are going to take it off the consent agenda and hear it uh, fully. Yeah, so um, the applicants here, Sean, hi, come on up. Um, Will, please stay on the line and please be sworn in at this time. Okay. Or I should ask, Will, have you been sworn in? Not. Okay. Sean, not. I think you have. Have you been sworn in? Have you been sworn in? Okay, great. Okay. So, Will, if you'll raise your right hand and respond, I do to the following question. Do you affirm the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. Further procedural question in order for meeting efficiency. Do we need to have him present the whole case or should we address the comments first and then keep moving? Um, Do I just summarize it? Um, 
Yeah, go ahead and summarize it. And the commission can always, if they have further questions right. for the applicant or they would like more information, but if Christy's able to present sure. it okay. sufficiently, I think. Okay, great. Um, so the project is the rear addition of a covered porch and a new accessory building. The new accessory building, as discussed, is being accessed via the alley, which is typically the commission's preference. And the new covered porch measures approximately 14 feet by 28 feet. Details and materials match existing, and it includes a standing seam metal roof and a chimney facing East Worthington. The new accessory structure is going to be placed over an existing concrete parking pad. And the footprint is approximately 24 by 30 and just under 24 feet in height. And materials are lap siding with mitered corners, single bag garage doors, double hung windows, and the existing mature vegetation will be protected. Rear yard permeability air impermeable areas 42.3%. Staff has listed a couple of conditions recommending mostly about brick and mortar matching existing, making sure that there's a proportional foundation on the accessory structure, giving us some dimensions for the driveway, window trim detail, window specifications, sort of our normal list of things. So with that, I will scroll down and show you slide six. Oops. So existing and proposed, you can see this is the concrete pad that exists. This is the location of the new gar garage. This is the location of the new rear porch. There are photos of the building on seven and eight. More details about a plan for the porch on nine. The roof plan is on 10. Elevations are on 11 and 12. This is the elevation facing East Worthington. The Zotwell streetscape. And then the accessory building details. So, um, Kim, would you like to ask the caller to restate their concerns? And then sure. we can let the applicant address, address those them. concerns yeah. and any other questions. All right. Well, this is where you come in. Um, if you will, please restate your uh, position on this application and give us any feedback relating to the standards you'd like for us to consider. Sure. Yeah. Um, it, so, you know, concerns are, are I think, mostly neighborly in, in nature, right? Um, the existing pad uh, right now extends right up to and on the property line. Um, want to understand where the building will actually stop and, and begin and what the actual setback length is. So, Madam okay. Chair, if I may. Sure. Will, if you could, could you state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, sure. Will Haynes, uh, 910 East Worthington Avenue. Okay. All right. So, we'll let our applicant answer. And if you'll start with your name and address. Uh, my name's Sean Green. Uh, my uh, work address is 1221 Hawthorne Lane, Sean Green Architecture. Uh, as far as the uh, questions and comments about the site plan and the position of the garage itself, um, certainly since it is a corner lot, the setbacks are unique um, as far as the distance of the garage as it addresses Worthington Avenue. Uh, I think as a reference point on the site plan itself, you can see that we've aligned it with the, the that face of the existing house uh, to ensure that it's congruent with those setbacks. As far as the 
location of the garage as it addresses the alleyway. Proper, property line as a point of reference is presumably on the alleyway side of the existing fence. Uh, as far as our garage location, uh, Christie's comments are correct in that we're kind of on, on, on to an extent utilizing where the existing pad location is. However, the, the new garage footprint is slightly different, but as far as the distance of the garage doors to the rear property line and then subsequently the alleyway, um, I don't have that dimension right now, but you know, based on scale and reference, uh, on the site plan itself, I would say we're easily um, kind of at a 12 to 15 foot level as far as the distance of the building to the alleyway. Uh, that offers up, you know, a, a pretty reasonable amount of apron in front of the garage um, before we even get into the alleyway. And as a point of uh, a point to that, the homeowner is insistent that we keep the keep the existing fence to ensure that there's a level of respect given to the rest of the neighborhood and not necessarily a directly visible um, garage door, even if it was seen at a, a rather oblique or ancillary measure as people are driving up and down uh, Worthington, uh, especially given the amount of vegetation that the property has along that side. So. Um, the, the, the homeowner is indeed trying to make sure that he is respectful, not only of the, the neighbors, but the community in general. Okay, thanks, Sean. Well, any follow up questions? Yeah, so, um, it, it sounds like there's, there's still, uh, some more evidence needed or, or some more hardening of the designs um, needed before, you know, final consideration. It, it sounds like exact distances and, and such are, are still in a bit of, of flux. So I think my ask would be that that be submitted in, in its final design before approval and, and then from there, you know, I, I think provided everything is in order from a setback perspective and everything, I would have no objections. Okay, so let me ask Christy a question, Will. Christy, if, uh, would we be able to approve this and send it to you if the setbacks are not in line, it would automatically come back to us, yes? Correct. Yes. All right, did you hear that, Will? They can, uh, you can approve what you're asking. Prove it with the condition mm -hmm. that um, zoning set zoning required setbacks are met, and staff has the authority to sign off on setbacks provided they meet zoning. Um, and if it doesn't, it comes back to the commission for review. And it sounds like the setbacks are going to exceed mm -hmm. what zoning requires. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yes. We yeah, and and, it, and if if that is the case, right? If if that you know, is the true case, then, then I think, you know, all, all parties should, should be fine. Uh, I, I, I am fine. Right. With that. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Will. thank you so much for calling in anything you want to say before we move on. No, I, I appreciate it. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Commissioners. Do you have any follow up questions for the applicant? Commissioner Wojcik. Well, um, sorry, it's not for the applicant. Can we do a two part approval? Like a approved part and continue part, or does it have to all be clustered together? Uh, you can. Okay. What is your concern, Commissioner Wojcik? Um, well, from an architectural standpoint, the secondary structure mm -hmm. seemed to be different um, from a roof form standpoint. Sure. And so my eyes kind of drawn to that. And okay. I would kind of like to have that well, reviewed. Well, let's talk about that. Since we're at that point in the um, process, why don't you kick us off in that? Well, overall, uh, and I actually have seen this house. It's quite beautiful. It is. Um, and the gardens are amazing. The property is is gorgeous um the the typical roof configuration on the main structure is a hip 
configuration with the um, dominant roof of the second story and of the porches. And when I look at the proposed accessory structure, I'm seeing a different type of roof line. It's more of a dominant gable um, with some secondary hips, and it just doesn't seem as congruent as um, I feel like it could be with a little bit more of a restudy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's let Sean answer, speak to that. Um, and I, and I, Sean, if you'll speak up and clearly, just so that we can get you on record. You. Thank you. Um, I, I completely understand your position. I think, you know, my, um, investigation and diligence exploring the existing context within the neighborhood there there did seem to be um, examples of garages that were in line with the existing or primary building or house as far as roof structure but there was also an equal amount where there was you know not necessarily that connection i would i would say on sheet EX 1.1 of the existing garage precedent, image number two is a good example of how there is a difference between the two. Um, that being said, uh, if it, if I think for what the homeowners' goals are for that studio space, um, we could easily investigate more of a clip gable if we start migrating into a fully hipped uh, garage then we've effectively eliminated kind of the studio space in its totality so um and we can certainly investigate that further up but i would argue that a clip gable is not necessarily any more congruent with the type of architecture of the main house heather is there a standard that you're looking you're referencing I think it could be 7.12 number six um, and number one. Oh, okay. I was looking at 8.10 and remembering a discussion we had about number three. 8.10? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Heather, can you use your mic, please? 6.13 is roof forms and materials for new residential. And then specifically. Oh, uh, yeah. May, am I, may I inter intervene or may I add another comment as far please, as the yes. design concept for our um, studio and garage given that it is kind of on a corner lot and that kind of in that liminal space between the um worthington streetscape proper and the existing house you know part of our desire was to also achieve a marriage between the two given its location um i think on the streetscape uh, images you can or yeah you can see where you know, we're also trying to respect the, the neighbor's property as far as what that what that is as well. So on uh, Heather is this at 6.13 number three reflect the pitch and gable orientation of surrounding historic buildings in the design of a new dwelling. For instance, if the context is primarily gable roofed houses avoid a shallow hipped roof. Um, and so the main context for this one would be the primary structure. Chrissy, you pointed out eight point. Well, I mean, the context here to his point, it, it is also this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, 8.10. 8.10. Is accessory structures. So I guess in general, it's not necessarily the primary structure for that property. It's just something within the both. neighborhood. It's both. Okay. Yeah. 
We're like, yeah. we have the job of looking at everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'll read 8.10, number three, that Chrissy pointed out. Design new outbuildings to be compatible with the style and character of the primary historic building on the site, especially in scale, massing, and other architectural elements. Any new outbuilding must be clearly secondary to the main structure on the site. Any other questions? Yeah, anybody else have strong feelings about it? Yeah, Commissioner Goodwin. Yeah, I, and then uh, you, Commissioner Walker. You know, gable roofs and hip roofs are so common, you know, throughout the historic districts and beyond. And even on individual houses, sometimes we see combinations of gable roofs and hip roofs too. And that's what he's got here. His front dormer has a hip design to it in combination with a gable. And I, and I'm, I, I see it's so common. We're so used to it. Okay. This thing does not have an issue with it. Okay, Commissioner Walker. Thanks. Yeah, I, I I can't see it. Maybe it's it's just me. But what was the distance between the accessory unit and the property line? The rear property line. The side. Uh, the side the, property the, line, I believe, um, is the uh, required fifteen feet to the. To, you mean to the Worthington Avenue? property line so that would sit forward of its of the house next to it uh i think if you're the the house on the other side of the alleyway yeah um yeah i, I guess that's my presumption is the the front yard setback for worthington is not less than 15 feet for the side yard for this property yeah. Right. So I guess I would be a little bit concerned about the, the dominance of that accessory unit um, in relationship to the house next to it, both in terms of its height in relation to the house and in terms of its setback. You know, the, the other house is probably at least 10 feet further back than that house. So there's a kind of a Little, it's, a, it's a little skewed, in my opinion, in terms of how it might appear from the streetscape. Well, even the streetscape, Jill, because I, to your point, I, I get your point. Like, there's this big fence there, and I know that we're not really supposed to take in vegetation, but it's really well hidden um, when you're going down Worthington. And so when I'm going down the street, I think about rhythm and... I don't see how the rhythm would be disrupted having gone out to the site and just looked at it. Of course, the accessory structure was not there, right? But it is really kind of nestled into that backyard quite nicely. Yeah, Commissioner Barth. Um, I actually sort of agree with uh, Commissioner Walker. I mean, these corner lots, I live on one myself in our historic districts. Um, they have to be looked at, you know, these corner lots have to be looked at slightly differently. Um, I mean, we have to, you know, imagine that this house has two fronts and this accessory dwelling unit is, is an extension of that house. And if we were to look at this side, uh, the Worthington um, streetscape, uh, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that that ADU would stick out in front of the existing house and becomes a little dominant over the adjacent property. So, you know, it might be my recommendation to, you know, sort of split the difference between the front setback of the, the house adjacent as well as the. Can I stop you? Yeah. You're designing it. Don't get into designing it. What we've done in the past is we've asked him to place the location of the front thermal wall of the neighboring property on a site plan and come back. So okay. like, don't design it. Just oh, I wasn't trying to design. I was yes. just, I was just saying that I think it needs, it may need to come back. Yeah. Per, per our standards and how we look at setback. Yeah. Um. And then speaking to some of the other comments that the commissioners made, I agree with uh, Commissioner Goodwin, um, that I think the the gable roof is keeping here. But I do have some questions about some of the other roof forms that we see, uh, particularly on the addition, the porch addition. Um. It, Appears to be a hip roof, um, but the side roof slopes um, don't seem equal to the rear rear roof slope, 
which might present a unique um, uh, condition with how that uh, that roof plane is viewed from the outside. You know, it'd be a, that the hip would be much steeper on the sides and more visible. I might, you know, I might ask you to to uh, consider going to a true hip with equal slopes on both sides I or understand. all three sides. I I understand that. Um, I think the the challenge or what we were attempting to do was again from the Worthington side have those the metal roof of the covered porch the new covered porch present at a similar slope to that of the front porch so if you look at that that uh, right elevation and in conjunction with that the bay the bump out bay we were really trying to match that slope so that from the street side it presents with a level of, of equality but certainly migrating to a true hip is not necessarily you know, a challenge you know the, the reality of all of the roofs is that they're not necessarily those those single story roofs is that they're not necessarily the primary focal point okay yeah my, my only concern with that is um you know we we don't see Metal roofs a lot in our districts. When we do see it, is it is on uh, accent structures, accent roofs, dormers, and things like that, which I would consider this. Um, but being a, a more of a modern material, I'm a little bit concerned about the reflectivity of of that slightly steeper surface uh, as it presents itself to the sure. the passerby. Um, so you know, again, as as our staff indicates, you know, I can't design it for you. But I would I would maybe ask that you consider reevaluating that roof form in another way. Similarly, on the ADU with the pop out dormers, um, I'm I'm a little concerned about those roof planes as well, and, and the form of those hips and how they present their themselves to the outside um, viewer. Yeah. Um, it might be helpful to see examples from the neighborhood. Histor again, historic examples. We always want to look towards historic examples um, uh, with roofs that steep um, with metal on them. The, the, the roof slope of the dormers being 5 and 12, which is uh, matching that of the house. So um, the dormers themselves, the, but you know, as far as the incorporation of the hipped roofs at the dormers, uh, you know, again, that was going back to the design concept that we're trying to straddle a line of trying to be respectful to the neighboring streetscape, but also the roof and the roof form of the existing house. So that's really what that homage is based on. Um, but uh, Sean, we'll certainly reinvestigate it, that. Sean, it looks like the dormers or co-planer to the bottom floor. Is that correct? Uh, we're off like by four inches, so basically one stud back. So. Okay, Christy, don't we usually ask for like six? We do four to six, yeah. Four to six. So, uh, so one stud being nominally four. Are you suggesting you want it to be further back? It looks coplanar uh, to me. It is. It, so, yes, it would be nice if it was just stepped back a little, so it did not have that appearance. So, it sounds like we just need a little more study done to this building. Um, we're there, but we're close, but not there. So uh we we will close here shortly sean is there anything you want to say before we close uh yes please yes um i'm and if i can return to uh, commissioner barth barth's um comments i understand what you're i, I mis misinterpreted your comment the it's the asymmetricality of the slope of those dormers and not necessarily the one side or the other correct yeah for, yeah. for a dormer condition and hip condition like that i mean i 
I mean, at least from my perspective, you could prove me wrong with some, some, like I said, historic examples in the neighborhood, but for that type of architectural element in that roof form, yeah. you know, I think it might be better suited as, as asphalt shingles in a, you know, on the sides, sides of that dormer, you know, I think it's, you stated it's 1212, but on the, the yeah. back and front, it's 512. So I think I would like to see some symmetric, symmetrical sure. uh, aspect to that. Um, that's, I think that's easily achievable with some additional investigation outside of that. I know that you all have a tremendously challenging job. So I'd just like to thank you all for your time. And I strongly respect everything that you all do. Thank you so much, Sean. We'll close now for deliberation. Um, Commissioners, it sounds like this is a continuation. Um, so why don't we uh, cover what we've just been discussing, roof forms. Commissioner Barth, will you restate your position on this? Um. Or actually, excuse me, if you don't mind, since Commissioner Wojcik brought it up initially, if uh, Commissioner Wojcik, if you will restate your point of view. Overall, I'm just concerned about the choice of roof forms. And I know Commissioner Barth pointed out materials, which would be covered in our uh, roof forms and materials section. Um, I think that I would like to request that we continue the project and have him evaluate um, those Speak up, Commissioner. Sorry. <laughs> it's good. Have, have those roof forms reevaluated and, and brought back to us with a different solution. Um, and then at the same time, address some of the setback and site questions and conditions mm -hmm. that were also brought up. Okay. I think Commissioner Hawkins has been taking notes. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think if there's a motion ready to be made, Commissioner Barth. Can I just propose something? Um, to me, some of these roof form details and materiality, it's a very simple shift. It seems that the applicant is open to making some of those adjustments. Um, to me, the, the biggest thing here, which we may need to continue for, is this, the issue of setback as it relates to the adjacent property. Um, I don't know if that can be done on the staff level too, but I'm more than comfortable with some of these roof form and, and material changes being um, uh, reviewed over with staff and approved by them. Since we're looking at the setbacks relative to the neighboring house, why don't we just include it all? Okay. All right. It can't hurt, right? Especially if they have to come back. Absolutely. If it needs yeah. to come back for that, then yes, okay. obviously. Commissioner Walker. Yeah. Did I miss it? Did, I know that there's a gorgeous tree in that backyard there. How, how close is that to the addition? The, um, so we have him closed now so we can ask for them we could ask for sean to come back when they do with information on the tree and uh, a tree protection plan because they've already said that they were going to protect it all right okay um so we have roof forms we have materials we have setbacks and we have tree protection anything else we need to add before moving on Okay, and I think Commissioner Hawkins has guidelines. If not, we're going to work together to get her some. Um, Commissioner Hawkins, let us know when you're ready to state the motion. And if you need help finding standards. Sure, I'll give it a shot. Okay. So, before I say the motion, mm -hmm. um, it sounds like we have the standards that we want uh, addressed the items that we want to address, which roof forms and materials, uh, setbacks, and then the tree protection plan. Mm -hmm. But is the consensus that we're okay with the applicant working with staff to address those items? Or? I would like for it to come back as one commissioner. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I see heads nodding. So. All right. So I'd like to make a motion to continue this application for the following reasons. Uh, we would like the applicant to restudy the building setback per standard 6.5, number one in particular. Uh, also, 
uh, to restudy the roof pitch uh, based on standards roof forms and materials 6.13. Mm, number three. Number three. As well as uh, have the applicant provide a tree protection plan based on chapter 8.5 for trees. Number four. Okay. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Hawkins, seconded by? Second. Commissioner Wojcik. Any further discussion of the motion? Did you get the co-planer Oh, yes. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Goodwin. We need to address the co-planer dormer. I, I think the applicant addressed and per the uh, Christie's um, confirmation, you know, within four to six inches, we might just want a clarification on that dimension based okay. on the drawings. Okay. All right. Accept it. All right. F friendly amendment accept it. All right. Is that still good with you, Commissioner Wojcik? Yes. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Let's vote. Commissioner Leinberger? Yes. Commissioner Wheat? Yes. Commissioner Barth? Yes. Commissioner Hawkins? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Commissioner Wojcik? Yes. Commissioner Whitlock? Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Motion to continue passes 9 0. Thanks, Sean. All right. Um, so the attorney has advised that we leave case agenda item number four open until five o'clock. Right before this meeting, I got an email from the applicant saying he wants to put the project on hold, but he has not officially requested to withdraw it. And without an official request to withdraw, the commission is required to hear the case. Um, so we'll come back to it. I've let him know we're announcing it now in case he's listening. All he has to let us know by five o'clock if he was just to withdraw. Otherwise, the commission will hear it. Okay. Um, so we're going to move on to item number five. Um, and I did forget. Christy, how, sorry, one more time, just for everyone. Mm -hmm. How, uh, how much advance notice does an applicant have to give you before they withdraw? Today is the meeting. I mean, how much advance notice do you need? Well, technically the letter instructed the applicant to let me know by February 24th. So then my question is, why are we holding off? Maybe that's a question for our attorney. We that everyone was notified about what the um, expectations are. So why are we waiting? Sure. So that was actually um, in y'all's discretion. Uh, you know, it's 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 on the agenda. It's been noticed. Um, it's for hearing. I think it's just because um, the applicant had sent an email that maybe sounded like he was intending to withdraw and i think um staff was just trying to give a little bit of grace yeah no so we don't have enough time we don't have enough time and out of respect for our neighbors who are following the guidelines and meeting our deadlines i am proposing that we go ahead and make a call on this one I will let the applicant know. Give me one second. Okay. So the only other thing I had was I forgot to announce at the beginning. We had you had mentioned something about the relocation of agenda item number 17. Sure, I, I don't think I mentioned it, but. You mentioned it to me. Oh, and to you. Yes. Okay. I, I, yeah, not, I didn't, it it. And yes. didn't announce it. So <laughs> yes. I didn't announce it. Yes, thank just, you. <laughs> um, I had missed that at the beginning of the meeting. I just. Okay, I yes. I Sorry, I did not mention okay. that either. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. um, so we're moving agenda item number 17 to after agenda item number six. Okay, and it's also in, in the vein of things we did not mention, um, I have my uh, attendance sheet here and I felt to mention that because it wasn't there, 
Uh, Commissioner Sarah Wheat is also here in the room today. Thank you. Okay. Now that we're caught up on processes, uh, the next application, this is new. We haven't done this. I don't think ever mm -hmm. um, we applications number four and five were continued from previous meetings and we are at the drop dead time per state statute that provides that mandates the commission make a decision within 180 days of first hearing the case. Mm -hmm. and so that time is up the unless the applicant. As implied earlier has requested to withdraw the commission is required to make a determination of approval or denial at this meeting and this is for case number four and number five and so the applicants are not present this is 400 east worthington avenue it was continued from the september 14th meeting for a number of items revised plans have not been received so this is the same presentation that was seen by the commission in September. Okay, and I want to reiterate for those of you listening that we have a tough job to hear a number of cases and there's a backlog of applications. It is not just that we um, go back on standards that we've set, deadlines that we've set, um, in order to appease people who are not paying attention to them. It's not respectful of this body and it's not respectful of the applicants who are waiting to be heard. So we will hear this application as a deadline was given and not met. All right, so application number four, excuse me, application number, yeah, number four, 400 East Worthington Avenue. Christy? Um, that sums up my Presentation 400 okay. Worthington, no changes to the application from the continuance in September. Mm -hmm. Updated plans have not been received. Okay, so do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this? We have no callers. Okay, and we have no applicant to ask questions of. So, commissioners, nothing was changed from September 14th meeting. Um, do we have a motion ready to go? Commissioner Walker, I think you need to close. So, okay, we will now close for deliberation. Here is an example of how we've given deadlines and they have not been met. Does anyone have an objection to continuing on with this case? All right. Does anyone have a motion they want to make? Um, I would like to make a motion to deny this application. This project has not met um any of the continuances that were provided by our staff and it does not meet our guidelines for context all right thank you commissioner walker we have a does it are there any other guidelines you wish to add okay. or standards you wish to add Maybe. if you like you could always reference what we did last time since nothing's changed and it it could be. It could yes, be. I would say context number 6.3, <clears throat> chapter 6.3, number 5, and per standards 613, 615, 618, and 612, as well as chapter 8 and standard 8.2, as outlined in our um, staff analysis. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Walker. Motion made by Commissioner Walker, seconded by... Second, Commissioner Hawkins, any further discussion of the motion? All right, let's vote. Commissioner Leinberger? Yes. Commissioner Wheat? Yes. Commissioner Barth? Yes. Commissioner Hawkins? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Commissioner Wojcik? Yes. Commissioner Whitlock? Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Motion to deny passes 9-0. All right, application number five. Application number five is 1532 Dilworth Road. This was originally heard at the October 12th meeting. Um, the decision date, required decision date is April 10th, but our next meeting is not until April 12th. So it requires a decision at this meeting. Again, same as the last one, none of the items for continuance have been met and uh, the applicant is not present and I don't believe there are any callers. All right, so let's close for deliberation. 
None of the reasons for continuing this application were met. Therefore, there's a motion to be made today. Who wants to make it? Don't let Commissioner Walker do all the heavy lifting. Do we have to close again? We, we're closed. Okay. Uh, did I not close? We're closed. All right. Yeah. That, that'll, okay, thanks. Commissioner Hawkins. If you guys will help me out with some standards, but I'd like to make a motion to deny uh, this application based on not receiving any changes um, that were requested in the continuance. Uh, first is we needed to pr uh, provide it an accurate elevation drawing and site plan showing this uh, chimney changing from stone to brick along with those details of placement of screen, porch, and windows, railings, roofing materials. So uh, we can lean on Commissioner Hawkins design standards uh, 6.17 for porches. Thank you. Um, 6.20 through 6.24 for new construction additions. And the Secretary of Interior standards 2.5. Accepted. Also, a uh, tree protection plan, I believe that is chapter eight. Eight point five, number four. Eight point five, number four. Uh, also needing uh, additional photographs. Uh, needed a sample of brick and mortar, so I believe that's in the materials. Eight point one eight. Eight point one eight. Six point one eight. Six point one eight. Thank you, Commissioner Barr. Also. Um, the uh, check application checklist requirements were not met. Provide precedence of the proposed porch design. Context six point six point one through four, six point four one through four, and I think that is it. All right, motion made by Commissioner Hawkins, seconded by Commissioner Walker. Any further discussion of this motion? Can I just make a clarification? I believe it's 6.3, through 4 for context. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, amendment accepted, Commissioner Hawkins? Yes. And that still works for you, Commissioner Walker? Okay. All right, let's vote. Commissioner Leinberger? Yes. Commissioner Wheat? Yes. Commissioner Barth? Yes. Commissioner Hawkins? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Commissioner Wojcik? Yes. Commissioner Whitlock? Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Motion to deny passes 9 0. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Our All next right. application is number 6 through 6 North Graham and 420 West 6th Street. I believe Sheldon is joining us via WebEx. And, and, and let the record show that uh, Commissioner Leinberger is recusing from this one. Hi, Sheldon. Hello, hello. How are you? Doing well. Hopefully this will be quick, but in a different way than the previous two. <laughs> <laughs> Sheldon, have you been sworn in? Yes, I raised my hand earlier and was sworn in. Okay, excellent. Okay, I'm gonna jump right in. The application was continued from the February 8th meeting. Like the last two applications, a decision is required today on this case. And it was continued for windows, trim details, uh, interior window light proportion details, more information about the replacement, proposed replacement windows on the historic building, side-by-side -side comparisons, and a note that the commission is not being asked to review lighting or signage at this time. Um, I would just ask the commission when you state your decision, whatever that may be, please make sure that the lighting or signage is referenced in your decision that it was not reviewed. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sheldon. Sheldon, if you would state your name and your address for the court reporter, please. Yes, Sheldon Clark, uh, 6204 Elkington Lane, Mint Hill, North Carolina. Thank you. And then I also should mention that there are a number of, let's see, where is Sheldon's? 
Where is Sheldon? Sheldon, I am not finding your. We'll get us straight. Why don't you go ahead and we'll keep going? Okay. We are. Well, uh, are you looking for some? Where would you like to start? Oh, um, since we're hitting the windows and the materials, we can basically go to the last. Um, last four slides of the presentation. So, yeah, and there were the side by sides. We can just go through those real quick. Side by sides. Okay. Yeah, we're right there. Number 40. There you go. Screen isn't big enough. Okay, so with these, the, the reason why there are side by sides on these were just because we changed the annotation um, to clarify the siding material that was being used. So um, we did provide uh, samples there for you guys to take a look at. Um, it's the Hardy Artisan V Groove um, lap siding. And so that's called out, and that's um, as well as just calling out the reveal panel as well um, in changing that annotation on the elevation. So that's why slides 39, 40, 41, 42, and I believe 43 are revised. Um, should be able to go then down to, I'm scrolling on my own here. Let's see here, the same thing in terms of the window configuration was highlighted. Um, Consistent with your um, notes are the request of not having um, equal picture frame trim on the windows. And so if we're on slide 46. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Um, there you see there that we have our proposed um, thin projected sill um, that's being illustrated there and it's called out more in detail when we go further into the project. Um, the next slide is 48 that I want you to hit. And this one um, was revised to show basically the typical um, getting a more vertical read on the windows. Um, on the previous um, iteration that you see on the side there, we had a single vertical um, mullion in each window unit. And so we add a second. So now that breaks that up into three sections per window. And that gives a much more vertical read on the individual um, panes or simulated panes of glass in those windows. Slide 49, um, just updating the restoration uh, detail call outs here um, in terms of what's happening with the windows. And then in more detail on slide 50, Yes, slide 50 here. So just showing the um, sample existing windows um, and the different conditions that are there and just calling out how we propose to treat those. Um, on the window that's on the top left, um, that's one of the windows that it has a, a later edition of a louver or grill in the top light there. And so we'd be removing that and restoring. Um, hopefully with some of the existing glazing panels that are already in place um, from other parts of the building where they're being, you know, from the portions of the building that are being demolished. And then in the section there, just seeing the call out of the different components of the existing windows and for any of the broken um, or damaged panes of glass that those would be um, first priority is to replace them uh, with reclaimed panes from on the site and then to putty glaze them um, in a manner consistent with the existing windows. Um, there is a kind of a, a parge sill that happens to provide slope um, at all these windows here. Uh, not a detail that we would do anymore and don't see that that often, um, but we would want to make sure that that is um, repaired so that we have a waterproof surface and then to repoint the jams um, at the windows just so that we have a good um, watertight and integral um, wall assembly at that point. The next thing we want to go down to highlight uh, slide 52 on the side by side there. 
And so with this one, we updated the actual um, and called out the material for the window trim so that we can get that uh, one inch projected sill. And you can see the other um, five and a half inch trim at the head, at the jam, and then we go for the more narrow band at the sill as requested. On slide 53, uh, this one here. So uh, what we're proposing is the V groove siding um, as one of the materials uh, in the project here. And you can see some examples uh, throughout the neighborhood, uh, historic fourth ward of the flat shiplap siding. Um, and there are different exposures in terms of whether it's a tight um, seam shiplap or if it's more of a Dutch lap or, um, but what we're proposing is something that's kind of a, in between a little bit more modern in the sense of it's a D groove, but it is a full thickness siding that emulates the thickness of actual wood. But this is a cementitious um, siding product so that it's going to um, have much more durability than if we were to use a, a cedar um, siding. And then the panel precedent, the different uses and types of panels throughout the fourth ward that we see on residential um, and commercial buildings here. Um, some of these look like they're actually um, uh, ethos on North Church here on 220. Um, and that is an addition to a uh, actual historic building, um, a non historic structure down at West 6. We see the um, panel infill up for the bays there, um, as well as for historic St. Peter's. We see um, a true wood panel, uh, presumably, that's being used. And so um, while we're taking the use of panel, um, you know, into the, the 20, 21st century here in terms of using a cementitious, uh, but it will read the same as a wood panel. And the samples are also provided there of the reveal trim, um, and that will be similar application. It will read similar to what you see on North Church, um, 229 North, North Church examples um, at the top of the page here. And these are just some other examples of projects, much more contemporary than what we're we're doing or proposing, but it's examples of the product in use um, and in practice. And that really gets to all the questions that you guys have posed previously. All right, thank you, Sheldon. Great presentation. Um, Christy, do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? No callers. All right. Commissioners, questions for Mr. Clark. I did have one question. Okay. Um, Sheldon, question on the, I think it's slide A46, the restoration details. So I see that you're, are you proposing to, is there a current storefront, are there current storefront windows on that historic por portion of the building? Yes, so there are current storefront windows, they're not historic storefront windows, they're a Conier um, sightline, not sightline, um, I think it's the Conier Trifab, and that is the, the type of um, storefront that we'll be putting back in place. And um, it's currently a, a green color. We're going to do something that's a little bit more updated. I know we don't get into color here, but just want to make sure that it is a, a sound installation. So we will be replacing those, um, but it will be um, in the same manner as the existing storefront. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Other questions for Mr. Clark? Yes, Commissioner Goodwin. Uh, yes, yeah, Sheldon, uh, one, one question that I had when I was looking through the application, I saw these large four feet by eight feet hardy panels at five sixteenths inch thick. And then I saw the sample going around and realized it's actually seven sixteenths. And just want to confirm that it, it is the thicker, the thicker material uh, for the uh, large panels. The pan, okay, the panels that are in the sample kit. Okay, yes, those are going to be the, I believe it's the 7 sixteenths is the reveal panel, yes. Okay, and not 5 sixteenths as shown on that particular slide? Uh, 
Correct. And we can do a verification um, for that if you guys want to do that as a um, just as a um, uh, conditional. Yes, staff can do that with you. Okay. And then one other question too is there was there was one slide that showed, and this was also brought up in the staff notes that there's a a vinyl or aluminum uh, spacer bar. I'm, I'm assuming that that is not a vinyl spacer bar in the windows. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, no, we would do the um, no. aluminum spacer bar for the simulated vinyl. Not, not vinyl. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for those clarifications, Commissioner Goodwin, Commissioner Barth. Christy, could you go to sheet A43? I don't know which slide that is. I apologize. 47. Thank you. No, 46. Sorry. There we go. Um, so, Sh Sheldon, thank you for your presentation. Uh, good sum summary. Uh, I noticed that we have on the right hand side uh, sheet, Christy. Um, Oh, is this is this the updated sheet? Yeah. Oh, I guess we're we're looking at it side by side. Okay, well, ignore that question. I apologize. <laughs> no worries. Gotcha. Okay, I was going to comment on the picture frame, but yep. Sheldon has been wonderful enough to address that. Thank you. Um, let's go to uh, forty-eight, a forty-eight, and Sheldon, perhaps you can. You can answer this for me. The, the conditions where we have siding um, wall material, um, how far out does your trim material stick beyond the siding? So our trim is going to be set basically so that it is proud of the siding. It's not going to be like a, a flat condition. Do you have a, a specific example? Same. So, like window trim, window trim will be proud of the adjacent siding and not flat with it so that we don't get. Um, and I gets, think if we look at the window detail towards the bottom of the presentation, let's zoom in there to see if that's shown the appropriate way. Yeah, there you go. All right, so that. For that one, we're using what's that? The five fourths hardy trim. It's thicker than the siding itself, so that we don't have to pad out behind it. But there's a way that we can pad out um, with a drainage plane. If you guys want to be more proud, we just need to make sure that we're not more proud than the window um, framing. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, my primary concern here is obviously shadow lines and and. Um... You know, everything just becoming so flat with the historic examples that we see in the districts. Uh, typically, you know, the, the trim is a little bit more um, proud than the siding. Um, you know, I, from my perspective, I'm okay with you guys working with staff on that, uh, but obviously we'll, we'll see when we vote. Uh, but that would be my recommend or my, my only consideration with trim. And note for the record, we're talking about slide 52. 52, thank you. That was all I had. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Commissioner Barth. Any other questions before we close for deliberation? All right. Sheldon, anything you want to add before we close? Um, no, hopefully it's a, a thank you guys for this uh, rigorous process. Um, <laughs> we'll take that whether you give it to us or not. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Commissioner Barth has a question for Actually, you. Actually, just me. looking at this, I'm, I'm glad I caught this before we closed. Uh, looking at the sill condition there, it appears you have you have the, the V groove lap, but your detail shows almost the the starting piece of that that lap joint up underneath the sill. Christy, if you could zoom into the sill there, I would think that we would not want to see that exposed. We would want no the cut. Off the, it would be cut. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we would. I think we'd like to see that update in the drawings for staff. So. Okay. All right. We'll close now for deliberation. 
Commissioners, let's go through the reasons why this application was continued, shall we? Okay. It's going to take me a minute to get there. Okay, so first one for the windows, provide the trim details that are not picture frame, uh, referencing standard 7.14 and standard 6.16 for detailing. Has that been addressed? Yes. Yes, it has. Number two, windows, specifically as it relates to slide number 49, Pursue only vertical proportions of window lights throughout the project. Christy, will you go to 49, please? All right. Yeah, that's 40. what we need. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that has been done. Yes. Okay. Third reason replacement windows on the historic structure on the existing historic building. Um, we're looking for restoration of windows and uh, for them to provide additional detailing with how the restoration is to occur. We have a whole section on that that was addressed. Yes. Yes. Mm hmm. Okay. Number four, provide side by side comparisons of each iteration on individual slides so, so that they can be reviewed accurately. Um, Let's just keep moving on that one. Okay. Uh, the commission is not reviewing lighting or signage at this time. Okay. So the reasons why we continue this application have been met. Anything that we have not addressed. Well, we can only address why we continued it. Um, are, do we have anyone here who is not pleased with uh, the results of the Updates. All right, it sounds like it's time for a motion. Are you discussing any of the materials? We have not discussed materials. We're just. The siding detail and the panels since this is new information. Has this is new information. So can we say that we are not addressing this because we're addressing the reasons why it was continued and materials were not that. But that. But they prov but they this have is new to. information, and you have to decide on the case today. Today, yeah. So okay, yeah. You you are well within your purview of reviewing materials. It's okay. actually required. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then let's do that. So we have these two here that were passed around. Three um, different types of materials that are being used that will mimic the look and shadow lines of wood. Um, Phil, you had some questions that Sheldon answered about the reveals and all of that. So any thoughts about you? Any thoughts about the materials? I'm, I'm satisfied. OK, the, at least the, the trim and the, um, the corner boards. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of the, of the siding, mm -hmm. the thickness of the siding, mm -hmm. um, which is the same as the artisan series party material mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um, and then he's also they're also using uh, the thick panel boards as well mm -hmm. commissioner uh bartha saw you taking pictures of it because you know this is available where some other stuff is not any thoughts that you'd like to share with the commission on the materials being proposed no i think the the i'm not familiar with the v group i think it's great um uh, you know i've i've always been um not in favor of the the heart, you know paneling that is used i'm not sure how that translates into a precedent of how this might be seen on a res you know a single family project i hope it wouldn't but uh, at least from my perspective <laughs> <laughs> um otherwise i think i think it's fine i'd just like to clarify some of the things that we brought up in the discussion in okay yeah so let's do that now Oh, for you mean for staff to clarify. So the trim and state what you would like for staff to correct. Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. Commissioner Goodwin. 
wanted to add one thing. Does this not resemble a German lap siding that we frequently see on historic structures? The V the V groove. Yes. Um, I mean, it, to me, it it looks like a V. I mean, it's like a V groove that we typically typically see on a, a soffit or a ceiling. Um, I have seen V groove done in a siding condition before a shiplap. Um, I, without zooming into these pictures, I don't know that I'd see that, and I don't know which ones are historic or not. I'm pretty sure the top right is not historic. Clarify. These are historic pictures. These are not, and it, and we might have to reopen for Sheldon, but this is not showing an example where V Grove was used. These are showing German lap, and he's trying to point to the case that they look German just yeah. is historic to mm -hmm. fourth ward, and this is a modern interpretation of German lap. If mm -hmm. I'm interpreting him what he said correctly, the only the only difference is is that. You know, with German lap, you get more of a shadow line. Uh, v groove is used in our districts. I don't usually see it in a siding application, or you know, from my perspective or expertise or whatever. Um, I mean, I would I would be fine with it. It's it's. So it's occurring. In all the gray, correct. It's in all the yep a. I uh, just want to. White, and then the panel system is the dark gray, I think. But let's ask Sheldon. Okay, we will reopen so Sheldon can speak to the siding and where it occurs. Sheldon? Yes. The better uh, elevations to look at would be the, um, yeah, the ones further up where we updated the annotation to call out where the siding is happening. Um, so, yeah, we just genericize the labels here um, and then provide the specific um, specification later on. So for the lap siding versus horizontal fiber cement siding. So when we say horizontal fiber cement, just to know that it will be installed and cut in a horizontal manner and that it wouldn't be like full size uh, four by eight or four by 10 panels running vertical that um, they would be running a horizontal manner. Um, and so it varies between white or gray uh, locations on the building. And yes, the note of um, the precedent images that shown were instances of a German or Dutch lap. Um, I think there was two different reveal profiles um, that were in there. And this one was basically um, something that has a deeper shadow line than the tight ship lap siding, um, which I believe is used in one of the examples. Um, I think that was the top right one um, is a tight ship lap versus something that has a deeper shadow line. So this provides a deeper shadow line um, than that. Okay. All right. Can can I ask while we're we're still open, Sheldon does. Hardy or whatever this product is, do they have a, a German ship lab equivalent or was this yeah. the closest match you could find? No. So the they have three profiles. So they have a tight ship lab where there is a pencil line um, square channel reveal. And then they have one that they actually call the square channel reveal. It's more rectangular. It is uh, taller. It's more like, I guess, a German ship lap in terms of like what the reveal is, but the profile of the depth of, or the height of the reveal. Um, but the actual profile of how you get down into that reveal is just a square down um, and back up, if that makes any sense. It's a rectangular profile instead of um, yeah, the, that deep kind of, yeah. The reveal is just much more down. correct. The reveal is much more on that instance, correct? Uh, I didn't catch that. The reveal is much more. The, re the reveal is greater than like a, a butt jointed ship lap, like you mentioned in the first example. Yes. So Sheldon said yes. Okay. Um, so before we close, you know, I'm looking at standard 
uh, let's see, 7.16, number two. If a wood appearance is appropriate within the design of a new non-residential building, non-grained cementitious siding that matches the traditional dimension of wood siding may be permitted. So I will use that standard along with something that we just talked about in our retreat, which is uh, how the pedestrian interfaces with the building. It's not something, well, it is lower here, but um, you know, it's further up. It is not something that is to put in Brett's uh, terms, not something that's being touched every day. There's, you know, there is, it is out of the pedestrian view, it's further up and it does meet our standards. Um, so for those two reasons, I would be willing to say yes to this material. Commissioner Goodwin. I agree and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused and maybe you explained this and I apologize if you already have, but the sample that was passed around, which is what I'll call a modified German siding, is that the horizontal fiber cement uh, panels? Um, or those no, the that is the, what we say lap siding is where we would be putting what you're calling the modified German lap siding. When we say horizontal siding, that would be the hardy panel. And, and that is the only type of lap siding that, they're, that you're using then? The, yes, the only lap siding is the V group siding that we're proposing. And then the, the the other one that was shown on that slide is the that's those are the large four by eight panels then. Yes, but we're not proposing them in a four by eight orientation that we need to basically use them in a horizontal um, orientation is what we're looking for. There are yeah, there need to be additional uh, cuts above the brick there, but that's all the hardy panel, not lap siding. Sure, I understand. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions about the materials that are being used before we close? I feel you over here thinking, Commissioner Barth. What are you thinking? Think out loud. <laughs> no, I mean I'm I'm good with it. It's what I'm struggling with is I, I don't normally see a V groove material in a horizontal application used for siding. Mm -hmm. um, it does mimic certain other types of siding. And as you mentioned, Commissioner Parati, I, you know, it's it's out of the pedestrian landscape. Um, it's up high, it mimics German lap siding, not exactly, but but pretty darn close. Um, so I'm 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 on, I'm fine with it. Okay. I think. <laughs> How's that for non-committal? <laughs> I think Sheldon will take it. We'll close and uh, go back to deliberating. So, you know, if they didn't use that material, what material would they be using? Maybe that was a question for Sheldon. All right, we will reopen. Sheldon, if you weren't using this V-groove, what would you be using? Um, there are two other versions of this product. The other two profiles, I think, are, are appealing that appeal to us that we want to use on other projects. Um, I, I feel like neither of those are really as appropriate because they are just a square reveal and it's not a V, like an angled, beveled um, reveal. Um, I, I am very partial to the straight ship lap that has the pencil line joint. Um, the other thing is artisan lap siding is coming back sometime in the future, um, but don't feel like that is because it's a, you know, it is much more a single family residential mm -hmm. um, type of product. Mm -hmm. um, we architects have been using lap siding on big multifamily projects um, just because there wasn't a product out there like this artisan um v groove ship lap and c channel um product and so i i think that we're moving in the right direction for once in terms of material in the industry and uh, we could do something else but i think it will take away from the the project and the historic okay. nature of it 
All right. Okay. Thank you, sir. We will close. I think for the third and final time. Um, so we have standards to lean on uh, when it comes to this material, and we have some, you know, wisdom that was imparted on us uh, with our Shippo guide, Brett Sturm, um, who talked about the importance of not getting bogged down in the weeds and paying attention to what pedestrians are seeing um, and touching and interfacing with on a day to day basis. And that is not the top level of this building. So I am good with the materials. Um, Christy, would this be the first time we've used this material? Correct. So I was setting a standard. You would need to you would need to direct staff as to whether this is appropriate when people ask to sub out traditional lap. Mm -hmm. um, or you can say you're approving it for this particular project for these particular reasons. Mm -hmm. Given the uh, maybe the uh, lack of availability. Well, or the mixed use nature of the project. And right? the fact that it's non residential. Uh, I, I mean, ish. I know that there are some. Like this is residential. But right. So but it's, it's mixed. Like, yeah. Multi use. Multi use. Yeah. The location of the product. Yeah. All okay. those things that you've already talked about. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So are we good to bless the materials? Anyone who's not. Speak up now or forever hold your peace. Or at least until the next application, hold your peace. All right, let's get a motion going. Sheldon has answered all of the reasons why we continue this application and we've just uh, leaned on guidelines, excuse me, standards for why we would be willing to accept V Groove on this particular project. So someone step up knowing that we'll work as a team to craft the motion. Not all at once. I'll make a motion. Commissioner Hawkins. <laughs> Commissioner Hawkins, all right. I'd like to make a motion to approve this application based on it meeting the design standards for Chapter seven. Chapter seven mm -hmm. and chapter seven, well, chapter seven. Chapter seven, we might even want to include uh, the Secretary of Interior Standards uh, 2.5. And Secretary of Inter Interior Standards 2.5. And I think, uh, let's see here. And also windows um, mm -hmm. that was satisfied uh, window restoration standard 4.14. Mm -hmm. was chapter six and seven. And chapter six. Mm -hmm. And uh, do we want to talk about, I know that we want to talk about V groove, right? So that we are accepting um, this new material of V Groove. Someone else want to chime in and talk about why? In terms of guidelines? Yeah, so the guideline for it was 7.16, number four. Mm -hmm. right. And we probably want to add that um, this is a multi uh, use uh, space. So it is located in fourth ward. It mimics the look of wood. And this particular material is also removed from, I guess, the pedestrian uh, view. Pedestrian what? Pedestrian environment. Accepted. All right. Perfect. All right. Should, do we have any standards that we're missing or any points that we have not addressed? Yes. So. Number five. Oh, reviewing. and the commission is not uh, reviewing lighting or signage at this time. All right. Thank you for keeping us on, on track, Christy. 
All right, so motion made by Commissioner Hawkins, seconded by? Second. Commissioner Barth. Any further discussion of this motion? Does does um, item number five, the lighting incentives, that, does that mean the applicant's required to come back when that information becomes available and tenants are selected? Correct, yeah. And they indicated that, I believe, at the last meeting that they didn't even want us to review it, but mm -hmm. we just need the record to reflect that. Yeah, and we've done that before. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Okay, so let's vote. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Goodwin. Friendly amendment that Sheldon, Sheldon was going to confirm that the large hardy panels are 7 16th inch thick and also that the trim boards will stand proud of the siding. Except with staff on that. Accepted. Chris, you want to say your V groove detail underneath the windows? Uh, another friendly amendment would request that the applicant work with staff on the sill condition detail. Um, where the V groove meets the sill. Except uh, uh, highlighting that we would not like to see an open lap joint underneath the sill. Accept it. Accept it. And is your friendly amendment accepted by you, Commissioner Barth? Yes. All right. All right. Let's vote. Commissioner Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Barth. Yes. Commissioner Hawkins? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Yes. Commissioner Wojcik? Yes. Commissioner Whitlock? Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Congratulations, Sheldon. Motion to approve passes 8 0. Great work. Great, great work. Thank you. All right. Did you, did y'all want a break? Yeah, yeah. Let's do a five. Can I do one thing? Sure. Uh, the applicant for number seventeen has requested to be heard after five. Mm -hmm. So we'll oh, just man. come back when we come back after our five minute break. We'll start with number seven, nineteen fifty three, one more drive. Sounds good. Thank you.
Angie, are you with us? I'm here. Hi, Angie. Have you been sworn in? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Um, and I think Doug Eamon's on the phone too. If okay. anyone is in the room or on the phone and hasn't been sworn in, would you please direct your attention to our chair at this time? All right. If you will, please raise your right hand and respond. I do to the following question. Do you affirm the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thanks, Angie. Okay, the next application is for new construction at 1953. I believe it should be one more drive. Um, oh, no, we're, we're going to 17. Remember? No, no we're going to hear 17 around 5 o'clock. Oh, okay. okay, I missed it. That's okay. We announced it before the break, but we can announce it again. And yep. just for anyone wondering why we're moving 17 up, there, it's a unique circumstance because the building is having water infiltration and the commission is tasked with preserving buildings. So it's important that that gets heard today to prevent further deterioration of the building. So that's the only reason we're, you know, moving that one around. Um, but back to number seven, 1953, one more drive. It's for new construction, staff analysis on page three. Angie, I'm going to set you up with page five. Um, and if you would state your name and your address for the court reporter, please, and then let me know which slide you'd like me to go to. Okay. Uh, Angie Lauer, ALB Design, 901 Berry Hill Road, Suite B1, Charlotte, 28208. Um, and thank you, Chrissy, uh, for the introduction. So um, you have before you an application um, or an address that had an application for demolition um, approved, well, an application approved for demolition of 365 day stay back in September. And um, the slide six, as Christy is presenting, um, is its existing house on a very unique piece of property um, in the Wilmore district. And uh, years ago, this property was um, adjacent property to the right and correct, uh, to the south, I should say, and um, was divided, but because there was a, um, the stream, the, um, the floodplain, uh, the way the property was divided, this was the residual of that property. And so it had to meet the minimum requirements of square footage um, when it was subdivided. So it is a unique piece of property. Um, and I don't think I've ever worked on such a unique site. Um, you know, when you're asked to think outside the box, um, I believe that we have here. And so um, in the past, you guys have asked other applicants and myself as well why you know, we feel, or the commission feels they should grant um, maybe extenuating circumstances or deviate from the design standards. Um, and if there was ever a site that would lean you in that direction, I do believe that this is one of them. So um, not by, um, you know, uh, specific uh, design standards, but for just the uniqueness of the site and to try to build a house on this property. So um, I we did some different studies and did some reviews with staff. And one of the things that we wanted to maintain was the height. And this particular um, structure, existing structure was 22 feet, a couple of inches in height. And we wanted to make sure that we did not go any taller than the original uh, house that was here. Obviously, the original house was only, I believe, 800 or so, maybe even less square feet because it was two floors that you can see on slide um, uh, six. You can see the existing house on the site next to the vehicle that's parked next to it. It's just a tiny little block versus the new construction that you have before you. Um, on slide seven, uh, or just some of the surrounding homes, um, some are new and some are uh um, existing historic um, structures. Slide eight um, was some of the design 
uh, homes that we took guidance from, as you can see on one more drive, uh, 17, I believe it's 1750. If you can zoom in Christy a little bit on slide eight. So 1756 did have a um, drive to the left of the front doors. Uh, a 1605 Wilmore Drive had a carport to the right. And then um, a house that we did work on was 1808 Wilmore Drive also had a carport um, that was street facing and that was the restoration that we did uh, a few years ago. So looking at some historic homes as reference on the same slide, we looked at some of the homes from 1940s because that was the period of, of construction, which was post-war homes. And so we started looking at different styles of um, architecture that fit what our clients wanted as well. And one of the things that we found was there were homes that had drives and um, parking to the front stylistically, um, you know, trying to keep it in the small house vibe, but um, have some deviation um, to the to what you would think would be typical. Um, in your Department of Interior Standards um, on page 2.5 of your guidelines, item number three, it, it which Christy, I can just read it. It says each property shall be recognized as a physical record of its time, place, and use. Changes that create a false sense of historical development, such as adding conjectural features or architectural elements from other buildings shall not be undertaken. And so one of the things that we wanted to do was pay respect to, you know, 1940s homes, um, but yet try to do something a little bit, um, you know, as a thumbprint of today. So I'm going to go to slide nine, Christy. Um, slide nine, um, one of the comments in the staff review was um, front parking and the, the home that's there now, there again, it does have front parking. I know it's not in front of the house. It is to the side of the house. Um, but again, this lot being such a unique lot to develop, trying to be creative with its parking. And so we do show parking on the right, but we also did show in our plan, and you'll see in elevations, we do have a car park area um, that is uh, an internal carport of the structure. Um, slide 10, I'm just gonna flip through these. So slide 10, you could see the height um, from grade to ridge is the same. We didn't change that. We did work with existing um, conditions so that the height would not be an issue. Um, I think the width um, in proportion to the other homes um, on the street, if you look at 1945 um, and 1941, the width of the homes are in proportion. Um, so balance front facing gables um, was also um, something that we tried to um, respect that was on the streetscape. Um, slide 11 and 12 are just existing conditions that um, show you height and only for reference um, at this point. So um, I do want to address some of the items that were in the staff review. And um, the first was the dimension of the front stoop. Um, and the dimension of the front stoop, if you go to the floor plans, which are slide 16, you'll see that the front stoop is, is only four feet deep, actually three foot 10 to be exact. Um, so that was a question of dimension from the front. Um, also the, the walkway, um, we found that it was almost impossible to maintain the walkway um, at the original house purely due to construction um, with demolition, construction materials, construction vehicles. It would be very, very hard to maintain that sidewalk, um, but we do have a sidewalk that leads to the drive path um, because right now it's just gravel, it's just dirt. Um, so we did create a sidewalk to the drive. Um, uh, with the front yard parking, um, you know, one of the things that we would, you know, possibly consider if it became a point um, would be carriage strips to the front and then parking on the side. But I felt like that might be um, a little bit um, trying to force the parking um, strips. So we didn't, we didn't go that way, but we can talk about it. Um, the next item was the left elevation and the rhythm of the dormer. Um, and 
the left elevation on slide 13. Yes, yeah, slide 13. Um, just purely based on the floor plan internally, um, because it is such a constricted house, it it narrows back as it goes back into the property. So right where Christy has her mouse, just above that window E on the dormer, um, there there is a possibility of adding another window there should we need to, just for the rhythm of the dormer. Um, the right elevation, same thing, slide 12. And so one of the things that I think is maybe a little bit um, or want to explain is there's movement on this elevation. It is not coplanar from the front. It does step back along with the site as the site gets narrow from front to back. And so um, I believe there was a comment on the lower three windows, um, one being in the carport, the second one being in the mudroom, and the third one being above a sink. So that window would not be able to be made longer. Um, so uh, the front window is at the stair landing. So again, the stairs cut into the window. And we felt like because it was tucked back, those windows were really subordinate to the primary function that they could be a slightly smaller. Um, there was also comment about the pattern, um, like the four over four versus a six over six, um, the verticality of the muttons which can be changed um, very simply. Um, the next item was roof and roof vents. Um, so the house will have soffit vents and it automatically, in our opinion, based on just general construction techniques, um, there needs to be a ridge vent and that is consistent front to back. I'm not sure if we've ever shown ridge vents on any of our documents, but that is a given. Um, anyway, from front to back and left to right. Uh, the doors, um, the sill below the door is just that, it's just a small sill. Um, it might've been a graphic error, but it is it is just a sill for the door itself as a component. Um, historically, you would have had a sill and a subsill. If we need to do that, we could also add a subsill under the door. Um, the material of the doors, the front door would be wood. Um, the back door um, could be a clad um, slider um, if we decide to do, and I'm going to ask that we could work with staff on um, clad windows and doors for the for the back um, and a wood, wood, wood door on the front. Um, at this point, we haven't really nailed down a manufacturer yet um, because these aren't const full construction documents, but um, you know, we do specify that they be at least a Colby or similar could be a Geldwin sight line. Um, the foundation height varies because the grade changes on this, but um, minimum to code is 18 inches of clear crawl space. And we do have a building section, I believe. Um, Fourteen. So you could see grade to foundation. Um, and it is a parged cement parged foundation, similar to the house that's to the right or to the south of this structure. Um, the, uh, there will not be a skirt board that is not typical of the style of architecture. Um, small houses didn't really have that. They did just the siding overlap the, uh, the floor system. Um, the handrails would be wood treated on the back. Um, and if we need them um, by code, anything greater than 29 inches needs a handrail. Um, if we decide if the grade does slightly change and it gets greater than 29 inches, we would absolutely need it, but it'd be treated wood. And I would ask that we could work out any specific handrail details with the commission being on the back or with staff. Um, Corner boards are wood um, and the window trim to be wood. Um, cement board, I know we've had this discussion last month. If there is an approved available cementaceous product that we could use, we would like to use that. Um, so that would be our request. Um, and if we can have the same consideration um, as the project we had on um, uh, Merriman last month, 
I would ask that you give us the option to do wood or cementaceous board. Um, and then the window trim materials again, and the spacing um, we did um, front elevation, which would be slide 12. Uh, double windows, um, the six inch um, mall between them. Um, and then on the right elevation, the, the triple window in the back, uh, there was discussion or staff review notes about the triple window. Um, and it is centered internally. Um, and it's, it would be, we could split it up if we needed to, but the pattern internally, we tried splitting it up and it felt best that it was gang together. Um, just for the flow of the inside of the room. So uh, let me just make sure I've covered everything. Um, that's it. It's all yours. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Angie. Uh, Chrissy, do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? No. All right. Commissioners, questions for Angie. Okay, I'll start. Um, oh, Jill, did you have a question? Oh, I'm um, sure. Yeah, if y'all, because you're in my blind side, so just let me know. Okay. <laughs> All okay. right, Jill. Thank you. Um, yeah, Angie, could I could I can't see from any of the surveys, but could you just talk to us about the relationship between the foundation of your house and the others surrounding it? Sure. Um, as far as the grade change, the height of it, and how it how it relates to the other foundation size so if this the foundation of this house is exactly where the existing house was so nothing has changed so the relationship from like say 1949 to 1953 Wilmore, um nothing nothing has changed so chrissy if you would go to slide six thank you so you can actually see um, the neighboring property uh, mayor. Well, just slightly on this one, but you can see in the upper left hand side of slide 6, the, the adjacent property um, grade to this is exactly where this is. Nothing has changed Jill. So, um, as so far as words, the foundation of this new house is of a similar height to the foundations of the surrounding homes. Um, well, the surrounding homes have a taller foundation, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, that's what I was just curious about. Yes, but because we, we, you know, tried to stay at that 22 feet height, not to exceed the height of the existing structure. The only way to do that is to maintain its existing finished floor level um, and work. Up and down from that. So actually slide 7, Christy, if you will. Um, slide seven, um, if you look at 1949 Wilmore on the right hand side of the slide, you'll see that that house foundation, um, is very similar. It's almost at grade. If you look at 1945, um, from door to side, you know, to front stoop, uh, 1936 Wilmore has the similar conditions. Um, 1940, they're all within. A foot, I'm assuming, or or so, of grade. Um, new construction, which you guys don't look at, but 1948 across the street obviously has a deeper foundation. And then the house that we did at 1957, um, Wilmore, which is the property to the south. Um, slide. Six, seven, slide eleven. Yeah, it's like if you go down in the center of the slide, that's the house that we did a few years ago. Um, it's similar. So grade to finish floor. We we did kind of look at all the existing homes around it, but the grade changes. So there is a significant grade drop. Um, Jill, if you look at the street survey again, you could see where sidewalk is or street. There is no sidewalk here. Um, slide nine, uh, 10, 10. 
And if you could zoom in on that, you could see where the sidewalk is, where it says top of curb, um, towards the center bottom of the page of 1949. So top of curb is 644.8 and finished floor is 650. So there is almost a five and a half foot grade change, but from foundation to grade is very, very similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And um, the other question I had is it looks like um, you infringe on both side yard setbacks in this project. Is that m me or? No. So you're within five feet of either side yard setbacks. Yeah, so again, slide nine. So the, the zoning ordinance is set up so that it is that foundation and that um, architectural features can encroach. Uh, that's, that's what it is. That's okay. the roof line. So we are at foundation. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Commissioner Hawkins. So, uh, and thank you, Jill, for pointing that out because that was going to be my question. So, the parking, though, um, is there an opportunity for the parking to go farther back than uh, represent than the front yard parking that's um, shown here? So, if you can zoom in, Christy, on that slide, please, which is slide nine. And if you look at the front, um, so we actually stopped the concrete pad just beyond the front column on the right-hand side. And there's very little space there. I mean, that side setback is a five foot mark, which is, you know, half of a car. Um, it could, the, the vehicle itself could slide back to about where Christy has her mouse, um, right? To about there, but that would be it. Well, what, then what I'm getting at is you show precedence with some other uh, properties. I think in the along that same street that have more of the, I don't know if it's like a portico or like a carport almost. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious if that is the parking that you would parking option that you would go with, so that it's not front yard parking. So if um, if I may ask you, Christy, to keep this plan, keep the site plan in your mind, but go to the floor plan. So which is slide uh, 15, 16. So while, you know, we're not, we don't have to provide floor plans, but we do because they're so critical for us. Um, if you can see the width, of this structure and where a vehicle was would park. So we are there's two vehicle parking, right? Because we can't park front to back. Like you can't, you know, tandem park. Um, so it would only provide for one vehicle parking. So what we've done is create that carport where a vehicle could pull in um, and then have another vehicle parked to its to the right, which is to the south. Mm. So that arch that you see on the front elevation is actually a carport, which is slide 12. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the front, the parking pad is what's um, tripping me up. And I'm sure we'll talk about that a lot more in deliberation. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Angie, you know, we do make ex uh, exceptions when it's a special kind of lot. Um, just looking at the tax records and st just correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like Vista Homes owned both this lot and then the lot beside it to the right that was subdivided, right? So this lot was one and it was subdivided into two by Vista Homes. And now we're being asked to consider this an exception due to the irregularity or the way the lot's drawn. So can you speak to why we should make an exception for something that seems um, manufactured by the people who are now building the house? 
So sure. Um, so one of the unique um, conditions of the site, the entire site, which is up in the upper right hand corner, if you will, so the survey of slide nine, um, there was the lot was unbuildable um, it, with the amount for the swim buffer. So Christy, if I can ask you to zoom in on the upper right hand corner that shows the survey. So it was one piece, it was one lot. And now if you, there's a survey in the upper right hand corner of that page. There you go. So if you can see the shaded area, that was completely unbuildable, even though it was one piece of property. So that is the swim buffer. And so in order to create both lots that had met the minimum requirement for um, a lot to be built upon, this was the only way to do it because both both lots, if it was one lot, it, I mean, the, the original house that you see here owned all of it. And in order to subdivide it, which they're in, by right entitled to do, provided they meet the minimum requirements of lot size, that was the only way to do it. And so there are utility easements, drainage easements, swim buffers, um, and other conditions that are beyond, you know. Sure. Their site, in, their site constraints. And so just following that, um, that thought process. So there's a portion where you can't build on it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the survey you all had, or they had the survey before they subdivided the lot, correct? Um, the sur this survey was given to us. I don't know. I would imagine that they, in order to subdivide it, had to know what the constraints of the lots subdivided would be. Um, correct. And the only way to do it for this particular property at 1953 to create a buildable envelope was um, to subdivide it in such a fashion that it had an arc to the property. Right. And at which point we knew that parking would not be uh, an option unless the HDC allowed uh, for front yard parking, paying, disregarding our own standards. Well, not necessarily disregarding the standards um, because that carport, um, you know, it, I can do, I can still do side yard parking, right? And I can do tandem parking on this, but it would be at it would be at a tight spot, just like it is now. So the parking that's there now is really front yard parking. Um, it's just not in front of the thermal wall of the. Of the right. Well, you explain that because I drove by and I didn't, you know, I saw the carriage strips for the nice new house to right. the end of this property, but I don't see where people were parking. You say front yard parking where if we can look at slide. Oh, I'm looking at your tax record. Sorry. Um, if we could look at an elevation of the house, if you can sh like just the photo here, sure. even looking at pictures, a picture of the house, actually. I right. think it's and that we have that, we have that in there, slide eight yeah. or so. I'm looking to. Um, no, keep going. Slide six. Six. Yes. So, so, so to right. People I'm sorry. I'm I'm looking at the top left picture, right? So that's the front elevation. Correct. You say that it has front yard parking. Where on this particular slide right on, on, on that elevation are people parking? Right where Christy has her mouse. Oh, so that is not for the house beside it. No. It's for this house. Correct. So those carriage strips are for this 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 property here. Yeah, so that is where so if, you look at, if you look at the survey um, in mm -hmm. the center, you can see where the cars are parking and the original right there. Um, so that's showing something different than the carriage strips that I saw when I pulled up yesterday that's that are shown house. in this top left slide. So there's this top left picture and there's that house. There are carriage strips to the right of it and to the left of the other house. What you're saying. That's, that's the, the driveway, driveway for the other house. 
Yeah, that's what I thought. So I don't see where they're parking in front because I drove by and I looked at this lot again, just okay. to wrap my mind around it. And I don't see where this house has front yard parking. I saw the carriage strips for the other house, but not parking for this house. So can you help me with that? Yeah, so this is where they're parking, <laughs> um, which is, I mean, I know that they're parking in front of the house. You said this is where they're parking, but I don't know where yeah. where is. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so Chris yeah, Chris said, I'm sorry, I was using my mouse to control the. <laughs> I think Krista Leinberger is going to chime in and help. Okay, uh, Commissioner Leinberger. Just maybe it'll help clarify when you go to the the photo of the house on the the, the right the the cover top sheet. left. Actually, the cover sheet, which is what four. Is that where they're parking? Yes. So they're parking in the grass. Front yard parking. They're front. Oh, they're okay. Parking. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, so then my next question, just getting off of that, um, would be, and you said this, uh, Angie, I just missed it. You, I lost you. You talked about uh, houses. I think it's on slide 12, maybe. Let's. I'm looking at the, um, no, that's not it. Nine. Uh, ten on number 10. So you're mentioning the houses that are wider because this house is like a smidge. Uh, the house that new construction that you're proposing is a smidge shorter, but is wider, right? So which of the historic houses are also as tall as this one and as wide as this as the new construction you're proposing? Um, as far as the, well, I'd have to go all the way down the street, but there are houses that are wider. So if you look at, um, five houses down, one, two, uh, I can't see it cause I have to blow it up, but yeah, um, same. it's 1931. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's just as wide and maybe a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's, at, and it's taller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you look at the line for the topography line, you'll see that it kind of fits within that 660 line or so. Okay, all right, thank you. And then um, uh, my last question for now, um, we're doing 26, roughly 26 feet uh, setback to the thermal wall. Did you mention what the setback is to the stoop? Uh, the stoop comes out about four feet, three feet, 10, and that's on slide 15. Okay. On number 15. Thank you. Um, so the house that was built recently to the right of this one sits close. It has a more shallow setback. Um, and we said that that was fine, right? Because we're rounding the curve. However, uh, this particular new construction that you are um, proposing would then bring the line down even further because, okay, we, we have a curve where there's a gradual um, uh, approach where, you know, the, the setbacks become, uh, how am I trying to put, let me think about the best way to put it. I'm at a loss for words now, but let's say that the new construction house that's currently there is closer to um, the curb. Then I would imagine that yours will be a little further back from the curb because we're rounding that curb. The house beside that is even further back. And then the houses beside those are even further back. And so it feels as though um, with this one having a more shallow setback that we are now moving that line further to the curb than it should be just looking at the entire streetscape looking at this house in context to the one that's to the right as well as down the street so that's something that i'll talk about i'll give you a chance to address it now okay so um yes i i appreciate your question and certainly understand so christy if you could go to the um site the uh, keep going slide Five maybe, where it shows the, yeah, no. 
There was another um, slide seven, yes. And so um, there is a, a mix of homes that, like if you were to draw a straight line from West Boulevard down, it, there's not a straight line. There is some movement in and out, um, you know, just five houses up from this one, one, two, three, four, five, six houses up. You can see that that house sits further back and the house to the south sits further forward. Um, so it is not just an absolute parallel straight line. Um, and due to its width, again, based on the conditions that we were given, the width of the lot at its narrowest point um, with the setbacks only allows us to do, I believe, 12 or 13 feet in width. So the further back we do push the house, the narrower the house would become. And so, again, we I know that the other homes, I believe the house to the left was at 30, 30, 32, 30 feet or so. Um, and we were at 26, so it's a four foot, it's arm span distance. Wait, you're at 26 to the thermal Correct. wall. Correct. And the house to the north is like 30 just mm -hmm. to the thermal wall. So there's about a four foot delta. Um, and so not quite as forward as the house to the south, which is the new house that we did years ago. Um, so it's kind of an in-between point. Um, and yes, the house on the curve is prominent. It sits proud. It had other site conditions, drainage um easements that again you know kind of restricted where we could build from and you guys did approve it which you know we're grateful for that and so this one doesn't sit as proud it does sit you know further back so um it there is there there is a soft curve to this um and that's why there's like about a three and a half or four foot difference from front house to edge of property not necessarily edge of pavement because edge of pavement swings out a little further so um, if that makes makes a difference and you can see this in the site plan that um, we had up earlier um, page slide nine in the upper right hand corner okay thanks angie uh commissioner bart hi angie uh, hey, how are you, Chris? Good, good. Uh, beautiful nugget of a little house. A um, few questions. Uh, um, Christy, if you could go to the, or Jenny rather, could you go to the uh, front elevation? Looking at the front door, Angie, is there is there glass in that front door or is it a solid door? What's, um, tell, tell me what the panels are doing. Yeah, so as of right now, the front door final decision has not been made, um, but it would probably be a wood door, not a glass door. Okay, so those are both wood panels, the upper panel I, and the would, larger lower panel. Okay. Or glass up top and wood below, but again, final details have not been solidified yet. Um, gotcha. And I would ask that if we could work them out with staff. Okay. Um, yeah, so th just my one comment on this, I know you're still thinking about the final uh, aesthetic of that door, but I would say if that is glass in the upper panel, we'd probably want like a three quarter light. That looks like about a fifth, fifth light or sixth light. Um, yes. so we'd want a little more glass there just so it doesn't mimic like a transom window or some narrower proportions that we typically don't like to see. Um, and then also looking at this front elevation, um, it appears the that front covered entry looks like a shed roof, but when you go to the side elevation, you can see below it looks like a hip. What's the intent? Oh, it is a shed. It's just a shed roof. Shed. Okay. Just, yes. Just wanted to. Clarify. Yeah, that was. It, it's a shed. Graphic graphic thing. I know. Yeah, the, um, I missed the box line. Okay, and then in your your building section, it does look like some of the dormers appear to be. Co-planner, I know you you know this too. Would you be open to moving those back four to six inches? We did. We did. So um just uh for transparency, previous meeting, um, we didn't make it. And so I saw the notes 
we did fix the elevations and rush to get them back in before the deadline so that we could make some tweaks to the uh, presentation for you folks. And um, all the elevations are absolutely drawn correct. And so we did reduce the house width on the second floor by a foot by bringing everything in. Okay, yeah, I can see that in elevation. Okay. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, other, the other comments, some of the commissioners mentioned about winter proportions, parking and, and things, just a quick comment about the parking. Uh, I, you know, I, I think we'd still like to see probably, um, you know, the driveway width is a concern. Uh, it's like a double width drive. We typically do single width. Um, I mean, this, the, whoever this homeowner is could park in tandem or on the street. That is always an option especially in some of these tighter uh, communities and more urban communities. Um, I know I do, I do it on my own lot. Um, and then I think, I think those were all my questions. Thank you. Okay. Angie, uh, I'm looking at slide number 12. Yes. And I'm asking, because this is a teachable moment, are those pork chop eaves, pork chop returns? Where? Uh, here, no, they were the roof returns. Okay. I, I'm calling them a dog ear. Um, I'm not sure what. Everyone else calls them, but they do return upon themselves. Like a so pent, roof pent eve return and the eve return. Okay. A pent eve is what a commissioner. Eve. Eve. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I love it when we can all learn together. All right, any other questions, commissioners? Yes, Commissioner Goodwin, and then Commissioner Lineberger. Hi, hi Angie, uh, just one quick question. You know, one, one of the criteria we look at is of, course, is, of course, spacing. I know the constraints are really tight on this lot. On that left side, you're sitting right on the five foot setback, mm -hmm. and then you've got the, the, this large gable roof that um, extends out beyond that. And just curious, I, I know this is a, a I would, I guess it's an arts and craft style home with, and you got a pretty large overhang. How large is that overhang? And at what point does that become an encroachment? Um, well, based on the zoning ordinance, it can encroach up to three feet, but we're not. Um, in my elevations, um, if you look at the section, I believe they were either 15 or 18 inch overhangs. I think it's on slide 14. Okay, yeah, I, and I, I understand that's part of the architecture of the house, and you know, you've got the brackets and that style, which I think is very appealing. Um, the, and I also, you know, was um, concerned about the setback too, and it, I think it would be really good to see a slide similar to number seven showing the, the proposed home, you know, along with the front stoop too, to see how it relates to the surrounding homes. Oh, as far as the setback to um, the streetscape? Correct. Okay. And one more question too, on the, on the foundation, I know we've talked about the foundation um, and you've got a, a block, um, a, a concrete block foundation that's large. How does that relate to surrounding homes? I, seems that I'm seeing mostly brick foundations and I'm um, just wondering if there's more precedent for this type of foundation. Um, can you speak to that? Um, just a preference um, based on, so preference and also to brick is not structural. And so um, I'd have to create a different method of foundation. And so every inch was critical here. Um, so we, you know, have the face of stud, face of block versus face of stud and then um, brick. So, but it was just a, it was just a preference, no, no other reason. Um, you don't see it. It's not, it's very well hidden in the ground. There's not much brick exposure. Um, I think 
Um, some of the other homes, I, I cannot speak specifically, but I think at 1940, if I'm not mistaken, that's that is parged, if I'm not mistaken, from my notes. Christy could tell me for sure. So, and we were, we, I believe that is, but I, I cannot, I cannot tell you for sure. Sorry. Well, well, let me let me ask. I mean, double wide brick, you know, two two layers of brick is structural. Would you consider doing a, a brick foundation if that is more in line with the context? Um, I would absolutely. You know, we would consider it. And you're talking about a pier and curtain wall. Uh, it could be a pier and curtain wall, or it could be, I mean, if you want it to be structural all the way through, then it can just be double wife brick and that's structural too. I mean, I, I think that would be something that, um, we can discuss further. So, yes. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Lineberger. Yeah, I just had a quick question. The Angie, what is the overall width? Um, of the front elevation, both including the overall width, including the portico share. Um, if you go to slide 16, Christy, on our site, on our floor plans, it's not really portico. it'll tell you. Um, can you zoom in on the front? Oh, there. I'm sorry. You'll have to do the math. <laughs> yeah, it's 31 8. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions before we close? Angie, anything you want to say before we close? Um, no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So we'll close now for deliberation. All right, commissioners, bots. That some of the things that have come up, um, yeah, Commissioner Hawkins. I mean, my thoughts are the that front parking pad. I mean, it doesn't exist today. It, I don't think it should be added um, to create uh, an issue that violates our or goes against our standards. So, uh, I think that needs to to go. Okay. All right. Yeah, I see people shaking their heads. Yes. Okay, um, what are some of the other issues, if you have any, with this particular one? Yes, Commissioner Goodwin. Also, as I mentioned earlier, the foundation, I think, needs to be more in line with surrounding foundations. And mm -hmm. They seem to be willing to do brick and perhaps mm -hmm. also um, I, I could see even raising the foundation some, if that's in keeping with the context of the neighborhood, because I don't believe that the roof Elevation is getting excessive, even if you raised it a little bit. I think mm -hmm. it's still, you could raise it some. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be exactly what the old house was. Mm -hmm. It would still be in line with the rest of with the streetscape. Okay. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Goodwin. All right, Commissioner Barth. I'm I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with Commissioner Goodwin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, when it comes to the foundation. I think um, Angie has brought up a precedent at 1940 around the corner. Um, I'm trying to look up if it's a historic example or not, uh, but that is a parged or stuccoed uh, foundation. And I think, you know, we could ask the applicant, but I think what they're trying to go for here is sort of like a, a Tudor-esque style home. Yeah, it looks that way. Which, in my opinion, um, you know, stucco might be fitting here um, and then especially looking at some of the you know here we are at 1936 Wilmore there's barely any foundation there showing uh, 1940 there's maybe 12 inches showing um, so I think that's that's somewhat acceptable at least from my standpoint so and oh, to piggyback on what you just said I just looked in the tax records in 1940 Wilmore Drive was built in 1940 so it's convenient but. yeah <laughs> easy to remember so the foundation is historic and then um some of my other concerns uh, which other commissioners have brought up so i'm going to go ahead and steal those 
uh, mm -hmm. um, the setback, I think we're, you know, that the jury's out on that one. I think we'd, we'd need some clarification as far as how far back this house is compared to other ones on the block so that we can make a ruling there. Um, uh, window configurations, um, proportion, light proportions, um, uh, fenestration rhythm, especially on the left side. Um, no, that's, that's really it for me. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Commissioner Goodwin. Barth, about the height of the foundation. Are you talking? You're not speaking into your mic. What about the height of the foundation? Are you? Uh, and yeah, I had said whatever the precedent is for the neighborhood. So if, okay, if they have parts foundations, then that's fine. Um, but what about the height of this? Yeah, I mean, you good there. Here? Yeah, there are several examples here that Angie has included in her application that I think are comparable to what they're proposing. Uh, 1940, 1936, even the uh, current house sitting on the set that's to be demoed is, you know, maybe a step or two into the house, uh, which I believe is what that uh, current house is proposing. So, I mean, we can see here there's a step and then a threshold to get into the existing house. So, um, from at least in my opinion, I think the height is acceptable. All right. I uh, personal, personally, should this be continued, would love to see it drawn out on the sur uh, the Zetwell survey, or excuse me, thank you, the site plan, um, the, you know, other historic houses that are both this tall and this wide. Um, you would, I, I would like to see that. Um, so let's just go through our sheet, right? Uh, at our retreat, we talked about how we study, and we have this wonderful step-by-step -step, uh, motion worksheet. So setbacks is the first one on there. We've expressed issues or concerns about setbacks. Anyone have any issues with the spacing? I don't think we can... I think having a site plan with the existing house would be telling for a lot of different things. Setback, mm -hmm. rhythm, street rhythm, mm -hmm. um, massing in context, mm -hmm. uh, and those sort of things. So I don't think we can give a honest any honest feedback on that quite yet. So we should we need to see more. Yes. Okay. Uh, orientation. Yep. Okay. Height and width. That is one that I'm kind of struggling with. It's come down slightly, just a smidge. I don't even know if you would notice, but it's gotten wider. Um, so, like I said, uh, just seeing other historic examples along the streetscape would be very helpful. Angie pointed out one uh, that she said she thought uh, would work. It would be nice to have that on paper. I think width, at least a little nugget for the applicant, I think width could be determined by looking at the Zotwell survey, street okay. gate survey. I mean, we can determine width based on that mm -hmm. as well as the height. So that might be helpful, but also maybe the site plan. Okay. Directional expression. What was there is more vertical than what will be there, which, you know, it's still vertical, it just got wider. It's like me after COVID. So <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, it's it's taking up more space and coming closer to the street. Um, but it does respond to its context and surroundings. Okay. All right. Directionally, directional expression wise, at least. And then foundation. We talked about foundation. Um, okay. So let's move down to the next. Um, size, we said that it's in keeping with the streetscape, yes. Massing, um, the way the different parts relate to each other. Looking at our elevations, which will change slightly because, you know, we're asking for a restudy of the windows. Should we hold off on that until we get that or do, should we, 
uh, give Angie an idea of what we're thinking with the massing now. I personally think that we're talking about a structure that's going to change somewhat. So, yeah, Commissioner Barth. I think in, in, until we ask the applicant to restudy the setback and, and confirm some of that, mm -hmm. I, I agree with what you're saying, Commissioner Parati, that, that that could influence the shape and, and form of this building. Okay. All right. And so um, materials. We talked about materials a little, and I don't know if it's putting the cart before the horse to talk about materials. We try and save that for last uh, sometimes. But any initial thoughts about the materials that we should be sharing with Angie? Yeah, Commissioner Goodwin. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the materials still need to be, have not been specified, and they need to be specified. And I know that. Um, and you mentioned the possibility of using cementitious siding, and it's my understanding that Hardy Artisan will be available next month mm -hmm. after a long after a long delay. So that's mm -hmm. that's good news. It's good news. Wanted to share that. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Goodwin. So we'll get more information on the materials, roof form. It's okay. Okay, so say it again into the mic with feeling, Commissioner Barth. Great. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's okay. <laughs> he changed it. <laughs> um, uh, doors and windows, we've talked about our, our, the need to restudy those, um, particularly uh, the horizontal panes. We, we look for vertical. Um, the door needs, uh, we need a little clarity on that. I think that they're still working through that. Uh, cornices and trim. Should we be looking at that right now? It's going to change. Some of the trim will change, I'm sure. Yes, Commissioner Leinberger. I was just going to, just for the record, mm -hmm. um, back to the windows. Mm -hmm. she yes. Indicate on that left elevation that she was open to adding mm -hmm. more fenestration there. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Okay. We heard her. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Leinberger. All right. Cornices and trim. You know. Graphically, they look they look fine. Again, going back to your material discussion, or uh, Commissioner Goodwin's material discussion. I think we need more information on it. What it you know what the material is. Mm -hmm. um, some dimensions. We have some some notations speaking to some of that, but I think we just need a little more. A little more information. Okay, porches, you know, it has a stoop. The reason the stoop has come up is because we want to see um, the measure, the setback to the stoop, the how it relates to the houses around it, uh, not just to the thermal wall, but to the stoop, to the porch. So um, that is what I would add for, for porches. Anyone else have comments about porches? Landscaping, we don't really need to deal with right now. Rhythm, um, we've talked about that relative to the fenestration and quite frankly, the streetscape. All right, so that is a good amount of coverage we've given to this application. Commissioner Barth. You mentioned landscaping. There are two trees not noted, but shown in, in the site, existing site plan in the pictures. Do we need to? speak at least in a motion sense like mm -hmm. that there needs to be some sort of replanting plan i am surprised commissioner walker did not beat you to that <laughs> it's okay um that's why we work as a team um okay yeah absolutely thank good catch commissioner board okay so we have a motion in the works who wants to make it who wants to be the one to write all right commissioner goodwin I've been taking lots of notes. Uh -huh. First, I did have one question. You were asking about the width and the need for more detail. Is mm -hmm. the Zotville survey 
sufficient? Did you just want some more dimensions on the Zot, existing Zot well survey? Is that what you Maybe you can tell me what I want. What I want is, <laughs> maybe you can articulate it better than I can. I just want to see other houses that are historic houses along that street that are just as tall and just as wide, if not taller and wider. Because holistically, yeah, it might have come down a little, but it got wider. And so I just want to see the context. So, yeah, so perhaps some more information down. Or mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Relative to that street with historic houses. Okay. Okay. I think I'm ready to make a motion. Now. Okay. I'll make a motion to continue this application for the following reasons. We'd like to see a plan view drawing that relates the thermal wall setback uh, and also the, the front stoop uh, to that of the nearby homes. Um, to address the width, we would like more detail on the Zotwell streetscape um, showing dimensions of height and width of neighboring homes to make sure that this house is consistent with the streetscape. Uh, we want to restudy the driveway. Uh, the double width is in Congress with the district and front yard parking is prohibited. And let me go ahead and I'll go ahead and mention the standard, just 8.2 number five, 8.2 number six. Uh, we want to restudy the fenestration um, size and rhythm. Um, especially on the right side, uh, including the window pane proportions to remove the horizontal, excuse me, the horizontal aspect ratio. And that's standard 6.15, numbers one and four. We need specifications for all doors for submittal guidelines. We need um, rear deck and handrail specifications also per submittal guidelines. Uh, we need to supply the wood trim and siding specifications per submittal guidelines. Window trim details provide that per submittal guidelines. Um, on roof forms, the coplaners uh, need to be, the dormers need to be made coplanar. Uh, that's already been addressed, but needs to be shown in the application. Six point standard 6.13 numbers one and two, and then for, and we need to see a tree replanting plan as well for standard. Uh, 8.5. Number six. And that's all. All right. <laughs> well done, Commissioner Goodwin. Yeah. All right. Could I just add a minor amendment? Yes, please. Um, provide information on the tree that, that will be lost. Okay. Yeah. A uh, friendly mem uh, amendment made. Is it accepted, Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. All right. And I know you mentioned this, but just remind me because I did not hear it. The setbacks you addressed. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, Commissioner Barth. Uh, another friendly amendment, or if unless you did mention it, uh, front door we would need some additional information, and if glass is Preferred in the front door, we would like to see at least three quarter light. Or sorry, I guess that would be quarter light, quarter light door. And part of my motion was to provide specifications for all doors. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well done, Commissioner Goodwin. Motion made by Commissioner Goodwin, seconded by. Second. Second. <laughs> seconded by. Second. <laughs> Commissioner Hawkins. All right, any further discussion of the motion? Okay, let's vote. Commissioner Leinberger? Yes. Commissioner Wheat? Yes. Commissioner Barth? 
Yes. Commissioner Hawkins. Yes. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Wojcik. Yes. Commissioner Whitlock. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to continue passes 9 0. Thank you, Angie. All right, so it is not five yet, so we will continue on to 720 East Park F. Okay, and this is an after the fact application. Keep in mind that we treat after the fact applications as though it's before the fact. first time officially presenting to y'all um, from the beginning. So I am yielding my seat to Jenny. Jenny's handling all the after the fact. And what we usually do is we ask Doug if he is with us. Yes, I am. Doug, have you been sworn in? I have not. Okay. All right, Doug, if first. you'll re raise your right hand and respond, I do to the following question, sir. Do you affirm the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. And if you could turn on your camera, that would be great. It's on, let's see here. Maybe. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. Doug, if you will, will you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, Douglas P. Enan, 1915 Springdale Avenue. Charlotte, North Carolina, 28203. Thank you. So this project, uh, as mentioned, is an after the fact. It's the um, installation of a modular outdoor fireplace in the backyard. There is an existing patio on which it, it was placed. Um, so I will turn it over to Doug. Oh, well, um, I'm sorry, I don't know if I mentioned to please consider this as if it had not happened. Thank you. Okay. Um, originally, um, this this uh, exterior modification was uh, presented to the HDC last year, and uh, it did not include. Um, I had my architect Alan Brooks um, doing the submittal, and it he omitted the the fireplace. Um, so, anyways. Um, the fireplace was then put in, um, I guess, after the fact, and, and so uh, it was. It was. It was designed to be behind the house, within the confines of the, um, let's say, the, the footprint of the house, so that it's it doesn't protrude into the side yard. Um, that it's behind the house. Um, it's three foot by approximately three foot, foot by seven feet in diameter um, and seven feet tall, uh, which is less than the first floor ceiling. Um, it's also blocked by the, um, let's say, call it the side porch from the, um, the street. Um, and we made every, um, uh, every, let's say, every attempt to screen it if you look at the, 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 the shrubs and the bushes that are indicated in the in the in the pictures in the bottom right hand location um, there and uh, so to, not to be obtrusive to the neighbor or any or anything or anybody um, it's um, basically used um, it's called rumble stone which is a Hey, Doug, I'm having a hard time understanding. So will you speak up and clearly, please? Okay. Thank it's, you. Um, the, the materials are made of a rumble stone, which is basically a brick paver material. Uh, the home is a brick paver. Um, the, uh, let's say the, the sitting area behind the house, that's, that's stacked stone. So it's been a, it's been a hodgepodge of, and, and then there's the patio, which was existing and it's also, um, a fl flagstone. Uh, and then the so the um, site plan shows uh, the location um, in the clouded area behind the house, and 
Yep. And that's about all I can, you know, say to it. I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. Do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? Okay. No, we don't. All right, commissioners, questions of Doug? Questions of Mr. Eman? Yes, Commissioner Leinberger. Hi, Doug. Did you um, did you explore options with Alan on what was compatible with the house um, before this was constructed? I mean, did you look at other other options for materials that were more compatible? Um, well, there's a number of different materials c- that can be used. Um, there's block. There's split place block, um, there's stack stone. I mean, there's a number of different elements on um, this one. Um, and, and there's, uh, there's, there's trad- traditional brick that would have matched, so to speak, the house. Um, this, this is, a uh, basically a rumble stone. It's called a rumble stone, but it's, it's like a, a brick paver. So it's a, it's a form of a brick. I, I understand, but the, it's, but it's not brick, um, and or I guess I'll rephrase that. Um, did did you review the what the material options were like per per our standard six point one eight number one, um, which states use compatible traditional materials such as unpainted brick, stucco, stone, and wood. Um, then it goes on to say avoid split face block and any material color size scale or texture that is in stark contrast to the historic context. Um, so this this material really is not compatible or we we normally would not approve this. It would be incongruous with our standards. <laughs> so I guess my question then would be when you realized it was an after the fact and it wasn't approved. Have you explored options how to make it more compliant? Uh, not at the moment. As in adding adding brick. I mean, I know that's a that's a that's probably a question for our contractors and maybe for Alan even. Yeah, and we don't help design it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Doug, is there anything you'd like to say before we close? Um. No. Um, Christy, that's that's fine. Thank you. I just we tried to keep uh, it not obtrusive in the backyard. Um, there's a there's a tremendous amount of other elements that are used in in that backyard, as shown. Um, and uh, I would just say that that that's the congruent thing is, I guess something that can be considered or I, I'd have to probably tear it down. I don't know that I can reface what's there. Um, I just don't. That's fine. I'm, I'm good. All right. Thanks, sir. So, oh, Chris Barth has a question. Uh, just just one qu- quick comment uh, to your benefit, Doug. Um, again, for anyone listening on this call, when in doubt, please you know, come to the commission if if uh, you choose to do anything on these lots. Um, it's it's for your you know homeowners' benefit as well as the neighbors. I will say, uh, Doug again can't design it for you. Um, there may be an additive rather than destructive solution here. So please explore your options. All right. So with that, uh, Sage advice. We will close now for deliberation. Commissioners, we would not have approved this, right? Can I be the one to throw a little fly in the ointment? (laughs) Just, you know, in the interest of healthy debate, driving up and down this street, looking for it, I couldn't find it. I couldn't see it. You saw it? I saw it from the street. I could see the back of it. Yeah. And it might be because of the... You know the vegetation and the lack of or the lack of vegetation right now due to the yeah but um but i saw the back of it okay well then i'll take that off the table all right 
I am now wearing readers, so I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry to air all of my issues here. Um, so you can see it. It is something that can easily be removed. There's the other curveball. Um, and typically, I would not be the person doing this, saying this, but the the retreat that we had with Brett Sturm, I will bring that up again, talks about materials and how close they are to the people who are viewing them, right? And so you might have seen it, Commissioner Leinberger, but dare I say, you're like really working to find it, right? You weren't. What is wrong with my eyes? <laughs> I, I honestly was surprised. I just that you could see it. Like, oh, yeah. Well, there it is. Okay. I, mean, I, I was really kind of surprised, and it was it was just a drive. Yeah. I was not. Yeah. I didn't get out of my car. Yeah. I miss okay. Pier. Yeah. It didn't go up the hill. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then. Okay. Any other thoughts? Or this is pretty clear. Okay. All right. Um, Commissioner Leinberger, will you do us the honors? Well, let me let me just obviously I, we would normally deny this, and I realize we, but I I do realize the challenge of, and I have some empathy here on the the yeah you know, this is under construction, and Christy would like to speak. This has not been built per your review. Ah, uh. <laughs> like you are reviewing this as if he is asking to do this, not as if it's already been done. Right. Okay. Right. That said. Then I, I guess I need to just make a motion to deny this. Is everyone oh, in agreement? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. I make a motion to deny this application per guidelines or standard six point eight number one and eight point four number ten, which is for the lack of uh, hardscape materials that are that complement the historic structure and property. Okay. Motion made by Commissioner Leinberger, seconded by just the Commissioner Wojcik. <laughs> just the correction 6.18. 6 6.18. Yeah, there were two. There were two 6.18 number 1 and 8.4 number 10. Right. You said 6.8 number 1. Oh, I'm so sorry. So the record, let the record show that the actual standard is 6.18. Okay, 6.18. All right, so motion made by Commissioner Leinberger, seconded by Commissioner Wojcik. Any further discussion of the motion? I have just a question. Sure. Um, with the mentality that this is, isn't built yet, I believe there are things that could be done to this to bring it more in keeping with what we see in our districts. Does that, would that push it towards justification for a continuance in order for them to come back with, with those options or, or are we just flat out denying this material, no matter how it's manipulated or used? Yeah. So I think we are, uh, again, looking at this as if it had has not happened. If they want to come back with a new application, um, then that I strongly suggest that. But if this came before us, as it is, as it, as it is we would say, yeah. we'd say no. So let's not gum up the works. If they want to come back, they can come back. Okay. All right. So, um, but thank you for getting that, that out there and on the record, and hopefully they will come back. Um, okay, Commissioner Leinberger. Yes. Commissioner Wheat. Yes. Commissioner Barth. Yes. Commissioner Hawkins. Yes. Commissioner Walker. <laughs> Commissioner Wojcik. Yes. Commissioner Whitlock. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to deny passes nine zero. We hope you do come back, Doug. Thank you. All right. Yes. Just a reminder that all commissioners need to use their mics all times. <laughs> and it's, I know it's counterintuitive because we don't walk around like we're on the red carpet all the time, but please speak into the mic. It's not enough just to have it on. Speak into the mic. All right. 
Okay, so now we are on to 500 East Park. 500 East Park. Let's see. So we're looking for Jesse Irvin. Jesse, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hi, Jesse, have you been sworn in? I have not that I'm aware of. All right, Jesse, if you'll raise your right hand and respond, I do to the following question. Do you affirm the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, perfect. Thank you. Okay, this next application is in two parts. Uh, part one is for changes to an existing accessory structure. They're proposing to remove the garage doors, add two sets of paired windows, and add a new exterior entry door on the elevation facing Lyndhurst. The applications, the applicant is also requesting the expansion of the front porch roof to connect to a side roof. Um, as noted here, staff believes that that this portion of the application is incomplete um, and there's just not enough information about we only have a picture, so we don't have the drawings required. Okay. Uh, but with that, I'll turn it. Well, then yes. let me say this, okay. Christy, because we don't have enough information for the porch. We should not be hearing the porch today unless. Um, actually, what's the best way to handle this? Because if it was just about the porch, yeah. we wouldn't hear it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because we don't want the clock to start ticking right. on on this one on Jesse's application right. for the porch. We can hear everything else. So what we deal with those separately or just if it's continued. Um, then he could bring back information on the porch. I think it's, I think you would need to hear the, the rest of the case. Mm -hmm. And then based on that decision, we can then talk about how to sure. handle the porch. Is okay. that okay? Yep. That's perfect. Okay. Thanks. Um, so Jesse, now that you've been sworn in, I'm going to turn the floor over to you to explain the project in more detail. If you would state your name and your address for the court detail, if you would state your name and your address for the court reporter, please. And I am starting you on slide six and you just tell me where to go and I'll move the slides for you. Okay. My name is Jesse Irvin uh, and I live at 500 East Park Avenue, Charlotte 28203. So the, the two items we're talking about, the first, I'll talk about the, the garage first is today it is a separate structure that has already been through approval process at the time it was built, which was not by me some some time in the past. Um, but it matches this, uh, the style of the main home, which was built at turn of the century ish. Um, my intention is to turn the garage into a mother in law suite uh, for my mother in law. And the sum total of the changes that will be visible from the street are changing out what is now two garage doors and replacing those with two pairs of windows that are exact matches of the windows facing it opposite on the kitchen of the main house and 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 this window here so i have a quote for the exact same window six inch trim one by six on the side four by three um uh lattice on the top no no mullions in or no no lattice in the bottom exposed the wood on the outside um and then a uh, uh and then an entry door so that's that's it at a high level there's a bit more detail in the discussion but that's pretty much the sum of the project everything will match exactly the same so i'll fill in with the exact same siding i'll fill in with the exact same color exact same trim and style the what is now um uh, the breaks in the brick will be put in to match with the same colored brick, same colored mortar. Um, so it would be, it will look as if it was designed for this purpose from the beginning. Questions? Uh, no, you can go on and present the entire application and then we'll ask questions. Okay. Thank the you. Porch, um, the porch and I, if we have, can we go to the, to the last slides? Okay, so unfortunately I failed at uh, 
submitting an elevation drawing on time, which was pretty simple though. Really all it is is today the porch has a covering. So you can see on the the structure on the or the picture on the right. Uh, it has a covered porch, which is equal on both sides. There is a uh, subsequently added portion of the home on the left, where you'll see there was a bedroom added upstairs and downstairs, uh, and the porch was extended um, to match or get closer to that side. My intention on covering the porch was to uh, extend the exact same pitch the exact same materials and have it simply extend to match out uh, and cover it so that where today you see two brick pillars, there would be from the front of this, from the front or from the, the Park Avenue side, there would be three brick pillars or from the, you know, from the lot, bare lot side beside me, there'd be two brick pillars. I would extend the, the roof at the same pitch with the same, um, same roofing, same ceiling underneath same um uh same gutters and then it have a turn at a 90 degree to sync up with what is today the little bit of roof that sticks off of the side of the addition so that's the sum total of that project all right thank you jesse do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application Um, no callers. All right. Commissioners, questions for Mr. Irvin. Yes, Commissioner Wojcik. So are we reviewing the front porch or no? We are not. Okay. Well, so if I might ask, the, the delta between reviewing it and not reviewing it is an elevation drawing that's going to show the exact same elevation with the exact same material set. Is it? Sure. So I'll just say this, Mr. Irvin, we have processes <laughs> that are put in place so that we can keep things moving. Unfortunately, you didn't present what we need in order to evaluate it this time. But if you give us a moment, you might have another chance. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I was I was asking if it would if it would be possible. If it's not, I understand. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. So no, we are not evaluating the porch today. Okay. Um, yes, Commissioner Hawkins. I just have a quick question. Um, so the accessory uh, building that you are looking to make changes to, uh, you mentioned that it was built previously, but you didn't say when. Do you know what year that building was built? I don't. I know it went through the, hist I know it was post historic district uh, commission because uh, I was it was built by the previous owner, but I was told the story of, of it being originally built wider uh, and it it had it was not approved. So it had to go back through and it was adjusted to fit the approval process. So that's anecdotal, right? But but it should be in our in the city records of having been approved. OK, and the only other question I have is, um, do you have is there any precedent in the. Surrounding area for making the changes, similar changes to what you're proposing for an accessory building? So I don't know most from, here it is, and this is again, anecdotal evidence, but what I have seen, most of the neighborhood does not have exterior garages. Um, the ones that, there are some uh, just across the street on park, but their exterior garages uh, abut a, an alley in the back versus being visible from the street. And I actually, know people who have those garages who've converted them, but I don't know if they had to go through a process because they uh, they weren't visible from the street. So I, I I can't give a definitive answer on that. Or I can't give an answer that carries any weight. Okay. Thank you. All right. Other questions? Commissioner Leinberger. Yes, if you considered other um details or another approach to retain the carriage house feel that the existing structure has, it is clearly secondary to the house and meant to be a garage. And it really just speaks that language and converting it um, loses that, the, the way you're presenting that it be converted. Uh, I haven't, and I guess the reason I didn't is, as I look at this, this drawing here, it, it wasn't designed as a, 
it wasn't a carriage house converted to a garage. It was a garage that was likely built in the nineties. Uh, that to me looks like a garage. So I, I just approached it with keeping all of the, my intention was to keep all trim everything from the exterior and align it with the look and feel of the main house. Um, so to make sure that the windows matched shutters matched, uh, all of, all of that. Um, but not, I didn't have the intention to make it look like a converted carriage house. I didn't, I didn't approach it that way. Okay. Thank all, you. All right. Um, other questions, commissioner Barth. Just out of curiosity. Um, so if, if this is no longer a garage, just want to see if I can understand where you all would park. Uh, so if we look at the, the overhead, oh, I'll try to explain it. Um, so there is street parking, uh, the entire length of the property with the exception of the setback from the stop sign at Lindhurst and East Park. So people park on my side of the street on Lindhurst and on park in front of my house. Uh, the, the land between the existing garage and house is paved and uh, is two cards wide. So that's today where we park. Uh, we park, we park two vehicles there. There is a third parking space under, we like to see the little blue dot there at the edge of the, uh, the call out where it says adding entry door, uh, that, that piece of ground is also paved as one car wide. Uh, and potentially if I really wanted to, uh, the land in between the hedge and the main house is one car wide and could be used today. It's just a, uh, just a grassy area. Um, but I, I don't expect doing this will change the way I park, which is today we have two vehicles and we park them both in between the, the house and the garage. Okay. So you have no, no plan to change the existing paving out there. No, uh, you're going to park using the current impervious area. Correct. Not utilize the garage for, for parking. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Goodwin. Uh, yeah question um, on the garage when you are filling in <clears throat> at the garage doors um, typically in a garage you know it's got a sloped concrete floor mm -hmm. um, would you would you do something to uh, level that concrete floor and then also on the on the elevation there would you replace or or install brick to make a continuous brick um, um, foundation across that? Yeah, so uh, I'll take those in order. The, the first, the garage floor has a slope, but it is not so noticeable um, as it would affect, uh, as it would affect it as a mother-in-law suite. So I did not plan on adjusting the interior slope of the garage um, today, or as it is today. It, it does have slope for water removal purposes, but it's it's insignificant. Uh, second, yes, I would, my plan is to match the brick with the existing brick and have it run as a continuous 18 inch brick wall, and then, um, you know, match the, the rest of the exterior on top of that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Goodwin. Any other questions? Yes. Commissioner Barth. I have just one more, um. And I'll bring it up now that we're open, just in case the applicant wants to respond. But I have a question for Chris or some of the other staff. Um, obviously, this garage was added um, at some point in the recent past, and we have paving up to the structure because it is a garage. Um, now the use is changing. Typically, if we were doing this as a new ADU or something, we would not have paving up to the foundation. Correct. So how would we deal with this since it is a change in use and the form of the building is changing? So I would say we don't deal with use. So that's number one. We deal with the appearance and the pieces, the elements of the building that are changing. And so this would be really considered changing existing conditions of the building, not changing use. So like an adaptation. It, right. Like it's an adaptation because what's there is there. Right. And it was pre 2007. I looking at aerials, but I don't know, have an exact date. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, any other questions before we close? All right, Jesse, anything you want to say before we close? Yeah, just one thing is that um, uh, my goal is the, the next step beyond this is a uh, permitting and then I can finish the work and I have a, a target date I would like to do that by. So if, um, if possible, if, if the garage uh, conversion is acceptable and meets standards, um, is there a way that either that can be approved and the other thing can be done later, or I can just break off the other thing and just not do it, but have the garage approved if it meets standards? I don't have the garage held up because I failed to give an elevation on an extra project that that I'm not in a hurry to do. We uh, will take that into consideration as we talk about the part of your application that we can address. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. So now we will close for deliberation. Commissioners. Thoughts. It's not a historic structure. It's not a historic structure, so there's nothing that we're really ruining preserving. We know well. So, Christy, you said that going, you did some aerial shots or aerial views, and will you say again what you saw? If it, it, the oldest aerial I see on Charlotte Explorer is from 2007, mm -hmm. and it was there. I am glad as staff to do additional research in our files to find out when the commission may have approved this. Right. Because if it's older, remember, even if something was not original, if it's old enough, it is now part of the historic language of that property. Mm hmm. So, yeah. I, I don't know if sorry, I we are, we are closed for deliberation, which is why I always give a chance for you to say something afterwards. So. Let us do do our work, and if you have something you really want to say after that, then I promise we'll open. Okay, thank you, Mr. Irvin. Okay, so to your point, Commissioner Lineberger, I mean there is a distinctive look to this place that will be lost should it be altered, um, and if it is historic, then that's going to be a bit of an issue. I think for this body to approve. So it sounds like there is more that we need to discover in order to make the right call. Outside of um, outside of that, what are some of your other concerns about this project, or what are some of the things you think are done well, Commissioner Goodwin? Well, I'm, I'm struggling, you know, with our submittal requirements that we've been going through lately. Mm -hmm. You know, with detailed elevations, we would mm -hmm. have we would have detailed elevations showing, um, you know, all the dimensions, uh, materials, and I'm I'm really struggling with. Um, I, and I understand that the applicant plans to use windows that match that of the house, and that's that's I think that's good, but. We also need to know the header height of the windows, the spacing between the windows, um, and other details like that. And for example, the brick uh, extending across the, the bottom uh, to, to appear as a foundation. Uh, I just feel like we need um, additional, um, we need detailed elevation drawings, and we really just have rough sketches. Which is included in the checklist requirements. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Commissioner Wheat. Nothing to add. I had the same um, thought about the detailed drawings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, and of course, this is an opportunity for Mr. Irvin because now he can bring back a complete application that includes the porch. So we all win. All right. Let's do a motion. Let's create a motion. Because I think that we are, we've exhausted the conversation about it, right? Actually, I would I have the opportunity to ask a question. Okay. Well, what I will do then is reopen, because when we're closed, only the chair and staff may speak, uh, as well as the commission. So it's hard sometimes when it's a new environment and a new experience. So I just want to reiterate that because it sounds like you might be coming back. So, Mr. Irvin, I have opened up the. Uh, the the session and now you may speak again. Thank you. Uh, 
there was a comment on the historic na nature of the building and and to be clear i bought the house in 2020 the previous owners owned the home for 20 years and they built it so i don't know what the line for historic is but it was not okay. built prior to 2020 so okay the line is okay, um, i'm sorry prior to 2000 um that's, that's helpful so historic would be 50 years or older so thank you all right, you just saved Christy a little bit of work. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry to put a fly in the ointment, but the tax records are probably wrong. They say it was built in 1906. So I do need to confirm because the tax records indicate okay. the garage was 1906. Yeah. I have no doubt it is probably wrong. This does not look like a 1906. Tax records are not always right. Right. Yeah. But given that, mm -hmm. I would feel a lot better if. I just helped verify. I, yeah. I don't think that's what's holding it up, though. No. Am, am I wrong? No, okay. no you are not. Okay. That is not what's holding it up. Okay. Mr. Irvin. And I had one further question. We, we talked about uh, wanting more clarification on the brick, and I'm unclear on what further I could say than same brick at the same height, same color, same mortar. So it's uh, about uh, what we have in terms of documentation and visuals. If you go through the checklist, for submitting an application, um, the best thing that you can do is make sure we have everything included on that list. Commissioner Lineberger. Yeah, I just would like to add, you really need to refer to 2.3 and 2.4, which are the submittal guidelines um, that require all the draw. It, it's very detailed and tells you what drawings are required, um, site plan, elevation, all of that information, and we just cannot, regardless, to Christy's point, regardless of whether this structure is historic or not, we still need all of that information to make a decision. So it's not a matter of um, just bringing us the brick or telling us that the brick um, is going to match. We need dimensions showing exactly where those windows are going to be, dimensions on the elevations that show exactly where that door is going to be. So it's it's you need all that detail and you would need all that detail for a permit as well. So it's not you would need to go through that exercise whether we required it or not to, to get this construction done and to get a permit. So I hope that's helpful. That was very helpful. Thank you, Commissioner Lineberger. Commissioner Barth. Well, additionally, piggy, piggybacking off of that, we need to know things like, you know, I would assume this this garage is now going to be conditioned. We need to know where the uh, condensing units are going to go, how they're going to be screened, uh, things like that. So, All right. All right, Mr. Irvin, anything else you want to uh, ask or say before I reclose where only the commission and staff can speak? No. Nope. All right, and Commissioner Lineberger. To, to add to that, going back to the porch, even though we're not reviewing that, all of what I just said applies to the porch as well. And that even, it goes even further for the porch because we need um, sections showing exactly how that roof is going to tie into the existing roof. So you just really need to get some guidance somewhere on how that's, if you cannot produce that, you need professional advice on you know, how that's going to happen and someone needs to, sh you, you need to be able to show us exactly what your intent is. And here's a, a little tip. You staff hold up their hand through the process. They're here because they do this all the time. And I would imagine that you don't do this all the time. So use them and it will make the process go a lot smoother. And that was helpful advice that Commissioner Lineberger gave. Um, for the porch. So we'll look at this as a dress rehearsal for the next time. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. So we will reclose and where were we making a motion? Crafting a motion. Commissioner Lineberger, you want to take the lead on this one? Sure. You are very helpful to him. I just think you're the right one to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I make a motion to continue this application so the applicant can review the guidelines for submittal 2.3 and 2.4 um, and provide scaled dimension drawings that accurately show the plan, roof pitch, 
details of the and details of the design for the porch and the um well the porch and the the um renovation of the garage commissioner Ryan well go ahead so also um because the this is now repurposed then we'll need to look at those things and maybe you just said it i blinked for a moment um about uh, we'll need to look at like don't let the foundation go up to the side and other things like that i think Chris, christy mentioned that we don't look at need to look at that one in specific specifically because it's a pre-existing condition correct there's, okay. If there's an existing condition that they're not touching, we okay. can't require changes. That makes yeah. total sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Will you restate your motion, please? Um, I make a motion to continue this application for the applicant to thoroughly review 2.3 and 2.4, the guidelines for submittal, which means providing the uh, scaled and dimension drawings that accurately, accurately depict the plan, roof pitch, and details of the design, including the section for the porch. Oh, we shouldn't address the porch. Just saying that. Yeah. So yeah, we have not reviewed the porch. So that accurately depicts the plan and details of the design. Mm -hmm. and That's then perfect. I, the porch is not reviewed at this time. Yes. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Leinberger. Motion made by Commissioner Leinberger, seconded by Commissioner Walker. All right. Any further discussion of the motion? Okay. Let's vote. Commissioner Leinberger? Yes. Commissioner Wheat? Yes. Commissioner Barth? Yes. Commissioner Hawkins? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Yes. Commissioner Wojcik? Yes. Commissioner Whitlock? Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Parati, yes. Motion to continue passes 9 0. Jesse, I hope you uh, reach out to Christy and her staff. They can be very helpful to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have two quick, kind of quick cases. And, and then, then after three. that, yes. Let me just add that to okay. my email to everybody. Okay. All right. Who do, do we have Colleen with us? Hi, Colleen. Welcome. Have you been sworn in? Come on up. Okay. And I believe we'll note for the record that Commissioner Whitlock is leaving. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Whitlock. Thank you. See you on the 29th. There you go. Yeah. I just. Okay. All right. We're ready. Yes. Yeah, so this is another after the fact. I'm actually going to ask um, Colleen if she will state her name and address first for the record. Colleen Worth, 1515 Hamilton Place. So, as I said, this is after the fact, and you should re re should review this as if it has not occurred yet. It is the removal of a large canopy tree in the front yard on the right side of the front yard. And I don't do, we also review the, the plant replanting that's already existed. It will be mentioned. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, Colleen. Two large trees in the front yard. Uh, one of the trees had some safety concerns. Buddy, okay, sorry about that. Had some safety concerns with the tree. At the point of its removal, it had, I had to have my roof replaced. The house is only from 2010 when I bought it. So it was new construction when I came in from the foundation up. So I had replaced the, the roof. Um, one car was totaled. 
the new car got hit by another branch. I had tree trimming done at least twice in the 10 years before. So when they said we saw mushrooms, I took it down. I had three quotes. As the homeowner, I take full responsibility for not doing it. However, I wasn't sure who actually had to get the permit to take the tree down. So I apologize. They showed up on a Saturday. I was happy they were there. It took a while to get through it. It was all through COVID. So my intent was not to break any rules, but I did pay my fines and and uh, continue to work the process now to to re, re um, you know get my name back in good standing. So I apologize for breaking the rules. I do know that it's my responsibility to, to do that. I honestly thought the fine stop when you replant. So I replanted the tree with a, I think it was a red maple. And uh, then I got the list and the other stuff that you needed to do. So I already replanted the tree almost right where the old tree was, but I wanted to wait until the soil was ready for another tree to go in there because I did get it completely grounded down, but there's, it's still a lot for those big trees in that neighborhood. And, and a lot of them were coming down. So there was a big hole in the center. There's a lot of pictures of the wood damage, you know, before that I tried to submit. So um, not my intent to break the rules, but I did break the rules. So <laughs> here you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Colleen. Um, do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? No callers. All right. Commissioners, questions for Mr. Worth. Commissioner Wojcik. Hi. I feel your pain. I've been in a similar or was in a similar situation. Um, what kind of mushrooms or fungi or what were you seeing growing around the trees? Dark, um, a black, like moldy growth, like soft, where they were kind of gushy when you would step on them. Because I always walk on that walkway and it was kind of gush getting gushier as we as I stepped on it. Um, the other tree didn't have it, but the tree I took down did. And it's actually doing a little, the other tree's doing a little bit better because it's getting more light. The company that took down the tree, did they give you any information about what was going on with the tree or was it just the evidence that you saw? Yeah, no, um, they came on a Saturday because I think they rented a crane. Um, I did get three bids, they, none of it was cheap, but they were the lowest, so I think I got myself in a little bit of trouble with that too, because he just he did take it all the way down. Um, they did take away all the wood. Um, we do I do have I do have some pictures of some of the the rot. I think, or maybe I didn't. Of of like you know as they were taking it down, like the rot of some of the stuff. So maybe I didn't include that. I apologize, but no, they didn't give me like a disease or any of that okay. from it. They just you know took it down and. And I, I took pictures of, you know, the, the bad parts of it and the hole in the center. So when you called them, your intention was to have it taken down, not to get their advice on what was happening. Yeah, okay. I mean, it, it was. I didn't use the same people that had treated it before because they weren't available with the crane. Mm -hmm. So I had to get kind of a different company out there. When you say treated it, you mean um, trimming that, it? Back. That trimmed it before. So uh, I don't know. They were pretty busy. It was during COVID yeah. too, so. Thank you. All right, any other questions? So the limbs from the tree uh, damaged your roof? Yeah, I replaced the roof two years before the tree. Before but, you no, took so out? Four years ago, I replaced the roof. So when it took out a part of your roof, which is a pretty big deal, did you think about getting having tests done to take to find out the condition of the tree? Yeah, I didn't really think about it. To yeah, be completely honest. It well, was a, I get that. I will now, but I didn't really think yeah. about it. Well, your roof happened. is damaged. You had yeah. bigger fish to fry. Yeah, and you know they would only replace the the front part of the roof. So I just got the whole roof replaced because I didn't like the idea of having partial roof replaced. So you know that wasn't cheap either. So mm -hmm. I waited. I knew this was going to be costly, so I was saving up money for that. But I didn't know it was needed and I didn't know that this is again paying my fines, but I didn't know sure. that I had to. Um, and I will in the future 
you know, right. and you'll tell all of your neighbors. I will. I will. I will tell all my neighbors. <laughs> you'll spread. You'll spread their word. I don't think that we need to, you know, belabor this, right? So, are you all okay if we close and just deliberate? Anything you'd like to say, Miss Worth? No, just I apologize. Okay. For breaking thank, the thank you so much. Yes, Commissioner Goodwin. Do you know this, the the um, the chest height di uh, diameter of this tree? Can you guess what it was? Was it? I think it was more than it's bigger than the one that is in the picture. I could not possibly put. Maybe I, I could put both hands around it. It was than, a good size. More than thirty inches. Then. Yes, uh, more than thirty thank inches. Thank you. All right. Uh, yes, Sorry. Commissioner Barth. Sorry, I'll I'll be brief, and I will I will say real quick. I do know, walk by this house all the time. It's a beautiful house, and the two trees are wonderful. How they book frame it. It's sad to see it go. The other tree, ha have you had the health of that tree assessed at all? No, it seemed to be, you know, it hasn't fallen on anything yet. So I can do it, but I haven't had any problem. I did have it trimmed when they came out and did the other one. I did trim it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. I, would, I would suggest having whoever took down your other tree or, or another certified oh, purpose, have them look at that, please. <laughs> yeah. Because um, the, the trees in that front yard are magnificent um, and really make up that street streetscape. So thank you. Okay, Commissioner Walker. <laughs> I really don't have anything to say. I think that there obviously was a real problem with this tree. If this was a person that really wanted to cut down trees, they would have had both of them taken down, not just mm -hmm. one. Okay, all right. Let's close for deliberation. And along those lines, I mean, we would have asked for a lot more evidence that the tree was not healthy before taking it out. Um, but the recourse for a tree that's removed is a replanting of another tree. In the past, I'll just throw it out there when someone's unknowingly or knowingly violated um, the standards, we've requested that they put in more than one tree to make up for the removal of that one. So just throwing it out there, what do you all think we should be doing? She's already, Ms. Worth has already replanted a tree, right? So that shows a lot of good faith right there. Do you think another tree needs to be uh, replanted or, okay, Commissioner Barth is saying no. The red maple is a canopy tree, so it would have fit the bill for any kind of replanting. So, what do we say? I don't think we have to spend a lot more time on this. Let's just make a motion. Commissioner Barth, thank you. Commissioner Wojcik. Oh, oh, Commissioner Wojcik, I wasn't even looking over there. I know. <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. um, I would like to move to approve the uh, application to have the tree removed with the request that an additional tree would be planted in its place that would be a canopy tree and what am I missing? While you look for the standard on that one, I have a question for you, Christy. If we had denied this, um, which I would be inclined to do because we would ask for a lot more information, then and we said we deny it, but then you have to go back and replant. Is she um, is she in compliance? So, um, this one's a tough one. Yeah, obviously. Um, should you deny it? Deny the removal for lack of evidence mm -hmm. because technically this hasn't taken place yet, right? Right. Because it's an after that's a request. Right. Um, then you could, what we've done in the past is, I think we did it, did we do it in November or December? You denied it and then you required replanting within your- Hold on, ladies. Okay, yeah. Christy? You denied a tree removal and then you required replanting. I think you did that in November. We, did, we have done that, but are there more penalties that are put on the applicant as a result of us denying it, or is she's is she just square? Is it a wash once she replants the tree? Pretty much. Okay, yeah. then. Do you want me to deny it? I'll just say that we would have asked for a lot of evidence that we don't have. Yeah. 
from the arborist. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the damage. People have damage all the time. And what we're trying to do, what I'd like to do as a commissioner is level the playing field okay. so that we're applying the standards as equally as we can. I live in a forested acreage and I never had any damage to my house or my vehicle. So, yeah. but I get it. My lot is larger and more spread out and mm -hmm. you don't have the con the condensing. I, I, I have a, I had anymore. a black walnut in my backyard and Goliath took out a few things, but we did not take him down until we got word from Hartwood okay. that it, it was just beyond any kind of repair. So limbs fall is one of the negatives to living in such a wonderful, wonderful tree canopied community. But what I think we should be doing is applying the standards as equally as we can. And quite frankly, it's not that big of a, a, a challenge considering the trees already been replanted. Right. But we are sending a message that this is not the way we want it done. Exactly. Okay. So I'll deny it and then request the replanting. If you think that's best. Well, it sounds <laughs> like that, that it would be best for the commission <laughs> overhaul. Uh, All right. Um, okay. So we are going to deny the application for removal of the tree. Because for lack of documentation, for lack of documentation by a certified on, arborist, yeah, by a certified ar arborist based on um, guidelines eight point five five number two, mm -hmm. and then we are going to request We're that going to require require reapplication reapplication with replanting of a new hardwood maturing canopy tree okay. with the a new application requiring the planting of a new hardwood mature maturing canopy tree would you my question i guess kim's question is are you requiring the planting of one tree or two trees based on the spacing i would say one i see two very large trees in that picture Okay, that's good. And I don't think there's, I mean, you can overplant and it's not good for the other plants either. Okay. I mean, it could go someplace else, but well, that, but I personally, I don't think that that needs to be done. Commissioner Bartha said that one tree is sufficient. Commissioner Goodwin yeah. shaking his head. So, yeah. And by the way, that uh, standard for you, Commissioner Wojcik is 8.5 number six. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that, um, for replanting. Thank you. For replanting, that would be based on guideline 8.5, number six. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. So, motion made by Commissioner Wojcik. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Barth. Any further discussion of the motion? My only question is um, the location, the applicant is the applicant to work with staff on the location, or is the location supposed to be the front yard? would say the replacement as the current tree where where the old tree was located. There you go. In the front yard. Okay. Front yard. To work with staff. And then um oh the other one just slipped on my head. So the applicant should work with staff on location. The type of tree? Yeah, you can specify the type of tree, which would be a red Red maple. Red maple. <laughs> and she, if you think that's best. She could <laughs> make sure that she replants a red maple. In the front yard. In the front yard. Right. <laughs> All right. Are you still good with that, Commissioner Barth? Yes. All right. Any further discussion? Okay. Commissioner Leinberger? Yes. Commissioner Wheat? Yes. Commissioner Barth? Yes. Commissioner Hawkins? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Commissioner Wojcik? Yes. Commissioner Whitlock. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Um, he's always with us. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to deny passes 8-0. I hope that tree gets replanted really soon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll have, work with staff. <laughs> hey, Colleen, I wanted to just make a suggestion. I had I hadn't honed in on this, um, really zoomed in on this one photograph where we see the tree from the other um, angle, and it is just covered with ivy. I don't know if it's still like that, but the one that's standing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your car. Oh, okay. Well, I was just going <laughs> to say I have a ton of trees and and. They they were covered and our arborist was just like you just have to keep that. Yeah, like when we when we bought our our property. It used to be yeah. worse. I think I won't be happy to remove it. Yeah, I think it removed twice, but it, the neighbors have a lot of ivy in their yard. It just keeps it apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a suggestion. <laughs> Thank you. Let's keep that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. One more. It's yours. It's yours. Yep. So go to the folder. And then it's number 11. Right click. There you go. And you might want to close the comments. Nope. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Okay. Okay, our next case is another after the fact, and um, this is Myron Greer. Are you with us, Myron? Have you been sworn in? I have not been sworn in. Kim? All right, Myron, if you'll raise your right hand and respond, I do to the following question. I, we can't see you, Myron. I'll wait for you to show yourself. There we go. We can see you now. Good? Thank, you. Thank you, sir. All right, raise your right hand and respond. I do to the following question. Do you affirm the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. Okay, so this is 2101 Dilworth Road West. And um, they had applied earlier and had been approved for some landscape and hardscape work done. Um, there were some things that were done that hadn't been approved. And so we're going to take a look at some, some things. The proposal, it's probably a little easier to just go ahead and go by street. Um, the side street is ideal way on the left side of the house. Um, the original concrete steps were replaced with brick, also a cheek wall and the installation of a, that should be a two to three brick high. Um, edging that abuts the street, the sidewalk, I apologize. And then on the front of the property, Dilworth Road, they added um, a cheek brick cheek walls that tied into the steps and, and, and new brick retaining walls. And then both brick, both retaining walls actually abut the sidewalk. So, um, Myron, if you will state your full name and address. Sure. My, Myron Scott Greer. Um, office address is 1307 West Moorhead Street, Suite 103, Charlotte 28208. And I will say, um, if everyone will continue to please remember to use your mics, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay, is that better? Yes, thank you. Great, you bet. Okay, Myron, the floor is yours. Sure. So for the um, I'll, Start in the front. Uh, what originally happened with this, uh, commissioners, is out of haste, I received the email stating that a portion of the of the project was approved, the portion that we were applying for, um, and I did not dug, dive deeper into the email, looking at three three pages in, stating that the retaining wall on the left hand side, which is ideal way, that retaining wall was not approved. I looked at the first stamp on the first page and we and we went. Um, originally on the front of the home, what I proposed is we replace the brick steps with brick steps, like brick steps. We replace the front sidewalk with with concrete sidewalk, which is what it originally was. And in the process of what we are we're what we we're originally approved for doing was putting in a low knee wall. Well, what happened was we do have some elevation in the front of this property to contend with, 
And during this, this construction phase, we had three summer storms. And every time we got the landscape beds put together, the storm literally washed out both sides of the landscape into the city sidewalk. And we cleaned that up three different times. So we, I spoke with the clients and we made the decision to raise that five courses of brick just to hold the, the, the slope um, in. Um, the original steps that are the steps that are there, the brick steps, those were approved and the wing walls were approved. If you'll not, notice on both sides, just those, the lower walls were only approved in being three courses high. And we did increase that there. So we were just, what I'm doing is proposing that we put in a retaining knee wall there to hold the landscape in on the front bank. On okay. ideal. Myron, we're, maybe you could turn up your mic. We're having a, a difficult time hearing you. Huh. Okay. Um, I'm on my iPad and I, I am as loud as I could go. I'll okay. just try to speak. Maybe you could just get closer to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do I, do I need to repeat that? Uh, just the last statement, please. Sure. Yes. So what, what what I'm proposing is that we put in a low retaining wall to hold the front bank in place on either side of the uh, brick steps and the brick wing walls. And moving to ideal way uh, on the side of the property. Um, what we did is we actually matched the brick that is existing on the home within the courtyard and we replaced the broken steps uh, with brick steps. And once we started the demolition or when I decided when I started the design phase of this project, the bank that you see that now has the new plant material. Once we uncovered that whole bank that was covered in ivy, we, we found underneath there that was a crumbled um a retaining wall that was about eight eight inches tall so it was made of old concrete and actually old stacked stone so in the design process what i did is i put in a low retaining wall to do exactly what the picture is showing it to do which is just to hold the grade back and then we planted above that and i basically just chose the brick that was existing on the interior courtyard and matched the um matched that retaining wall All right, anything else? I think that's it. Okay. All right, thank you. Christy, do we have anyone on the line? Or Jenny, sorry, do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? No. Okay. Uh, hearing no. Commissioners, questions of Myron? Yes, Commissioner Wheat. Um, I have a clarifying question on the stairs that are that we're looking at that are facing ideal way those were approved to be replaced with like materials or to be so concrete or was it approved with to be replaced with the brick neither oh neither so that okay <laughs> so i do have a few okay <laughs> got it okay that answers that and then other clarifying question um i understand about the string wall it was approved to be just one brick highs on the ideal way side um but back to the um, the front, like the house, sorry, yes. So I understand the stairs were approved, but we're, t and the retaining wall that's now the size that it is, there was approval for any of that part, part of that, and it just ended up taller or? Yes, my understanding was that the, the retaining walls on either side of the steps commissioner were approved, but they were approved at three courses high. And what happened on site was we were in the middle of summer construction and we washed out the landscape beds, literally the, the, the beds washed out into the sidewalk three different times. And I had a discussion with the clients and we decided to just add five courses of brick. I took it as as low as I could just to hold the the grade back in, and I'm well within heights of abutting properties of their retaining walls. Thank you. That was that was my question. Thank you. 
Okay, Commissioner Lineberger. Myron, I just have a question of on really the, the sequence of events, really. Um, so initially the first application, the ideal way um, retaining wall along ideal way was denied or or was just not approved and was X'd out on that plan. And then you all, at what point, I guess, did you come back and I'm assuming that's what the documents tell me anyway, that you came back for an amendment to amend that plan and and submit the brick string course, the one brick tall all along there. And then that it was amended to include that. Is that accurate? No, the process was we just applied once for uh, for the approval process, and when we received, I had I had a conversation with a commissioner because I'd originally planned on the retaining wall along Ideal Way to actually be stucco to to repeat the same material, the like material that is on the higher retaining wall at the top of that bank. Actually, it's not a retaining wall, but a an accent wall. It's a privacy wall for the courtyard. So I had designed that. Um, with it being a low stucco retaining wall to hold grade. And I was told if you know, that would have to go to full commission. And so I changed it to brick thinking that that would be approved and we were approved. The problem was my haste in receiving our approval email. I literally opened the email, saw the first page of the documents, which was my stamped design and it said approved. If I, if I had scrolled like 2 or 3 times into the email, there was a, there was a 2nd page that said what was not approved was that stringer course along ideal way. So that's how that played out. Okay. But we just ran, we just, we went with 1 approval process. We received the approval. What I thought was approval for everything that we'd asked for, and we started construction. Okay. Uh, question, Myron. Did you widen the? Did you have another question, Commissioner Lineberger? Okay. Well, uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Let me continue on that same. So. So. So at this point, you you're moving forward, assuming the brick string course, the one brick string course is is what you're putting in. But then you got into construction, or you you started the demolition of that and realized that you had that re existing retaining wall underneath the vegetation. Correct? No, we re no we realized that, ma'am, during my design process. That's why I put. That's why I went back in with a design retaining wall. What we did is when we were clearing. The, the the project during demolition, we found more of the wall in place. So I was just just basically explaining the reason I put the retaining wall in is because there was an original retaining wall there, and, and but it was a combination of old uh, uh, stacked stone, if you will, and then concrete pieces all just grouped together, and it was all hidden by a a bank of ivy. So if you if what was approved is this image of this brick string course and that is what that was what gained approval um i guess my question is why didn't you come back to the staff and explain that situation that you had that you wanted to make it taller right uh you know what and and i i should have done that and i don't have an answer for you aside from we just kept building to try to get the the, the project buttoned up um for the clients and i should have come back and did not do so okay thank you all right uh is the sidewalk uh, sorry the walkway did you all mm -hmm. widen that at all or is it um, the same dimensions as before it's exactly the same dimensions everything in the front was built exactly what we it was like for like so the okay. concrete sidewalk is a five foot side uh five foot wide sidewalk the brick steps were brick steps. I don't know if you, I don't know if any of the commissioners remember this, but this was the property that was hit by the two trees during the summer storm two years prior to this, um, and the the almost the whole top floor of this home was was 
hit by the trees. So part of my project was just reclaiming the whole front and side property because of the fallen trees. And I think they were both city trees, if I'm not mistaken, all on Dillworth Road West. Okay. Um, so this is a tough one, Myron, right? Because I'm looking at our standards 8.5. Numbers two, numbers three, numbers nine, number 10, and they're all talking about res, uh, repairing instead of replacing. And whenever possible, if you have to replace doing uh, comparable materials, um, why should we be making an exception for this lot? Are you asking me that, Commissioner? I am asking you that. Well, the, the materials are like, I mean, the, the nothing is different. The entire front is, is like materials. Everything that we took out, the front steps were brick originally, and we replaced them with brick. And we've sent that that was all pictures sent in the application process. So we, we replaced materials with like materials. Uh, along ideal way, you just testify that you changed the materials. Did you not help me on the left on the left side? Yes, I was saying okay. in the front, we chose okay. that going to the left side. There was a broken set of concrete steps there mm -hmm. and we went, we, the clients wanted to go with brick and that's what we chose to do. Okay, and uh, just need to correct myself. It's not 8.5 It's 8.6 number 3. Two, three, nine, and ten. Um, there is also one, and this goes for Ideal Way. It's number nine of eight point six. Uh, fencing and walls must avoid any style that presents a long, unbroken expanse. Um, and then it goes on. That's exactly what you're presenting there on Ideal Way. Um, we'll talk about this in deliberation, but I'm giving you a chance to address it now. Uh, the, the length of the wall of the retaining wall. Uh, yes, along ideal way. It's a long, expansive, unbroken wall. Again, all the walls that... must avoid any style that presents a long unbroken expanse. Um, yeah, what, it... I, what I originally thought was approved was the stringer course there. And again, we ran into problems holding the grade back. So. The, the stringer course, we added a course of brick to the stringer course. I tried to keep it as, as level as I could. And uh, with, with, with regards to the city sidewalk, we had a slope, a significant slope um, with the city sidewalk, starting back at the driveway, coming to the steps. I think I had about an eight to 10 inch drop. Um, so I just tried to keep that as, as flat as I could and run that stringer course out. So I didn't think that I needed to put columns or, or breaks inside of that stringer course, even though it gained a course uh, every so often just to keep the, keep it level. I, I, if I can interject, I think that particular guideline would be in more keeping with a taller uh, privacy wall rather than retaining. Um, That's what I would assume. That's fair. Okay. Any other questions before we close for deliberation? Myron, anything you want to add before we close? No, again, commissioners, I thank you for your time. Uh, again, the, um, the, the oversight was clearly on my, on my site, on my side. I literally pulled up the email. I saw the approval stamp that we were approved and, and, and we started working and I did not scroll through when I was, when I was given, um, the uh, uh, the email when it was sent back to me saying that we we were in violation. I could not believe it. That's why I responded the way that I did. I'm like, wait a minute, but I've got, you know, I, I have approval for this. So I apologize. I I was completely aghast, and I have worked in Dillard for 20 years. I think you know my work. I've been in good standing. I respect the historic commission uh, greatly. I, there is a need for it. It was clearly a mistake on my end. Working in We're all moving so quickly these days, right? Yes. So yes. That happens sometimes. So we just need to rectify it. All right. So we will close for deliberation. Commissioners, how do we rectify this?
I'll start with you, Commissioner Wheat. Well, I, I think it's a tough one. I mean, if we look at ideal way and the concrete stairs, they clearly weren't replaced with concrete. But what I find more difficult is the um, front where the sidewalk and steps those were, or not sidewalk, but walkway and steps were replaced with the like materials, but it's the, I'm gonna say retaining wall for, I'm sure there's a landscaping architect feature that I'm not saying correctly, but yeah, right there where Jenny's pointing. Um, those weren't approved, correct? Right. That's that's the problem I'm having because it has a, yeah. That's yeah, that's a that's a great point, Commissioner Wheat. And I would, you know, remind our commissioners that we're looking at it as if it was never done, right? So would this be something that we would approve? Yes, Commissioner Goodland. I just wanted to ask a question, um, clarification. I thought that Myron said that the retaining wall was approved up to three courses and yeah. added five more. So mm -hmm. it was approved, just not as tall. Right. That's what the approval was. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was because of erosion issues. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Goodwin. Commissioner Hawkins. Understanding the chain of events and all that's happened, I think the thing that is um, resonating with me is the fact that the materials that were chosen weren't, we're not talking about somebody choosing a material that we, that goes against our our guidelines and I think the work is thoughtful um, and it's addressing a, a real issue uh, for uh, the the neighbors. So I think that's one bright side is we're talking about brick and it, it's, it's something that was breaking a lot concrete. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commissioner Barth. Can I add something? I, I Maybe I'm in the minority here, but um, you know, I think extending the planters on the, on the Dilworth roadside. I mean, I sympathize with the applicant here because on these these slopes coming into the sidewalks and, and these walls, you know, it's it's a constant maintenance issue. It looks bad. <laughs> um, you know, it, while I you know struggle with the after the fact situation here. It's it's a situation that I would approve if this was being presented. Similarly, along the side, um, as Commissioner Hawkins points out, it's a material we do approve. I think it is unifying the streetscape um, with what is going on on Dilworth Dilworth Road. Um, the fact of the matter is the retaining wall along Ideal Way and the stairs were were crumbling as evidence in the pictures, um, and the applicant came back with a historically appropriate material. Um, I would state for the record that we'd rather see this proactively rather than uh, after the fact. So, mm -hmm. um, just context, you know, driving through the neighborhood, there's only, and it's the neighboring house that has a retaining wall. Um, and it's the length of the front yard, right? So, it's the length of the front space, whereas this is just um, a, a small section of it. And these are the only two retaining walls for some ways up and down that streetscape. There are other uh, com like uh, comparable lots where there's a slope and ivy is used to stop the erosion. Um, but when you're driving down that street, it does stick out, you guys, it's, uh, you know, Yes, these are all historically um, approved materials. But we're also thinking about context, right? And one of the reasons we do these site visits is so we can see real time what the impact of one house has on the street. And it sticks out. Commissioner Leinberger. Could I have staff clarify if if he had come back and explained the situation with these wing walls, um, what was happening? What would would there be an additional limit that you would have given him? A, an additional, you know, a, a, an additional height. This is your max height, or 
or is it just that it had to match what was there? Is that the bottom line? Do you want to ask Candace? Yes, I think so. She's our maintenance. Candace is on the line. Candace wrote the COA. Do you want to ask her? Um, Candace? Hi, everyone. Hi, um, Candace. Your cheese is delicious. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yes, so this these wing walls actually show up in the plan. However, I actually missed them. So they weren't actually approved even though they're in the plan because the writing i highlighted everything that i was approving and the writing for the wing walls is actually over here near the tree so i completely missed this and that was my fault but had i approved that we would have um like we typically do with a staff review the um the retaining wall would be set back at least 12 to 18, 18 inches from the sidewalk with a little bit of a planting strip. And then we can only approve true retaining walls. And at that point, if it had stepped back probably towards the second step, um, it would have it would have retained more of the dirt. So it would have been a taller retaining wall at that point just because of where it's landing um, in the grade. And so, but there would have been plantings in front of it again 18 to 12 inches back so i missed that on the on the original approval and um that's my fault okay um C commissioner leinberger i think the answer is the same we require mm -hmm. the setback like we do for retaining walls yeah regardless so let me add to that we looked at one uh not long ago in the context made us say that that planting strip didn't need to be there. It was in Dilworth because up and down that street were retaining walls that abutted the city sidewalk. So we made an exception because we were like, this is in keeping with the context. Um, and so as one commissioner in keeping with the context that's right next door, that also abuts the city walk. So. I don't have a problem that it's right there because that was the context next door, but it is. Well, what have you uh, architect types builders speak to um, this retaining wall? What like what is this called that they're presenting? Is that a is that a retaining wall? A a, uh, yeah, it's like a planter, right? Is is it even a retaining wall? Yes, it's functioning. It's functioning as one. Yeah, so I'm used to retaining walls going the length of the front yard. I mean, if you're going to go, then like finish it out, right? So what do you all say to that? Well, I, have a, I have a question, not an answer. Mm -hmm. and is that does that mean that the third house down could could as well build a retaining wall up to the sidewalk? Because, no. because I used to actually live in the house next door and we never had a retaining wall. It just mm -hmm. sloped down to the sidewalk. I think to put the planting strip there when all the others is, it, it's not, it just, it upsets the rhythm, I think. And that's why we fell on the side of approving one in Dilworth, I can't recall the street. I'm sure Chrissy remembers off the top of her head. Um, but it like all along that street were retaining walls that went up to the sidewalk. So even though we have this um, this standard, we relied on the Secretary of Interior Standards 2.5 that talks about context. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's the same as like painting brick or, you know, setting that kind of bad standard and people have agreed that, okay, if the city needed to do work, we understand that they're going to take part of our retaining wall. Right? So, yeah, commissioner Barth. The planters in the front were approved, just not for the height mm -hmm. that they were built in. Mm -hmm. The, what was it called? The brick rope? course or whatever along ideal way was approved mm -hmm. at the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. The difference is it's just taking it a step further, which in my opinion isn't something that I would disapprove 
today, give, again, given the, some of the things that you're saying, context, materials. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Commissioner Goodwin and then Commissioner Wojcik and then Commissioner Leinberger. Yeah, if I could add a little bit to this too. I mean, the, the front retaining wall or planting retaining wall, I mean, what was it was approved um, um, and I realize that there are issues with that, but it was approved and there is documentation to that effect. And I can also see water you know, because it appears that the house is uphill. I can see water sheeting down over that sidewalk and down the sides and cascading around that area and causing a washout as Mr. Greer um, explained. So with the essential form of of that wall that it was approved, the central form being built to that approval and just raising it some, um, I, I think that it, uh, I, I would definitely, I would definitely approve that if it was, if this application was, was brought to us. And then on the, the ideal way side, um, I, I'm also in agreement that that wall is, is so low um, and it's very, very tastefully done, very well executed. Yeah. And then I guess the other issue might be some people might have an issue with the concrete being um, removed and then using brick, but it's a, it certainly is a, a consistent material in the context of the neighborhood. And we have allowed um, concrete to be replaced with other materials in Dilworth, for example, bluestone um, it, over or, or in lieu of, of concrete because it's the proper his, historical context. And then one of the things that Brett Sturm mentioned to us last week about conditions, about limiting conditions, and one of those is poor building materials, you know, um, and um, lack of availability of historic materials. That was another one, but there were several, several examples, and you saw the condition of the concrete steps, and in my mind, concrete is, 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 um, is, is it's pennies, it's pennies a pound, and it's, it's not the best material, and in this context of Dilworth, I just think that this is very appropriate to have replaced the concrete with brick. And that I sounds prove that too. That sounds like a wonderful motion. <laughs> yeah, because you've stated why we've made an exception. Should you choose to make an exception, and um, I think it was well stated. So let's just see if that flies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where we work as a team it, while we wait on that commissioner Lineberger has something i just wanted to to jump in on this i'm struggling with the ideal way um side just because of the existing condition that existed there um why that was that was and going back to um 8.4 number one the historic site features are considered integral parts of historic properties and cannot be removed without approval. So I'm struggling with the, the removal of the original structure that was there. Um, even with even with that that approval of the the brick string course, I don't know what the solution is, but I think that it still is not within our guidelines. I, under, I hear you, Commissioner Goodwin. Removal of what structure? Are you referring to the there concrete a, steps? He described a no. He described well. There was that. There's that part of the issue too. Is the removal of the steps with that 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 wasn't part of the approval at all? But he described an an existing retaining wall that they that they um, unearthed. Once they pulled the vegetation out, that they saw a little that in more detail. Yes, it was my understanding that that wasn't even visible; that it was covered over, and that it was the remains of an old, of a previous wall, perhaps. But it was uncovered and not showing. Is that? He, that's what he said. He said it was. Con they started digging, and then they found broken up concrete and pavers. But, like, restate your, does that change the way you're looking at it, Commissioner well, I, Lineberger? You know, 
I think it goes back to just the lack of lack of approval. Commissioner Barth, you were about to say something. Well, Commissioner Goodwin stated stated my thoughts uh, to expand upon that. I would say that I believe the applicant mentioned, and you can kind of tell from the photo evidence that what was there. Granted, we didn't see it in the initial application. Upon their analysis on on site when they got into constructing this <coughs> bank, uh, that wall did appear to be crumbling and failing, as well as the steps that were connected to it. So I think from their perspective, you know, they're replacing with, you know, what's proposed here is brick. Maybe I'm putting words in the applicant's mouth, but. <laughs> I'm probably a little bit concerned about precedent and. and Agreed, yeah. In this situation. Um. Um, yeah, there's a lot, there's just a responsibility that comes with with these applications and approvals. And that's my my concern. I, I you know, we're not here to to be subjective and you know, give approval because it looks wonderful and it looks nice, because it does. Yeah. I mean, I don't disagree with that, but um you know what what the optics are i guess is I, my concern in the perception well can i ask you then um i mean they've presented photo evidence here we can see the the brick steps have issues they're crumbling i would venture to say they're not safe from my perspective um and need to be repaired you can't repair concrete so they have to come back with something it's difficult to to mimic this concrete that was used from who knows when early 1900s um, and similar for the wall. If we were looking at this as a new application that has not been done already from my seat, I would say brick is an appropriate material given the context unifying with its use on Tillworth Road and clearly what was there before um, was failing. And I think as, as long as we state that it's not okay to do without asking for permission, in my mind, is a new is is if this was a new application not being done already, I would I would approve this. But I don't know if that changes your mind. <laughs> we have done that. We did that just recently. Um, oh gosh, where was it? What neighborhood? Um, we allowed for brick to be used in the concrete. And so I think that it's great Commissioner Leinberger brings this up because we, of course, want to be as uh, fair as possible. And one of the things that we've talked about is context. We talk about that a lot, right? And so every lot is different. And so looking at this as if it had never happened based on what we've approved in the past, I believe that this would have gained approval as well. Do you all remember it was, we looked at it in three parts. Was it Wilmore? There were special exceptions made mm -hmm. because it wasn't attached to the house. Mm -hmm. There was some part was denied, part was approved. Mm -hmm. Um, so the walkway I remember was approved. I think it the retaining it was a retaining wall that was also approved. No, Chris, Chris is shaking your hand. No, uh, no, that was not. We can we can I can pull the information. Okay, I would, I would hesitate. Okay, conjecture. Well, I do. You're right. Thank you. I do agree with Commissioner Leinberger. Um, when you do something after the fact we should be making some kind of statement about that to deter people from doing it again, whether it was a mistake or not. Commissioner Walker. I, I think I would be, I would be more amenable to this staircase situation on ideal way. Had the stair replacement been of a similar size, at least to that would that it was replacing that concrete staircase there, as you can see, sits fairly inside within the posts on either side. And then the 
the, cur the curved, fancier replacement staircase goes out much wider. I mean, the, the impact to me, because the, the brick seems to start to take over the, the beautiful stucco. The, the, that's stucco, I think, is the treatment on that house. But the brick does seem to kind of take over in some ways. It's everywhere you look all around the structure. That's, that's giving me some difficulty understanding what was going on. But I think that the difference in the size of that staircase that was originally concrete, almost doubling in size to the brick. That's a great point, Joe. Yeah, Commissioner Goodwin. With regard to uh, the brick uh, being adjacent to the stucco, I mean, if you look beyond, you know, if you look beyond the, the concrete steps, there's um, um, quite a few more steps that are also they're adjacent to, you know, not sure if that's painted brick or stucco, but anyway, it's a, it's a white material. I, I, I think that that I don't see a conflict there or a problem. I think it's I think it's tastefully done, and this also this picture too that we're looking at of the steps here, the one on the right, um, that is um, the way that that is photographed. It probably looks a lot wider than it actually is. Um, it it is um, purposefully terminates into the posts. Of the of the of the stucco uh, columns, and um, it is it is wider, but it's not twice as wide. It, it it is wider, but I think that that's still a purposeful way of um, blending those those cheek walls into the stucco wall. All right, so we talked about this too at nauseum, right? So let's try and float a motion and see what happens. <laughs> okay, so. Commissioner Goodwin, if you'll continue, please, sir. I'll, I'll give this a shot. Um, uh, so I make a motion to approve this application because it is not in Congress with the district and meets the standards for uh, Chapter 8, uh, specifically 8.6. Um, number three. Yes. What about the stairs? That seems 8.6 number three talks about retaining walls. So we'll need a standard for the stairs. I definitely think uh, Secretary of Interior Standards 2.5 should be in there. It doesn't deal just with the stairs, but an overall <clears throat> look at this motion. What about 8.2, number two, that's, uh, that's referring to walk, that's referring to walks and walkways. Should follow the historic design patterns of the surrounding environment. I think that's a good one to use, but Chrissy, is that enough to cover steps? <clears throat> I mean, I think to accept is between that and Secretary of Interior Standards 2.5, we should be covered. Yeah. Could say it again, Commissioner Hawkins. 6.3 for context, you can use that. Um, steps are 8.4 number one that Krista pointed out, so <laughs> that's why I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is 8.4 number one. Will you read it? Which is 
historic site features are considered integral parts of historic properties and cannot be removed without approval. That's why I was. They were approved. Oh, the side one. Once again, are you referring to the concrete steps? Are you recurring, or are you referring to the um, remains of a wall that was there? Well, I was, I was, when I brought that up, I was referring to both. But we're saying we are giving approval. That's right. So you need a guideline to support your approval. I, I, we set context. Okay. I think context the 6 point 1 more time commissioner Hawkins 6.3 6.3. And 2.5. There have been times where we've had conflicts with our standards and. Um, it's primarily been due to context and due to looking at a particular lot. Um, as it relates to its surroundings. And in fact, uh, Commissioner Goodwin, in your motion, if you will restate just as eloquently as you did the first time, um, why you think this exception should be made. I'll just repeat the motion. I make a motion to approve this application because it is not in Congress with the district and meets the standards for site guidelines, 8.2 number two, 8.6 number three, Secretary of Interior Standards 2.5, context 6.3, and I believe that this is a limiting condition and that all the materials chosen are consistent with the context um, of this of this work okay yes yes christy what is that 8.4 number 10 number 10 to support the steps what how does that read use hardscape materials that complement the historic structure and property yep okay. is that a friendly or I can't. yes you it cannot i was about to catch myself <clears throat> um so what about 8.4 number 10. <laughs> 8.4 number 10 is included <laughs> okay all right and just a minor correction 6.3 is context, but 6.2 is the context preamble, and that's really um, probably what we should be quoting. Okay. All right. So, motion made by Commissioner Goodwin, seconded by. Second. Commissioner Barth, any further discussion of the motion? Hey, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be. No, 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 no. This is why we're here. I get that we are applying this to the ideal way mm -hmm. situation, but are we saying that even though that 12 inches, three rows was approved on the front and that was ignored, that we are going to, we're approving that as well, the additional height of those. False. We're, we're saying that as well. Commissioner Goodwin. That was, that was my motion and my argument that it was done for functional. Okay. Done for functional purposes. Just wanted to clarify. Okay. There, there actually is a, a, a there is a guideline for that. Yes, there is. And Commissioner Wojcik is about to give it to you. Oh, I had it the whole time. Um, 8.7 number 11. And it says any new retaining wall should be a true retaining wall, not a decorative feature and be no taller than necessarily to function. And that's the reason why it is a little taller than we thought it was going to be. Don't whisper your words, Commissioner Wojcik. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Commissioner Goodwin, are you willing to accept that uh, friendly amendment? 
Yes, absolutely. Good, good amendment. <laughs> okay. All right. And commissioner Barth, are you still good with that? Yes. All right. Any further discussion? This is healthy debate. It's why we're here. 1 of the reasons. All right. So now we vote commissioner Leinberger. No. Commissioner wheat. Yes. Commissioner Barth. Yes. Commissioner Hawkins. Yes. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Wojcik. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to approve passes two, four, six to two. All right. Now we'll take a take and reconvene with number seven. How five minutes? Yeah. That... Let's make it seven. Oh gosh. We've earned it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let everyone know. We'll be back in seven minutes. Uh, May I say something, commissioners? Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it, and thank you for walking me through the process of this. Thank you, Mike. Thank, you. thank you very much. Slow down. <laughs> I hear that a lot from people. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling yeah. myself too. <laughs> yeah, uh, that 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 oversight will not happen again on my end. I promise you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Mute. Okay, we're restarting with number 17. Uh, Russell Clark, are you with us? Your wife's here and I believe she brought a sample. And you were sworn in, correct? No. Okay, so. No, I was not. Okay, well, we'll swear you both in. All right. If you all will uh, raise your right hand and respond, I do to the following question. Do you affirm the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Before we get started, yes. I'd like to just put this out there for the attorney. Um, I received an email from one of the community members of this project. Um, making a case for why we needed to expedite our decision. I did not respond to it, but I do want it put out there on the record. And I received the same email. It was from another owner in the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Web, Web, I believe. Hubble. Yes. And do either of you have that email that you could just read? for the entire commission and then that that way everyone has the same information i could i can pull it up that'd be great maybe christy can too whoever it. gets there it's wet yeah. hubble okay and um it was very very kind email Ms. harpst first and foremost by writing you i hope i am not doing anything inappropriate my wife and i own and live at 820 east kingston avenue when I was on Little Rock's Board of Directors for six years, residents called me all the time about zoning issues, but I don't want to do anything inappropriate or would jeopardize the pending matter in any way. Susie and I have been hesitant to mention this matter before now, but we fear the commission may not realize the damage that is occurring to our complex while waiting on the commission's approval. We will be out of town for the next commission meeting, otherwise I would present my concerns in person. As you are aware, our four unit complex has been trying to repair our roof. After gaining permission, we were able to replace the flat part of the roof, but we have been trying to obtain approval of the commission to repair the faux tile part of the roof for some time now. Meanwhile, our units are still dealing with leaks and damage to their interiors, not to mention the facade on the outside. This last storm really got to our co-owners who are dealing with ever-growing stains on their ceilings and puddles of water on their floor. Russ Clark, the owner of Unit 822 East Kingston, has been representing us in front of the commission. He has been doing the legwork and trying to locate the metal tile to satisfy the commission and is the liaison with our contractor. Russ has been keeping the owners appraised of the proceedings and his tireless and time-consuming efforts have come up with a metal tile to meet the commission's approval. Susie and I are big supporters of historic preservation and the four owners want to do the want do want to repair the roof in a way that is consistent with Dilworth's history and legacy. We have been committed to the process from the beginning. We only want to know what it's going to take to get the commission's approval to stop the leaks. Your advice is much needed for you can imagine our co owners are extremely fr frustrated by the delay and being able to make the needed repairs. I'm very concerned that further delays will do significant damage to our homes. Again, if I've done anything inappropriate in reaching out to you, I sincerely apologize. My purpose is only meant to emphasize the need to have this matter resolved. Thanks in advance, Webb. And my response was send me pictures of the conditions for inclusion, and that's what they did. So the pictures are part of the agenda supplement. You can see on slide 31 of the supplement showing all the damage to the soffit and the exterior. Slide 32 is showing the water damage to the interior right here and here. And then slide 33 is just more of the same active leaks with buckets um, to catch water. So with that, um, that's one of the reasons why we were we needed to make sure to hear this case today. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the clerks so that they can further explain the project and what they found and the samples that they've brought in. And yeah, thank you. Just, would you just reiterate for the court reporter your name and your address, please? Certainly, I am uh, Russell Clark. Uh, my address is 822 East. 
Kingston Avenue in Charlotte. Okay. Um, I am on slide one. Where would you like to go? Um, I think, yeah, just a little bit of, um, you know, kind of the history, I guess. Uh, so we had originally applied back in July and we were before the board in January and we had uh, submitted a proposal to use a product called Decro Villa, which was a steel tile, but it was stone coated. So the board said, well, hey, let's look for something uh, that's more appropriate uh, to the texture of the original. And so I came back in February with this product, which is a company called ATAS, and the product's called Teco Tile. And it's a painted, uh, you know, metal tile, but it's made of aluminum. It, uh, you know, matches somewhat the, the profile of the, of the original tile. Uh, however, the board was concerned uh, about a couple of things. One was that it's aluminum, it's not the original material, which the original material is steel, painted steel. This is a painted aluminum. And requested that I do a wider search and look at more manufacturers and more sources to you know, ensure that we had uh, turned over every stone. It was also suggested that I reach out to uh, an installer called Murr and Laney uh, as well that does a lot of historic uh, roofing work, which I, I did. Uh, so I reached out to Murr and Laney. Um, unfortunately, they don't do steel roofing and, and didn't have a recommendation for me. Uh, they deal in slate, so things like Biltmore and some of the historic houses that have slate roofs, they do that. They also do copper, uh, and they've got some wonderful examples of copper church roofs that they've worked on, but they didn't have uh, anything for steel, so I'm looking specifically for steel. So I then reached out to the Metal Roofing Alliance, and uh, there are 29 manufacturers that are members of the, uh, the uh, Metal Roofing Alliance, and I checked with all of them. Uh, further down in the uh, presentation, if you go a few slides down, I'm probably should have put this in a different order. Um, I list there on slide, I guess, 11, yeah. So uh, the, the next two slides, I listed all of the manufacturers that produce, you know, they're part of the American uh, uh, Metal Roofing Alliance. And uh, there are, out of that group, there are 29 manufacturers. 17 of them don't produce a uh, sort of tile roof uh, that is at all similar. They do standing seam type metal roofing, but nothing appropriate uh, in look. Twelve of them do produce uh, metal tiles, but of those 12, and that's the first slide there, uh, there are two products that are basically the same profile um, and also made of steel and come in a finish that would, you know, be a green painted finish that would match the original. And those two products, one of them is another product by ATAS. So the, the last one I recommend, you know, that I brought was Teco Tile, which is a painted steel that comes in a green, but it's made of aluminum. That same company makes a different product called Scan Roof. It is a different look, um, but it does come in the color, the, the patent of green color, and it is made of steel. And then there's another manufacturer, uh, Provia. You can see the second green check mark further down the screen. Uh, Provia is a company that makes a barrel tile. It is steel. It comes in a green finish. Um, and they just started manufacturing this particular tile in October. Uh, and so I was able to get some information from, from their rep. And I got a, a sample. So uh, my wife, Valerie, brought a sample of both the scan roof and of the uh, Provia barrel tile so that you can see that. Now, the scan roof, uh, the scan roof sample is in a red color. The sample is in a red color, but the colors proposed is a patina green. I think she's got a, a, a patch, a metal square patch that shows that patina green color. The Provia comes in the proposed color, which is uh, they call jade. It's a, it's a green color, and you can see that. Um, so if you go back up to the, about three slides up to where you were, and sort of show you what those project products look like installed. So yes, this is that's the Teco tile that's aluminum, and this is ATAS scan roof. Yes. Valerie, you need to hit the button so it turns green, and then Russell can hear you. Sorry, Russ. I'll uh, hold the samples if that's okay, since you just mentioned them. Perfect. So this is the ATAS scan roof. Again, the the pictures here are not in the proposed color, but that's you know the material we got. Uh, so, but they give you an idea of what it looks like installed. Um, and then the next screen shows what the color looks like installed from that manufacturer, that patina green, you know, a good photograph. 
but the photos here are not of that scan roof, you know, uh, profile. So you know, did, they didn't have marketing material that had that exact tile and that paint, but and they didn't have a sample, but that should give you an idea. So it's a, a very similar color, and it comes with a profile there. Um, the next slide shows the Provia barrel tile, and you can see that installed. There's a good, uh, you know, picture there. The terracotta one up at the top shows a good, you know, gives a good look at what it looks like installed. And then the, the picture below shows what it looks like installed in the proposed color, which they call jade. And this is a, a barrel tile that is steel as well. And then if you skip the next two slides, that just shows all the manufacturers we check. So I, I took measurements. There was concern about, um, I guess, you know, the profile, getting it to match uh, the, the, the scale and the profile, the dimensions of the existing. So um, the existing barrel tile, you can see uh, the lower left picture kind of shows what it looks like from a street level. The picture, the main picture there is actually, you know, got up on the roof, reached over, measured, took pictures. Um, it's, you know, basically you've got a half barrel section and then a flat space. Uh, that flat space and each half barrel are about four and a quarter inches wide. And then each of those half barrels is about two inches tall. It's pretty dented and damaged, but, you know, I'm hanging upside down over the roof, but that's about what the, the measurement is. And then the hip, uh, the, the hip cap or the ridge cap that goes along those ridges, you can see that ridge line there. Uh, from the flat part, it's about six inches tall, but it's about four inches above the, the tops of each of the, of the barrel tile section. So it gives you an idea of the scale. And then if you go to the next slide, I show how that compares to the proposed tiles. So this is the Provia barrel tile, and it's a very similar match. Uh, the, you know, the left is the current existing roof. You've got two inch tall uh, half barrels. The Provia barrel tile is two inches tall. Uh, the gaps, the flat parts between are four and a half inches in the Provia barrel tile. It's about four and a quarter in the current. Um, and it's about four and a half inches wide each, each half barrel section uh, versus four and a quarter for the, the current roof. So, you know, the, the distance between each of those half barrels is nine inch in the proposed versus eight and a half in the original. Uh, the main difference with Provia, um, a couple of things. One, it's, it's a bit more wavy than the existing. The existing is a very sharp curve and a very flat, so there's a very sharp crease uh, between the flat part and the barrel tile, whereas the more modern one is, is more wavy, and so it's less distinct, uh, but it does match the profile. And then the hip cap uh, portion along the ridge is a lower profile. It doesn't stick up as much. Uh, it's four inches tall, or it goes about two inches above the top of the uh, the barrel tile, versus about four inches for the existing. So uh, that's that's a comparison of the Provia barrel tile, and it is the it is the closest you know closest match. The other one shows the the scan roof. The next slide shows the scan roof. Uh, you know, there's the current. The scan roof is a very a, a different look. I mean, I think it's attractive, but it's a different look. Uh, the hip cap's about the same dimensions. But the, you know, the scan roof, it's seven and seven eighths between those ribs. They're not really a barrel tile, but it's more of a, a European style, I guess, uh, tile. Seven and seven eighths uh, inch gap. And then each of those ridges is three quarters of an inch tall and two inches wide. So it's a, it's a different look, uh, but it, you know, it's a steel and it's the other alternative that would uh, be the same material and same finish. So anyway, we uh, you know did what we were asked to do. Uh, went checked with Merrin Laney, checked with the you know 29 manufacturers. They're part of the American Metal Alliance, uh, Metal Roofing Alliance. Uh, came up with two products that are the same material, uh, same finished. Uh, prepared a comparison of the profile when we have samples, uh, so that you can look at them. And um, and as you saw in the pictures earlier, and and you know from my neighbors, there is some sense of urgency. Uh, we've got, you know, you know, leaking roof that we really do need to get repaired. So I'd ask that you please consider it carefully. And, you know, we are good with either alternative if there's a preference for either one, but we ask that you approve one of the alternatives uh, today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Do we have anyone on the line? No. All right, commissioners. Questions of the clerks? 
Commissioner Lineberger and then Commissioner Walker. Sorry, Commissioner Walker. I always look over here first. Yeah. I just really want to commend you for I, I recognize all of the extensive work you've done and I know it's been a pain. I know it has not been easy, but I really appreciate your exhaustive search for this material. I was thrilled when I opened this up and reviewed it and saw the, the new the Provia, especially how similar it was and or how similar similar it is. And it looks exactly like from my perspective, what we were looking for. So thank you for thank all you. of your effort. Thanks, Commissioner Lineberger. Commissioner Walker. Yeah, I echo everything just said. Um, just an, a question I have. On this picture that we're looking at, are both those red and green tiles the exact same tiles? Just because the profile of the red one looks deeper than the green one. They, they are the same. It's just, uh, yeah, in the pictures at different angles, and I included that one because you can actually see it, you know, it's a better picture. You know, these are marketing material pictures I got from the manufacturer. And okay. that one, the angle makes it, you know, you can see the comparison better, but then I included the green because you can see the hip detail, the hip ridge. Yeah, and then, the and then that's the one that's lying on top of the um, table right there. Right? Okay. Yes, it's, the, it's, it's the, the green. Profile, the profile looks so mild there compared to how it appears in those photos, but um, I think it looks really good. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Any other questions or comments for the applicants? Yes, Commissioner Goodwin. So, so that was that's the Provia on, on top, and then that is the the Teco is the copper colored one. Uh, Teco. yes, the yeah. scan. Mm -hmm. Right. Sc sc and then, and then, I'm sorry, I missed this other one. Is that a previous submittal? Is that a one of the one standing up on the floor? They're the same. They're the same. This oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions before we close? I'm just going to echo the sentiment shared by other commissioners in thanking you. You risk life and limb crawling up on that roof. I'm sure your wife um, is very uh, happy you're well. <laughs> All I'm, right. I'm a little bit active. Too, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you went to all of the links to make sure that we got what we needed. So thank you for that. Anything you'd like to say before we close? Uh, no, thank you. Just uh, uh, hopefully we can approve uh, prove it. I, I would like to say there's one issue that you know we proposed earlier reusing this finial detail um, with these in the in the in the hip cap. We'll have to determine, you know, when we get it, whether it will, whether it will match up and, and it'll fit. So that is a concern we have with both of these products. All right. Thank you, sir. And uh, Valerie. Um, I might only point out that uh, if color, uh, if you want to see it differently or as it would look on the roof, you can hold it up and at an angle. And that's part of the reason for having the samples here. All right. Well, thank you so much. We will now close for deliberation. Commissioners. Can I interject one thing? Please. We forgot to point out that um, Commissioner Wheat left the meeting yes. at 5.50 p.m. So I just wanted to get that in the record. Thank you so much. Yes. Commissioners. I mean, so, yeah. Commissioner Hawkins. Yeah. So I, I think everyone kind of... Um, Echo the same sentiment as if we look at what the reason um, was that this application was continued for. It appears um, in uh, Mr. Clark and Mrs. Clark's uh, presentation that they hit each one of those. They addressed each one of those. And just by the comments that the commissioners have made, the, this material looks very similar in profile to what's existing. So. You would like to make a motion? Uh, we have a comment. Yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion to, okay. mm -hmm. to approve this application for material replacement to replace the roof um, as it fits our guidelines 4.5 number four and that the applicants perhaps go before staff with any additional changes to ridge lines that, that might need their approval 
and oversight. All right. Can you so, add the Secretary of Interior standards? Uh, 2.5. Uh, um, and yeah, with reference, Secretary of Interior standards. Page 2.5. Page 2.5. Thank you. All right. So motion made by Commissioner Walker, seconded by Commissioner Hawkins. Any further discussion of the motion? Christy, do you need an actual reference to which specific one is being Oh. Added? Actually, yes. yes, we do. I, I think it's the Provia, but um, oh, hearing, Provia. hearing that out loud would be yeah. great. Yeah, minor amendment um, at, to add to that motion that this is for the approval of um, the Provia barrel tile replacement. All right. Are you still good with that, Commissioner Hawkins? Yes. Okay. So let's vote. Okay, Commissioner Barth. Do we need to, to mention that we're approving this alternative material? Due to the applicant's inability to to locate a modern equivalent to this product, yeah, I think it's partly to the you're proving it because the existing roof has failed and it's at the end of its life and it can't be repaired. Like repair is not possible, so you're proving the closest available match that is out there at this. Time. Right, and I would mention the exhaustive search that they went through to find that out. That's great. For future reference. Do you want to incorporate any of that? Yeah, all of that. Will you please, Jill? Commissioner Walker. Sure, another amendment. Um, thank you. Uh, how should I phrase this? This approval is occurring because the original material is non-functioning and um, it in and of itself cannot be replaced. So this is a, a, a material that is an equal replacement. Is it can't be repaired? It can't be repaired. And because of that, this, this um, replacement material is acceptable. I, I think, just from the amendment, Commissioner Walker, we should definitely include that there was an exhaustive search done to find a material with the exact profile. Um, and in that I search, say this all over again, or Candy, are you okay if I add one more thing to this? <laughs> She'll make me sound brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll deal with it in post. Um, yeah, just let it, let it also be added to this um, motion that. The applicant researched exhaustively to find an appropriate material to replace the roof, original roof. Okay. Yeah. All Anybody right. Else? <laughs> Thank you so much, Commissioner Walker. <laughs> so, motion made by Commissioner Walker and seconded by Commissioner Hawkins. Yes. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion of the motion? Okay, let's vote. Commissioner Leinberger? Yes. Commissioner Barth? Yes. Commissioner Hawkins? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Commissioner Wojcik? Yes. Commissioner Goodwin? Yes. Commissioner Parati? Yes. Motion to approve passes 7 0. Let me just make sure I have my numbers right. Yes, 7 0. Thank you, Russell. Thank and you very Valerie. much. Russell, you did an excellent job. Thank you so much. Yes. And Valerie, Thank too. you. Thank you all. Great fan of white. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so it's 6.30. Oh, did I miss something? We're just trying to con, uh, recruit the clerks to be on the commission. Oh. That's all. Oh, we'll talk to it's them later. Always good to have <laughs> um, members lined up. Okay, so we are at 630. Um, how many cases do you think we can get through this evening? Let me find out who has a hard stop at seven. Okay, Bill, it, we have at least two. I'm gonna say three, because there's some people who who are, don't wanna say it, right? Okay. So, so we're gonna lose quorum then. Yeah, we're gonna so, lose quorum. Um, well, what we've discussed and what we announced at the 
we talked about at the retreat was holding a special called meeting mm -hmm. on Wednesday, March 29th here in this room, 67, starting at 930 in the morning to hear mm -hmm. the rest of the cases. And we'll, we can do what we did in January, mm -hmm. which was we just recess the meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not closed. Sure. And we will reconvene okay. um, with applications number 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, and 19. Okay, so we don't think we can get through 13? Well, I don't know. We have number 12 yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, we could. I am. No, 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 no. I'm um, glad to stay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, 13 through 19. 19. Minus 17. Okay. And you're feeding us, yes? Yes, yes. We will feed you <laughs> coffee and breakfast. And <laughs> Deal. Okay. Christy, Sold. Uh, we will be there. Did you say ten. Originally, I thought the same Peter? thing, Commissioner Lineberger. Yeah. We said ten, but then uh, Commissioner Walker said, "What about nine thirty? Because it's nine thirty. So why don't we do a quick it's, vote? It's up to y'all. So we have the room. All for uh, nine thirty. Fine. <laughs> Nine thirty, it is okay. Well, I will email the applicants. Hopefully, some of them heard the announcement, but we'll make the announcement again at the end, and we'll continue on with number twelve. Yes, um, thank you. Which is four twenty nine West Park Avenue. I think Matt Johnson is with us. Matt, are you with us? Oh, you are, we can barely hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? A little bit better. Can you speak any louder? Um, let me adjust my microphone here. <laughs> can you hear me now? Just talk as loud as you can. Okay. Oh, better. Um, Much better. Okay. Um, all right, bear with me with the technology here. Okay. Um, any chance we can get your video going? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. And one more question. Have you been sworn in? No, I have not. Okay. We'll do that while you're working on video. All right. If you will, please raise your right hand and respond. I do to the following question. Do you affirm the testimony and information you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. do you have my video yet? No, not yet. I'll, you keep working. I'll, oh, there you are. Hi. Okay. Hi there. Hi. So, yes, I do. Okay, great. <laughs> um, this next application, Matt, I'll turn it over to you in a second. This next application is for a new accessory building, pool, hardscape, and fence. It's a corner lot at the corner of uh, West Park Avenue and South Mint Street. The building height is shorter than the house. It's Almost 5 feet lower than the primary structure at 19 of around 19 feet. Um, all materials are traditional to match existing and rear yard and permeable area as well within the limits at 28.5%. There are a couple of details that staff has noted um, that are being needed, but otherwise. Um, no major questions. So, Matt, if you would state your name and your address for the court reporter, please. Yes, it's Matthew Johnson, 222 West Park Avenue, Charlotte, 28203. Okay, and I'm on slide three, which is the site plan, and I'll scroll to wherever mm -hmm. you want me to go from here. Okay, yeah, we can start with there. So you can see there's a new um, studio auxiliary building planned in the back left corner, rear left corner of the property. Um, it is... Um, Going to be located approximately, I think it's seven feet off of the, the back porch of the house and then five feet from the, um, the new fence and property line. <clears throat> there will be a porch um, incorporated into this new auxiliary building. And then <clears throat> off of that will be a new pool with a hardscape around that. Um, and as Christy said, all materials are to match. Um, the existing structure and, you know, roof lines, 
uh, windows, doors are all, you know, wood and to match the existing. So I don't know if we want to go to into some of the elevation views. Right. Um, yeah, so that is that's top left, the right elevation, which is a little misleading. That's actually facing Mint Street. Um, but that, that's the view that will be facing the pool. Um, the rear elevation, um, let's see, that would be, let me change this, my view around a little bit. Um, that would be facing, I guess, the rear, the neighbor behind them. Um, and then what's the front elevation is really the driveway facing uh, West Park, and that's the <clears throat> facing the driveway. And then the other one would be facing to the left. So yeah, we did try to we tried to match um, details from the house overhang, skeletal boxing, um, two by ten and two by eight barge brackets, um, the wood columns, <clears throat> and the bands were brick were all to match the existing. <clears throat> There are some details there. There are, um, yeah, with the, uh, the overhangs again, it's a skeletal boxing detail. So all exposed members um, of that roofing assembly. Um, the window details are all to match with the, the wood sash, the, um, the same uh, pattern that's six over one, which is a, a little you know, a little different from what's traditional over here in Wilmore. Um, that's cut into thir a third and two thirds rather than the, the halves. Um, we're going to match the barge bracket with that um, painted four by four pressure treated material, which would be wood. Um, and then in terms of the fence, it's all, <clears throat> there were some pictures supplied that were served as inspiration, but six by six corners with um the uh the slats and the the styles and the rails to match um what was shown in the pictures yeah that's those are some photos of the of that um the house 429 on the corner of west park and in mint street um, and there's the fence detail that was, uh, that's a, a neighbor of theirs that they wanted to kind of mimic that fence detail that would have been approved previously. That's all I have for you, Matt. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I know you guys are up against the clock here, so I am, um, Gladly to to answer any questions about the details that you have. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Christy, do we have anyone on the line wishing to speak for or against this application? Um, no. Okay. Commissioners, questions of Mr. Johnson. Yep, a few. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Mr. Johnson. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and follow the staff memo here, which lines up everything pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, your cedar shingles up in the gables, uh, I would imagine those are individually implied. Yes, sir. Individuals, not panels. Okay. Uh, and then door, door and windows. Uh, what, what are you proposing there? Again, that is not been hammered out in the construction documents, but they are my proposal is to for those all to be wood um, on the exterior and um, at least a, I don't know what your standards are with the true divided versus the simulated divided light, but um, a wood mullion on the outside of that um, sash. Yeah, all that we ask is that uh, mountain bar be applied to the glass rather as opposed to GBG, right, which, yes. which we don't approve, which uh, is is good, uh, <clears throat> more or less asking whether they would be clad or wood. Um, 
when uh, we uh, when we get through those details, we will certainly um, work with the staff on on the uh, the manufacturer of that window and the details of that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we would just request that either clatter would be be used. Uh, speaking of windows, um, Chris, if we could go to the pool facing elevation, which I think is the right, or do you have them all right here? Um, so, so I think this window in the center. I don't know whether this is a graphical thing, but you know, all the double hung windows have that six over one configuration. Would you would you be opposed to converting this to a six over one? Um, no, I would not. Okay. I think that would be that would certainly work with that design. And then similar similarly, that, I think um, that was a mistake of mine. I just did not erase those those lower two vertical lines. I thought it, I thought as much. No no problem there. Um, and then looking at the rear and front elevation, um, uh, I see you went to a six over one configuration. The existing house has eight over one. Makes sense for the smaller windows. However, on the front and rear, those windows are slightly larger than the others, uh, and the proportions just seem a little bit off compared to the historic structure. Would you be opposed to doing eight over one for those? Um, and could you? That's on the front and the rear. Um, yes. So eight over one. The two main floor windows on Correct. both elevations. Yes. Um, no, I would not have a problem with that. Okay. And from my from my position as one commissioner, I'd be comfortable with you working those out with staff. But okay. we'll see. Um, and then, could you speak to uh, the pool in the rear yard? Is it elevated? What? sort of coping and decking material are you going to put out there? Do you have any pictures um, for that? Again, I don't, I have not worked through those details. Um, the pool is at grade um, and it was to be a, a masonry hardscape around there. Um, I don't exactly know what the pool coping is going to be. Um, I would imagine it's going to be some kind of um, some kind of some material consistent with you know what staff would recommend on that. <clears throat> we certainly don't want to come back and do anything after the fact here, like the last couple I've seen. So all of that would be approved before we went forward with the construction of it. Perfect. Thank you. And with with this pool addition as well as the the studio addition, imagine the studio is. Heated and cooled. <clears throat> yes, and I, to your point about how do you screen any kind of mechanical um, equipment that's part of that, I, I would imagine there's going to be mini splits in this unit. Um, have not worked through that detail yet, but I think that's probably the solution, and we'll not have compressors on the exterior that need to be screened with. Any kind of fencing or you know getting into setbacks or anything like that. Well, those mini those mini splits do come with the, the smaller. Uh, the heating unit does right. Yeah, exterior mounted uh, unit. So I, I think we'd probably want to see that as well as the pool equipment where that goes, how it's screened, um, if it contributes to the the uh, impervious area, whether it's on a pad or or whatnot. Um, which you're well well underneath. It's just I think we need some information to help us clarify that for ourselves. Okay. Certainly. And that's all I have. Uh, apart from uh, fence fence height, I just didn't see it. I, we saw the pictures, which looks good to me. Um, what height are you proposing? Um, I believe we're at six feet all the way on the on the left in the rear, um, and then I believe on the right as well would be six feet. And I know anything that's facing the facing the driveway that would drop down to a four foot in height. Okay. Can work through heights. Usually we allow six to the rear thermal wall. And then coming up the side, drop down to five and then four. We got that. 
Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, that's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Barth. Commissioner Walker. Thank you. Um, is there a tree that that gets lost in this process or none? There are no trees, no ma'am. Okay. The front elevation just looks like there's so many trees back there, but that's great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Commissioner Goodwin. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Hi, Matthew. Um, so if the siding is going to match that of the house, what what is the siding on the house? Is that three quarter inch wood? I believe I would imagine that's three quarter inch, um, probably a heart pine, which the contractor will do their best to locate um, something that's um, a pine that's a would be uh, suitable for that material. Yes. Okay, thank you. And so the corner boards, we like to see those and then also the trim around the windows needs to stand proud of that. So it'll need to be thicker than the you know, five quarter, which is usually next. <laughs> One inch, right? Um, and sometimes you that's have to done. Have a backer board or make it thicker. Either right. way, either way. To exactly. Stand. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I think contractors in the past that I worked with have have furred that out with a backer board, like you said, um, rather than going with the like a, a one by a one and a half inch thick material. So they brought it out to make it more like one and a quarter, one and um, three eighths, to allow for that siding to die into it. Yeah, okay, and I'm also looking at the column and beam detail. Uh, it, it appears that the beam is the same width as the column, but I, it's kind of difficult to tell, but um, perhaps that needs to be <laughs> confirmed. Okay, um, the beam at the, where where is that that you're pointing to? Excuse me, that'd be sl- slide eight. Okay. Let's see. Um, yes, I see what you're saying. Um, so in the on the main portion of the of the structure, it's a I've got it as a 10 inch beam, and it should be the same. Or I, I'm assuming that's the way I drew it for the beam at, that's supporting the porch area. Would you want something that's a little um, deeper in dimension? No, no it, I, I think it should be the same as the column width, which okay. is, I believe, 10 by 10. So you're good. Okay. If that's what you intended. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Barth, did you have something else you wanted to address? Uh, not necessarily. I think we might discuss this in, in um, deliberation. Uh, I do, you know, looking at the existing architectural details of the house, um, the column and the column capital and base seems a little bit more articulated on the house versus the, the ADU. So. Okay. Well, while while we have Matthew, if he wants to address that, because it's going to come up in deliberation, we'll let him. Sure, I am. I am open to have a a a brick um, kind of pier for those wood columns to sit on that would go up to the height of the of the foundation that's shown, the brick foundation. If that something that's sixteen by sixteen. That allows for the the base and the column to sit on, and that would probably help with any potential issues with water damage as well. True. Yeah. Very true. Okay, Commissioner Leinberger. Did I look like I wanted to? You did. Uh-huh. I, I really was just. I think this is something we can just mention. But had you all discussed um, the brick foundation since that cannot be painted to match the house? Have you all discussed what that would be? So yes, that the house brick has been painted, and we have. I've spoke with the clients, and they're fully anticipating that this new brick is to be a an approved brick, um, a red brick, but it will not be painted. Um, so I. We might 
you know, the contractor might be able to look behind the, um, the wall, the curtain wall there and see what it looked like from the inside and match it that way as best they can. But we're fully anticipating not painting any of the, of the brick that's used in this new structure. All right, thank you. Okay, any other questions before we close? Yes, Commissioner Wojcik. So, uh, more questions about the columns. So if we're going to set the columns at the porch on a brick base, are you planning on matching the style of the detailing similar to the house as well? Um, yes, so there's, um, and if we could blow up that picture, slide number 10, probably gives us a little more detail. I would just pick up on that, um, that there's a, um, it's hard to say, but it's, there's probably a concrete cap that sits on top of that, the brick, mm -hmm. some kind of masonry. And I think that's, you know, that would be what the way I would match it basically, you know, verbatim. And then the wood columns section, are those columns tapered? Uh, they do taper on the front. Yes. Okay. Would you have the columns at the porch for the accessory building taper as well? Or are you planning on those being? Um, we had talked about them being square. That was, um, yeah, that was the original intent. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions before we close? All right, Matthew, anything you want to add before we close? Um, no, I appreciate your consideration here. All right. Thank you so much, sir. So we will now close for deliberation. Commissioners, uh, thoughts? We talked about column details. We talked a little bit about windows. Um, are these things that, well, let's, so we talked about them. The applicant seems pretty uh, amenable to any kind of suggestions that we make. And these are smaller details that I think can be sent to staff, right? So, I have a small detail, and um, mm -hmm. can I say? Yes. Yeah. Um, the example that was used for the wooden fence has the wrong side facing the street, and I'm I'm guessing you wouldn't do it that way. I think this is an example. I could be wrong, but it might be an example of a two-sided fence. Is it? If it's the same okay. on both sides, but we will definitely. Okay. We'll definitely. Make sure of that. Yeah, I think yeah. that's trim. That's like a trim. top trim, okay. bottom trim. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so let's get cracking. Let's, let's, there's a list of things that are not being refuted. So let's go down that list and craft a motion. Who wants to take the lead on this one? I can do it. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Barth. Um, well, the list I have, cedar shingles, you know, a, a lot of these things, the, the applicant has stated that they would do this. Um, if everyone feels comfortable sending this to staff, I'm, I'm happy to do so. Uh, cedar shingles individually applied, uh, wood siding to match the existing house with trim and corner boards, boards proud of the siding. Uh, door and window specs need to be approved. The applicant has mentioned that they are pending um, uh, contractor selection and, and client selection. Uh, fence and gate details. We have we have pictures. I think we just need that annotated on the the plans as well. Um, I think we need more details on the pool and uh, equipment for the pool as well as HVAC equipment notated on the plans and screening required um bricks to remain unpainted uh i personally had some some window slight window adjustments which i'm happy to send to staff I'm, i have no doubt that they can work that out uh and then the column um pedestal base and capital 
Uh, frankly, I'm, I'm, I don't think that we need to require doing the brick pedestal. It sounds like a good idea for um, wood rot and that sort of thing. But you know, I'm happy to leave that open to the applicant on which route they want to go, whether full full wood column or brick pedestal. I would like to see more articulation on the base and capital, though. So those are my my items. All right. Do we have? Does anyone have anything to add to this? No. Did you mention the unpainted brick? Yes. Okay. Well, will you craft a motion out of what you have, Commissioner Barth? Uh, I would like to pull the other commissioners if anybody feels like we need to see any of those items back here or if we're good with staff approving. I would like to ask staff. Staff, do you have any issues with any of this coming to you? I don't. Cindy, do you? Do you have questions? Do you turn on, put on your? No, I don't have any questions. I don't believe you. <laughs> no, I don't either. <laughs> There's a little tentative. Yeah. Where do you, where do you I, yeah, I can give good um, direction if you like. In the, in the faith in Commissioner Barth telling me where I need to go drive. <laughs> okay. Um, and we'll chime in as you're. Yeah, and I may need help referencing guidelines. I think I may want to state those at the end because I haven't written any down. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would like to make a motion to approve this application as submitted for um, that it is uh, in, that it is congruous with our um, guidelines. Uh, I would like to state the following. Um, did say not in Congress, right? Yeah. Okay. Not in Congress yeah. with our guidelines. Sorry. You stated it differently, but it was I, the same I thing. I said it was Congre Congress. Yeah. I said it was Congress. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I just heard, I, terminology. I heard in Congress, and I'm like, yeah. Um, uh, we would ask that the applicant uh, please work with staff on the following list of items. Uh, number one that the cedar shingles in the upper section of the gables be individually applied and wood that the lap siding also be wood to match the existing siding of the historic structure as well as corner boards and trim to be made of wood and um and sit proud of the siding uh, would ask the applicant to work with staff once window and door specs are attained. Would request that the applicant adjust the window on the, bear with me, the right elevation in the center of uh, the structure to have no divided light on the bottom sash. Similarly, on um, the front and rear elevation, the two main floor windows to include eight lights over one versus six over one. Would ask the applicant to verify hardscape material and pool surrounds with the staff referencing historic materials to be used would ask that the applicant keep the brick on the foundation unpainted and again to work with staff on an appropriate brick color and mortar color and appropriate means a traditional red color correct okay. tradition and we would like the the brick color to be of a traditional red color Um, oh, I uh, would also request that the applicant work with staff on wool equipment and HVAC equipment placement and screening, as well as fence details and height. And sections, let's see. Oh, I heard Commissioner Hawkins. Uh, prep to give you some standards in anyone else who has them. I have 8.10 number two, and that's for 
um, accessory buildings matching being compatible with the main house. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Perotti had mentioned 8.10 number two. Mm -hmm. And for the um, unpainted brick, you can go with material 6.18 number six. Referencing our guidelines 6.18 number six for unpainted brick. And then for the fence height, uh, guideline 8.7 number eight. Referencing this fence height, would like to um, highlight guideline 8.7 number six for fence height. And then for the pool, uh, you can add guideline 8.4. And then 8.4 in our guidelines for the pool. All right, thank you, Commissioner Hawkins. Uh, any other standards that we're missing, Christy? Um, I just had a question about the columns, mm -hmm. it was discussed, but I don't think there is anything in the motion. We just want to make sure that staff knows what we're supposed to do, if anything, with that. Sorry, I forgot to include that part. <laughs> Big part. Um, would a uh, final item of my motion would be to request that the applicant work with staff um, to produce a column detailing that is similar to the historic structure. Uh, Further guidance being uh, would like a more articulate capital and base detail mimicking a similar style of the existing house and want to leave it open to the applicant and staff to figure out whether a brick pedestal and tapered columns are appropriate. Okay, we so you're leaving it the option for brick pedestal tapered columns or the square columns. Full height. Full height. Okay, Correct. thank you. The cedar, cedar shingles. A guideline? That would be lovely. Sure. 5.2, number two, and six, and eight. Two, number two, six, and eight. What about the column details? That would be porch. There's a porch detail. Mm. But would a porch cover the column or is that too wide of a um will you, will you read that commissioner hawkins so thinking 6.17 number two design new porches to complement the size proportion placement and rhythm of existing historic porches within con within this context I don't know. Well, what was the, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What was the one? You go. Uh, is that an amendment or would you like me to state? <laughs> Fix that. One, seven, number two. All right. I would add number three. Oh, sorry. Number three, two. All right. We will add uh, guideline six dot seven, one, seven, excuse me, number two and three um, for appropriate porch column, uh, column and beam conditions. And you mentioned 6.18 for materials? Yeah, you did. Okay, cool. About 8.19 for equipment. Sorry, sorry. How about 8.9, number one, for the pool equipment, HVAC site details? You said 8.9 number, which one. All right. And did we get yours, Commissioner Wojcik? Yes. Okay. I love that we have so many standards to okay. lean on. I'm sure our attorney appreciates that too. Okay. All right. That this right. completes my motion. So motion made by, thank you. Motion made by Commissioner Barth, seconded Second. by Commissioner Hawkins. Any further discussion of the motion? All right, let's vote. Commissioner Leinberger. Yes. Commissioner Barth. Yes. Commissioner Hawkins. Yes. Commissioner Walker. Commissioner Wojcik. Yes. Commissioner Goodwin. Yes. Commissioner Parati. Yes. Motion to approve passes 7-0. Thank you so much, Matthew. All right.
Um, while we have a moment, do we want to go ahead and do minutes? Yeah. Who wants to help us with minutes? If we have, if no one uh, is ready to talk about minutes, then we'll push that to the 29th. Okay. So we'll do that. And so what we are going to do instead of adjourning, we are going to recess. Recess, not pause, but recess. That's just like court. Take a recess. We'll take a recess and then we will pick up again on Wednesday, March 29th at 9.30 a.m. Here and via WebEx should applicants wish. Here in room, what's this room number? 267. Here in room 267 of the Government Center and on WebEx. Coming to a YouTube near you. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, and the time right now is 7.03 p.m. Thank you and good night. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Candace.